Okay. Um, see, I, th I was having some issues with my audio. For some reason, some things aren't carrying over. Here, let me try something real quick. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, then we'll just hope that it resolves itself real quick because I'm having some issues. Specific things aren't showing up on my um, my headphones for this for Streamlabs. Um, audio. Yeah, it's everything's good. All right, well, it's just I can't hear like if an if alert goes through something like that, I probably won't be able to hear it. Something's wrong with the monitor system. Um, hopefully, this works without issue. Looks like we're doing good. All right, perfect. I did want to move my webcam, but I'm not sure where I want to put it just yet. I was thinking like bottom left, maybe. Great, right, we're getting audio though. All right, cool. As long as we can both hear it. Looks like everything's going through just fine. Okay, I was worried about nothing. Um, let's see. So when we left off, we pretty much just got to like the inciting incident. Um, Makise Kyorisu, we found her stabbed, dead. So we sent an e we sent a, an email to Daru, and the world went all fucky wucky for a minute. Obviously, I know what happened because I've seen the anime, but I won't. You know, obviously, I'm, if if as I know, I know some people who you know who watch this that haven't seen it, so I'm not going to spoil anything. Obviously, so it's all safe there. But damn it, oh my god, fucking neighbors. Anyway, um, hey, you, can you see us? Why won't you answer? I'm asking you a question. Yes, you on the other side of the monitor. Hmm? Your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. I suppose that, from your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. Haha, <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. Oops, I did a thing. Um, I don't want to like get in the way of the art, so we'll um. So it's probably gonna hide the camera. It's, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna minimize the game real quick. I don't want to hide the camera, sorry, the the art in place. So let's. Uh, maybe over here. Think. Sorry, I should have done this beforehand, but I I forgot what the what the UI looked like. God damn it, my finger hurts. Exhilarating stuff, I know. Okay. Should be good now. I hope. All right. Um, let's actually get back into the game. I suppose that from your perspective, it appears that, yeah, but that's where you're wrong. For it is you who are inside. Your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you, too. True reality is on this side of the screen. Don't believe me? I don't blame you. Few are, th few are those who can handle the truth. 
But no matter, I shall speak in simpler terms, easy enough for even you to understand. This is the Future Gadget Laboratory, located in the Akihabara district of Tokyo. We call it simply The Lab. Our purpose is to shatter the system and plunge the world into chaos. Really, you shouldn't do bad things, Ocarine. Quiet, I'm a mad scientist, remember? From the station, head down Chudori until you reach uh, Suihiru Su Suhirucho Station. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Then take a left into uh, Kuramabashi? Kuramabashi Dori? In an alley before the traffic light, you'll find the run-down Oki o o Oyama building. The lab is on the second floor. On the first floor is a store of ill repute called Bron Tube Workshop. You can't miss it. It deals exclusively in CRT monitors. Of all things, can you imagine? Even in the heart of Akihabara's electric town, the demand for CRTs is practically non-existent. But the, the, but the proprietor of the Bron Tube Workshop, Ten, Tenoji, is also the owner of the building. That's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculously niche hobby shop, even as land value continues to rise. He may seem rough, may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now the entire second floor is mine for next to nothing. I digress. The future gadget laboratory is currently experiencing a severe shortage of manpower. We welcome de dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are Ocarine. Okay, you gotta say lab. You gotta say lab mems, not researchers. Our lab mems, laboratory members, are three. I am the founder of the Future Gadget Lab. Lab mem number zero zero one. The insane mad scientist Hoying Kuma. Okarine is cuter though. Next, we have our resident cosplayer and only female member, Lab mem number zero zero two, Shina Mayuri. Call me Mayurishi, like making costumes. I like making costumes more than wearing them. And last, we have our resident super hacker, lab mem number 003, Hashida Itaru. Stop calling me that. It's super hacker, duh. Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. For details, we see our lab's homepage. Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for the war with the Dark Dominion, but that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, that's all it's spawned. Our arsenal of future gadgets is up to eight, but this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. Like in that tennis manga, right? I get it. No, it's the number of earthly desires and mortals, you at channel junkie. I thought I told you not to interrupt me when I'm talking. Yeah, wouldn't you want to interrupt you talking to yourself? I'm not talking to myself. Can't you see? I'm talking to the person behind the monitor. Ah, he just grinned. Are you grinning about... What are you grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside that monitor. Just say, don't look at me. I don't think that's gonna work. It appears our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. Maybe they think we're in the game. I doubt it's even occurred to them. But aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? That's different. Those girls are my wives. Nobody cares about your harem. But Mayurishi touched upon a very interesting theme, you know? What if we're actually just characters in a game? Anyway, we can. We, anyway, we can know for sure. No. Come on. Such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. Oh, I can't. I, I have not learned how to say that fucking word. I can't say that word for some reason. I step back from the monitor. Jesus Christ, now it got loud. I step back from the monitor. What the fuck? Display on the screen is the ugly, cute character, Alpaca Man. This is the game called Alpaca Man 2, where you speak to Alpaca Man via microphone and watch him react. 
The game explored, exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally, I find only the ugly part of the ugly cute to be true. I bought it yesterday, 500 yen used, headset included. I turned to Daru with a menacing glare. Shut it, Hakka. I'm no Chunibuyu. I, patient. I don't know how to say the word. I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. I am Hoyin Kuma. That's your character's name, right? Oh, Daru. Your communication skills are beyond repair. I'll have you know, I go on a ton of offline meets, and I'm always the life of the party. This fat, bespeckled guy is my brother-in-arms and right-hand man, Hashida Itaru. Nickname, Daru. He's a hardcore otaku. You can always find him in front of the computer, playing games and watching anime. He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him, anything's fine as long as it's moe. It's reliable, he's a reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition. Despite his insistence that software is, the, is his forte, he shows a remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. Ow. The needle bit my finger. Over here, nursing a pickled, pickled finger, we have Shina Mayuri, a 16-year-old high school student. If you can believe it, I've known her since we were both small. She's also an otaku, nowhere near Daru's level, though. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division for women, and today she's working on costumes for her usual leisurely at her usual leisurely play, pace. Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't. The truth is that Mayuri is completely useless. Still, there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the Future Gadget Laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring. She said to me... Mayuri is Okarine's hostage. I belong here. Well, that certainly was cryptic. But her offer was my salvation. For she was the first to join me on my magnificent quest. She saved me from a solitary life on the run from the organization. I will never forget her kindness. Mayuri doesn't have to be useful, her being here is enough. So, did Alpaca Man say anything? Nope, nothing. The human-faced alpaca inside a monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive, you'd think the game was bugged. Whatever, I give up. Never again will I play this boring game. Yes, he's very delusional. Damn anti-social alpaca. I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do... Hmm? The TV makes the sound like it's shorted, and then the screen goes blank. I change the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable. Nothing. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. This crummy TV is on lease from Bar from Braun Tube workstation workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. You made Mr. Alpaca angry. <laughs> Damn, I'll have to get repaired later. I turn off the TV and lie down on the couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Japanese summers. I stare at, an, at a conspicuous stain on the ceiling while fanning myself. I close my eyes. And what naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. They're gone. As I left Roddy Count, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores, gone. In the restaurants, gone. Even the cars vanished. Drivers and all. Except for that one. And, it, and that one. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores, but those catchy melodies were the only sounds of life remaining. Bro, you got Wendy's? My Wendy sucks ass. <laughs> well, I'm glad yours is good. Heat was rising from the asphalt in ways, but I only but I felt only a chill a cold chill down my spine. I stood there, breathless, until 
It's mostly just their serve, like their customer service is ass. But you know, I'm not, I'm not expecting anything from a fucking Wendy's. What's wrong? My earliest voice brought me back to reality. What'd you get though? Mayuri hadn't disappeared. She was right there, looking at me with questioning eyes. Everyone disappeared just now, right? Huh? You saw it too, right? Just now, before our very eyes? Panic took hold as the, enorm as the enormity of what had just happened struck me. Well, thank God there's a Diet Coke in there. Don't want you to... I want you to get sick. <laughs> Unable to control myself, I grabbed Mayuri by her shoulder, her slender shoulders, and shook her. By the way, the fact that Wendy's gives you a straw for their Frosties is a fucking joke. You can't drink their Frosties with a straw. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why they bother giving you one. Did you- do you see it, Mayuri? You saw it, right? Hmm? Huh? Mayuri's head flopped back and forth from my shaking. I didn't see anything. You didn't? I stopped shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. Yeah, just don't worry about the frosty. <laughs> I stopped shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. She turned my she returned my gaze with eyes clear as glass marbles. You saw nothing? Nothing at all? There were people here a second ago, weren't there? There were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible by any measure. Yeah. For the most part, I can take, you know, when it comes to soda, I can take it or leave it. So it's nothing that, like, um, like, there, there's, I, I think it's because it's, I think, I think it's because of my father, but there is no soda in my apartment at all. The most sugary drink that I have in my apartment is my coffee. <laughs> the re it's just water, that's it. Of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. It was like this when we got here. Oh, I know. You're seeing things, aren't you? Oops. I'm sure it's because of because of the heat. I, I want. I. I love. I would love to have the audio on, but only for this part. This is, I can't match Mayuri's voice actress when she says "tutoro." How could she laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe her brain is actually broken. I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. The scorching su summer sun shone bright through the gaps between Akihabara uh, Akiba's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Radikan, where I had just been a moment before. There was an enormous machine, like some kind of satellite, embedded in the roof of the building, where, not five minutes before, I had found Makise Kirisu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Makise Kirisu might still be in that dark, narrow passageway, cold, bloody, and alone. I th the thought had disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was... What the hell is that satellite doing here? Right before Dr. Nakiba Nakabachi's presentation, the building shook like a bomb had exploded. The roof door lock had been broken, and beyond it, someone had placed a satellite-like machine shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop. But that's not what, I'm, what I was seeing now. The satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Nakabachi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit without him, without burning up in the atmosphere. Somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? Hmm. 
there's actually like a lot there's like a, there's, there's actually a couple of additional di pieces of dialogue and a couple of events that have that didn't happen in the anime so far if I remember correctly the part where he where he sees the satellite like actually on the roof not in the building isn't in the anime the real question was when did that happen Nairi, about that satellite. Yep, what a surprise, huh? What do you mean, what a surprise? It made a huge kaplow sound. A huge kaplow? Kaplow? I certainly, it certainly did make a sound, but I don't think it was a kaplow, more like a kaplush. Oh, sorry, a zoom. <laughs> did that satellite fall out of the sky? Did it? Do you think any aliens were on board? I lost my mind. What I would, what I had seen didn't match at all with what Mayuri was saying. Suddenly, nothing seemed real. Had I dreamt it all? Hey, you do. Just then, a uniformed policeman ran up to us, his expression stern. What do you think you're doing here? This is an area is off limits. You have to leave. We're sorry. First, my good man. Let's call you Officer A. I have one question. Officer A? Thousands of people just vanished. You saw it too, didn't you? What are you talking about? Get out of here. I was quickly losing confidence in my own memories. I decided to tell him about Makise Kirisu and get him to call an ambulance, but before I could... Look, I don't have time for your nonsense. The policeman took me by the upper arm and said, No one got stabbed at Radi Khan. What? How could he say that with such certainty? While I was still trying to comprehend the situation, the policeman forcefully led us away. We were escorted to the UPX, the UPX and released. There were people at UPX like usual. Actually, there's far more people than usual. The place was packed. Just as a just as police officer A had said, Chu Dori had been blockaded by police, no, so nobody could enter. There was nothing we could do, so we headed back to the lab. And that brings us to the present. I'm baffled. Did the whole hour since the beginning of Nakabachi's presentation really happen? I check online for any news. The net is buzzing about the mysterious machine that crashed at, into Radi Khan. All of the major stations of Tokyo, even TOTV, are, are running special bulletins about it. Fortunately, it doesn't look like anyone was hurt, but Shodori is still closed off. Akihabara station is jammed with reporters and curious onlookers. Nobody has mentioned anything about the disappearance of thousands of people from Akihab Akihabara streets, nor about Makise Kurusu's murder. Dude, like this is like I said, it's some of the most unique and coolest time travel out there, in in my opinion, at least. It's all a mystery, a mystery. I see. So that's it. From a sofa, I spring to my feet, a wide grin on my face. Daru and Mayuri turn and stare. This is all an elaborate cover-up by the organization. Their influence has corrupted local law enforcement, which means our entire government may already be under control. My god. But they're underestimated me, for I am not so easily played. One day I will expose their deeds and put an end to their reign. Having come to a satisfactory conclusion, I take a celebratory bottle of Dr. P, my favorite soda, from the fridge. The lab has no air conditioning. Ice cold drinks are essential. Ah, elixir intellectualis. A drink fit for geniuses. Cola's better. Ocarine really loves his Dr. P. You know, I could go for some Dr. P every so often, you know? Like I kinda I kinda dig it sometimes. I pity the man who knows not the great not the greatness of his beverage. You know what I should do? I should buy a drink get slightly buzzed, and then actually do proper voice acting. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I step through this curtain dividing its center, and you'll enter the heart of the future gadget laboratory, the development room. 
just as the name implies, this is the room where we develop future gadgets. Needless to say, it is strictly off-limits to outsiders. Yes, I know the setup is cheap. I would much rather have an airlock than a curtain, but our research budget is already scraping the bottom of the barrel. Besides, what's important isn't money, it's ambition. What's up? What's... I can't guess what. I poked Daru. Oh, fuck. The game didn't fucking save. I poked Daru and bit him and and bit him and bit him fellow and bit him follow me into the development room. Why didn't it save? If it says it saved, it should have saved. What the fuck happened? All the windows here are are weather stripped with packing tape, so it's dim. And hot almost like a, like almost like a sauna. I've been wanting to buy an air conditioner for the lab, but there's no money for that. We're currently accepting donations. Upon entering the development room, I pick up the lab coat that it's lazily draped on the chair and put it on. Yeah, maybe, but you shouldn't have to do that. That's unfortunate. Corrupted, maybe? I always wear a lab coat in the development room for practical reasons, as well as symbolic ones. Garu, however, refuses to wear his. Putting it on and taking it off is apparently too much trouble for him. He can't be bothered to do anything that doesn't interest him. It's men like him who give our generation a bad name. His lab coat, purchased from my own pocket money, I might add, just sits on the shelf, which it's never been worn and probably never will be. Daru is the... Is the plan progressing smoothly? Uh, what plan? Daru gives me a blank look. I sigh and turn his attention to the table in the middle of the room. Is that nine up? <laughs> Sitting majestically on top of the table is a commercial grade microwave oven. It's significantly larger than newer home models. The plan, as in the plan, obviously, I'm talking about per perfecting gadget number eight. Oh, that. I was just supposed to know what you were, what you meant. We've known each other for what three years now. We went to high school together, and now we're going to the same university. We share an ir inseparable bond, like prison cellmates. He's only been a lab member for two months, though. We were in different classes junior year, and actually we don't- we didn't talk at all, so two years? Details, the point is, we've known each other a long time. I expect you to keep up with me here. Nope. Awkward silence. Dude, he is- he is big. <laughs> Man, I wanted to do- all I wanted to do was have one of those cool cryptic conversations where we talk about plans and preparations and other important sounding stuff, but no one knows what it means to accept us. Shot down again. So, are we getting any closer to figuring out what's wrong with gadget number eight? Not yet. So far, the Future Gadget Laboratory has completed a total of eight inventions. As I explained to Alpaca Man, the lab's primary goal is to develop weapons of for the war against the Dark Dominion, led by the organization that rules the world from the shadows. At present, we haven't completed any inventions of that sort. On the contrary, we haven't even figured out what we should make. But, long, but along the way, we have managed to create some ingenious futurish gadgets as a byproduct of our research. It's a fundamental truth of science that great inventions are often created by accident. In other words, serendipity. Allow me to introduce our glorious future gadgets. Gadget number one, the bit particle gun. Gadget number two, the bamboo helicam. Gadget number three, could this be Aura Aura? Gadget number four, mode snake. Gadget number five, once again I've made a worthless object by Goemon. Goemon, isn't wasn't that the uh, persona for um I forgot his name. Gadget number six, the the Sialume Saber? <laughs> and number seven, Ghost in the Ball. Ghost in the Ball! <laughs> Yosuke? Maybe. Honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. 
they can all be seen on the website Dara made, so feast your eyes upon the product of a mad scientist genius. You can go, that's it. It's a, it's a why something, right? <laughs> Anyway, our current problem is future gadget number 8, the phone wave. Name subject to change. I keep on hitting the fucking curse, the, 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 the mouse wheel. Phone wave is a pretty weak name, so I've added name subject to change to the, to the end until we come up with something better. For the record, it was Mayuri's idea, not mine. When the future gadget is completed, the three of us discuss what to name it. For names based on mythology, our names with our, our, our or names with hidden meanings that need extra explanation to understand. <laughs> I love how I I, I started strikers. I'm like, we're gonna play with him a little bit. I, I'll give him a little bit of respect, and then I can just fucking stop. As soon as he wasn't useful anymore, like you know, entirely useful. And here I am just like brute forcing Haru's <laughs> brute forcing Haru's psych ability on things that are fucking resistant to it. I prefer names based on mythology are names with hidden meanings that need actual explanation to understand. Daru thinks my naming style is too ridiculous, he just doesn't have the passion for words like I do. Mayuri can't be bothered to remember difficult names, she says they don't fit in her head. And so, our opinions on gadget names are always split. But I digress. Little respect, but no respect. <laughs> the phone wave, name sub subject to change, is in short a remote controlled microwave. You put food in the microwave before you leave, then on your way back, call the attached cell phone to start the heating process. Voila, hot food ready for your arrival. You would have to bypass a safety measure on that. I learned something about my microwave at least is I put something in the microwave with the intent to nuke it like in a couple of minutes and I went to the microwave and just pressed like one minute and it yelled at me to tell me to put food in it but I put food in it but I guess because I opened it put food in and closed it and left it alone for like three minutes it assumed there was no food in the microwave and it didn't let me turn on the microwave until I opened and closed the door again so Unless this thing doesn't have that safety feature, which I'm guessing it doesn't with these fucking bulbs. That's probably an overestimate. Yeah, it's probably more like three. Well, let's. I, I, I did. His, I did like his first two quests. Okay, we 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 went to the fucking. We, we, we went to the fucking, uh, the, the, um, the art exhibit. You put food into the microwave. <laughs> it's, like, it's still exponential, though, yes. You put food in the microwave before you leave, then you call it back on the way to the game. Voila, hop through it for your arrival. So it's basically a piece of junk. A few days ago, however, we discovered that the phone wave name such a subject to change has a second unintended capability. Our brave, or possibly just ditzy, Mayuri made it her daily routine to heat some frozen fried chicken by remote control. Long story short, she was defrosting her beloved Juicy Chicks Chicken number 1, as usual when the unexpected happened. The chicken came out more frozen than when she put it in. The microwave re-froze the chicken. Since then, Daro and I have been searching for the cause. We tried copying what Mayuyushi did, but we just can't reproduce the freezing phenomenon. And when we tried to freeze a banana, it turned out really weird. I don't get it. Daru, now looking completely fed up with the heat, starts fanning himself with his shirt. I know what he means by, by really weird. Let's see if we can't make it happen again. Mayuri, Mayuri, bring forth the bananas. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Are you gonna turn them into gel bananas? Gel bananas again? That's been bugging me, my Yushi. Can you stop calling them gel bananas? But gel bananas are gel bananas. I take a banana from Mayuri and stick the whole bunch into the phone wave. Name subject to change. Why do we? Why do you have to use a whole bunch? It's a waste of food. 
your stinginess could cost us the battle with the organization. That's fine with me. Mayushi always buys the bananas, and now Mayushi can't eat a single one. Next time, we only do one banana. But I already put the whole bunch in, so I ignore her hunger, her hungry complaints. The phone wave, name subject to change, is simple to use. It's a microwave with a phone taped on it. The number is already in my address book. I just need to call the phone microwave. Now, where did I put my phone? I checked my pants and coat pockets. Now, where did I put my phone? I checked my pants and coat pockets. Now, where did I put my phone? I checked my pants and coat pockets. Let's press the phone triggers button and call the cell phone and make a call to the phone wave. It allows you to confirm the controller settings. Okay, gotcha. Um, config. Uh, how the fuck do I do this? I save too. Um. Help. Where's the phone button? Phone trigger Z and C. Okay. I'm connected. Hello? This is the phone wave, name subject to change. This is the voice Mayushi's. This, this is the voice of Mayushi Guidance, the system Daru programmed to operate the phone wave. Do you hear Mayushi's voice? Be quiet, I'm trying to listen. You can operate the timer from this menu. After pushing the number button, please enter the heating time in instruction in seconds. For example, press pound 60 for one minute. For two minutes, press pound 120. Am I an old man if I if I say pound? Not not hashtag. Does that make me old? I don't know. Probably not. Entering the command properly. <laughs> Good. Entering the command properly will cause the phone wave name subject to change to function like a normal microwave. Is it weird that I think that there's something cringy about the word hashtag? I instead, instead, we're going to deliberately mess up and enter 120 pound. That should do it. This method was originally a simple mistake on Mayuri's, May, Mayuri's part, but it somehow starts the freezing process. The phone wave, name subject to change, comes to life. The turntable begins to rotate. Nice turntable, right? It's even spinning backwards. Backwards? It's when you unironic- that's fair, that's fair. I never noticed that. That might have serious implications. If we look at quantum critical behavior driven by who- uh, Hun's rule? Yeah, no. Not Hun's rule? No. Okay. The three of us wait and stare at the spinning bananas. After 120 seconds pass, the microwave chimes. Mayuri takes the bananas out. Gel bananas are ready. The bananas have become, not bananas, gelatinous blobs coated with a thin membrane. After Mayuri discovers that the phone wave named subject to change had a freezing function, we attempted to freeze a bunch of bananas. This is what happened. It just gets more confusing each time. Daru, you wouldn't mind eating one of these, would you? Of course you wouldn't. It's for science. Your sacrifice will be will forever be remembered. They look really nasty. The taste doesn't matter. What matters is that you eat it. So come on, Daru. No need to be shy. Break a leg or a stomach. Go for it. No way. Fine. Mary, the honor shall be yours. But gel bananas are all goopy, droopy, soft, and squishy. Wait, she already tried one? It had no flavor and wasn't tasty at all. Loopy, droopy, soft, and squishy. Daru, what do you think? Soft and squishy bananas, huh? Soft and squishy banana. Mayushi? 
Say your banana's all soft and squishy for me. Ericoon, your nose is bleeding. Please, just say it. Your bananas are all soft and... Don't make her say that, you perv. Daru retreats after I hit him with a tissue box. <laughs> Mayuri looks at us with an innocent smile. She doesn't get it, obviously. I once, I once, uh, I was, I was looking up a few things about Mayuri once after I finished Steins Gate, and one of the one of the, someone was wondering was like, is Mayuri like you know retarded, right? And one of my favorite comments was, if anything. She's the least of the entire cast. And it's 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 sort of true. Mayuri looks at us with an innocent smile. She doesn't get it, obviously. He doesn't have a point. Anyway. They're gelatinous, a semi-solid state of matter. In other words, there is a possibility that the intermolecular bonds were weakened. What could have particularly liquefied the bananas? I've got it. I turn to the whiteboard and write freezing in the middle. Then I cross it out and slap the board with my hand. What we thought was a freezing function is actually something else. A bold statement if I do say so myself. So why isn't anyone surprised? Now's the time to shout. What you say? Come on, don't be shy. The reactions are, are pathetically weak. Mayuri probably didn't even understand half of what I had said. Uh, we already knew that. Oh. The problem is we don't know what it's what it is doing or why it's doing it. If it's the opposite of freezing, then couldn't it be thawing them? What a silly question, Mayuri. What, what you're describing is just a normal microwave. Then, what is it? We don't know, and that's the problem. Hmm. He's right. To be honest, I haven't a clue. In any case, there's nothing we can do about it now. It's time for Daru and I to head to Daibo... Daib Daibiru? There's going to be a seminar uh, at ATF, and we have to be there. It's part of our studies at Tokyo Denki University. Denkai, probably. Summer credits, basically. We have to attend the seminar and write a report. Come to think of it, what's today's seminar about again? I looked it up before the summer holiday began. I should have written it down. Behind me is the large, unidentified object that crashed into the building near Akihabara Station. The building is under police barricade. No one is allowed to approach, but from a distance, the object appears to be some kind of satellite. As we cross the overpass that, con that, that connects UPX and Daibiru, I looked down to see a huge crowd of people moving through the plaza. There are even some... Garnishly dressed young men and women, the sort you don't usually see around Akihabara. I got mail. You know, I'm really sad about dropping my upa. It's worse than last year when I missed buying fatty Grego Gero Froggy. That's the one from last year, right? I thought it. I thought you weren't interested. There you go. You enjoy that, Mayuri. Have fun. There are even some garnish to just young men and women, the sort you don't usually see around Akiba. Everyone is walking towards the main street, which is still cornered off. Or cordoned off? Cordoned, sorry. Daru, aren't you going to check out Redicon? No point, can't get close. I've been following the news online, though. There's already a hundred threads about it on that channel. It's huge, man. Oh, so that's why he was staring at his phone earlier. We enter Daiburu and take the elevator to the 5th floor ATF assembly hall. Man, feel that AC? I'm alive! Unlike the lab, Daiburu has air conditioning, yet another reason for our diligent participation in the seminar. About the phone wave name subject to change, I might have found our answer. You know, that name subject to change thing is really annoying. I won't give in that easily. Even if no other lab members use name subject to change, I will carry on until we, the day we decide its true name. Now's not the time. 
So, what's your latest ridiculous theory? What do you mean, ridiculous? My brain considers every possibility, even those a, a lesser mind would say break the laws of nature. Don't dare call that ridiculous. So basically, you're just pulling stuff out of your ass. You can't call that science. Daru, I have a hunch that the phone, micro the phone wave, name subject to change, may be the key to opening Stein's gate. How's that? Stein's what? You lost me back at ridiculous, man. A chime signals our arrival on the fifth floor. The elevator door opens slowly as we step out of the elevator. Ah! I bump into someone. I quickly grab the person's shoulder to keep them from falling. I'm sorry. What? It's a girl, and I recognize her. Y you? It's Im impossible. Chills run down my spine. I stare at her face in disbelief. I saw this girl just three hours ago. Makisei Kurisu. Is there something wrong? Kurisu frowns and tries to back away, but I don't let go of her shoulder. My grip tightens. Ow! Y you... You should be dead. Why are you here? And you're even... There isn't a single blood stain on her clothes, and they're the same ones she was wearing when I found her. Only a serious wound could have produced that much blood. Yeah, as far as I can tell, she's completely uninjured. Not a scratch. Hey, that that hurts. Let me go. Kirisu pushes me away. Then she shoots me a wary glare. I realize I'm gaping in, gaping in disbelief. What, you mean how someone warned her? About something? What's wrong with you? You're okay? But that's impossible. Someone stabbed you. I saw you lying in a pool of blood. That again. I'm not gonna say anything, obviously, because... Because, you know... Can't. Daru interrupts. Wait, there's something strange about what he just said. What do you mean, again? I mean, you sent that email like a week ago, right? I sent you an email? Don't be ridiculous. I saw her dead just three hours ago. Hey, could she not talk about me like that? I'm perfectly fine. You know, that message was kind of weird. It was dated a week after I got it, which means it came from the future. It came from the future? That sounds like something you'd read on the internet, Daru. It's rare for you to talk about ridiculous theories. No, the date was definitely a week later. It came from, uh, the 28th. Wait, that's today. Daru pulls out his phone and shows it to me. He's right, the email was sent from my phone. He received it on July 21st at 12.56, but it was sent on July 28th, 12.54. It was a split, it was split into three mails. Someone stabbed Makiseke Urusu. Don't. Why did I send such a short message in three parts? And it looks like the third email got cut off. I do recognize the content, though. This is the email I sent you three hours ago. But I sent one mail, not three, and there should be more text. Did Dar really get this a week ago? Interesting. Suddenly, Kurisu is standing next to me, peering intently at the screen of Daru's phone. Oh, right, the email's not important. Well, maybe it's not right now. The real question is, why is she still alive? Is she an illusion? No, an evil spirit? Am I haunted? I don't believe in such unscientific drivel. I am a mad scientist. I timidly reach, to, reach out to Kirisu's face. My fingertips stroke her hair. Feel silky, quite the, cuti quite the cuticles. Substance? She has substance. Of course she's not a ghost. How silly of me. 
Ocarine, I don't think that's a good idea. I poke Kurisu's cheeks with my fingers. Such softness. Dead bodies don't feel like this. Not that I've ever touched one. Hey. Wait a minute. We've already touched when I bumped into her coming out of the elevator. I even grabbed her shoulders before being pushed away. Am I still doubted? Am I, and I still doubted that she had substance? That's just proof of how confused I am. If she's alive, then what did I see back at Roddy Khan? What was that scream I heard? Were they hallucinations? Just like that mass disappearance? That's right, she was stabbed. Maybe she's just hiding her wounds? That requires further this requires further investigation. I grab the hem of her blouse and slowly lift it. Are you trying to get yourself arrested? I just want to know the truth. I stare back at Kurisu as she trembles with anger, and I lift her blouse a little higher. What truth, you perv? You stupid? You want to die? She pushes my hand away. Luis Chan's famous line for the win. Daru shoots something, shot something silly, but I ignore him and press Kurisu. I know what I saw. No way. Did you just see my under... Kurisu's face turns bright red. She firmly puts her, pulls her blouse down. No, you fool, not that. To see your t you're just trying to see your tummy. <laughs> Earlier this afternoon, after Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, someone killed Makise Kurisu and left her in a pool of blood. I carefully explained everything that I saw. Wait, Dr. Nakabachi? What are you talking about, Okarine? Dr. Nakab Nak Nak Dr. Nakabachi's presentation was cancelled. Cancelled? Yeah, because of the satellite crash? Something's wrong. Our stories aren't matching. It's the same thing that happened right after I saw the mass disappearance. Mayuri's story didn't match mine. I need to know. Am I caught in some sinister plot? Is this another organization conspiracy? Excuse me, um... My name is Hoyin Kuma. Really, man? You're hopeless. Okay, hoyin son, I'd like to hear your story in more detail. Looks like she finally understands I'm not lying. But I still don't understand why my memories don't match everyone else's. I doubt that I can give her a good explanation. Just then, an older man steps out of the assembly hall. Makisei-san, it's almost time. Huh? Oh, right. Thank you. Risu glances at me one more time, then sighs and heads towards the small conference room. We should go too. Go where? To hear the lecture, duh. <sighs> that. Daro follows after Kurisu. Did she come to attend the lecture too? Strange. Why would the girl genius Makise Kurisu need to attend a lecture like this? Okay, my guess is a bit off. The girl genius didn't come to attend the lecture. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming here to I'm coming to hear me speak today. He's the one giving the lecture. <laughs> Japan's most famous girl genius, Makise Kurisu, who had her thesis published at the tender age of 17. According to Daru, she turned 18 a few days ago. Just, just... <laughs> just because we gotta know. <laughs> I first heard about her when Daru pointed her out in a Gossip Magazine article. That's when he told me that she was going to be a guest at ATF. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor Mayuri is just a 16-year-old high school student. I'd forgotten all about it. It's my first time giving a lecture. I'd like I like this the giving tech lecture like this, so please forgive me if I'm a little nervous. By the way, they dropped like this a fucking amazing Makise Kurisu statue recently. But they made her hair brown in the statue. When Makise Kurisu is a fucking redhead. The audience is pretty mixed. It's mostly students like us, but there's also a couple of professors. And Kurisu just gave me a sharp look. What did I do? When I return to her, when I return her stare, she quickly averts her eyes. I don't care if she's a genius or whatever. I still don't like her. We have these people fooled with her timid girl act, but I learned at Roddy Khan how cunning and aggressive she really is. Even if her murder was some kind of hallucination, my judgment of her character is still correct. 
For today's lecture, I've been asked to speak on the subject of time travel. It's not really my area of expertise, but I'll try my best. Time travel. Oh, uh ho. Let me start by saying that time travel is an absurd concept. Objection! Huh? Every member of the audience, not just Kurisu, is startled by my, in by my interruption. Perhaps I'm being slightly rude here, but I'm not the one to just sit and listen to some genius girl's drivel. It's presumptuous for you to claim that time travel is absurd. Okarine, you magnificent fool. Sitting by my side, Daru throws me a small salute. ATF staff are approaching, probably to kick me out. Perhaps I got too carried away. Um, okay, it's fine, I guess. It'll be easier to talk in a discussion format. Thanks to her proposal, the event staff refrained from escorting me out. She sounds a little pissed, but let's not mind that. But before that, please, listen to my thoughts on the, on the subject. Scientists have proposed many theoretical models of, the, of time travel, but there are 11 in particular that bear mentioning. Hmm, what are these major theories of time travel? I have, I have heard about the cosmic string theory at least. The 11 theories. Neuron star theory, black hole theory, light speed theory, uh, tachyon theory, wormhole theory, exotic matter theory. Dude, like fucking, I, I wish I could, I wish I, I could, I had like at least a decent level of knowledge on quantum mechanics. Cause that shit, it, it just always seems so cool. <laughs> Cosmic string theory, quantum gravity theory, cesium laser theory, cesium, cesium, elementary particle ring and laser theory, uh, direct antiparticle theory. I did actually, though, have like a really cool Skype call with some scientists from the fucking CERN Super Collider. That was that was a fun time. Hmm, not bad. Perhaps Makise Kurisu is is a worthy rival after all. However, all of these models are purely theoretical. Some some of them even contradict each other. Well, what if someone comes up with a twelfth model? Uh, uh, right. Well, it could be contradicted by the 13th model. Now, could it? Now, couldn't it? Damn, she twisted my question and used it against me. Touche, genius girl. Suddenly, my f I feel eyes on me. Some puffed up professors are giving me hard looks from across the room. Maybe I got too carried away. I don't want to risk losing my credits. I should back off for now. By the way, time travel to the future is available to us right now, according to Einstein's special theory of relativity. For example, let's say someone were to go to Haneda Airport and board a plane ahead to Okinawa. Upon arrival, that person would be about 100 millionth of a second farther to the future than I am. What does that mean? According to the special theory of relativity, time moves slower for objects as they approach the speed of light. For example, if you could run at near the speed of light, you could reach a point where time only moves half as fast for you. Oh, you can? How do I do that? I save too. Hits menu? Holy shit! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, refers to both Einstein's special theory of relativity published in 1905 and his general theory of relativity published in 1916, represented by the famous equation E equals mc squared. The special theory of relativity is defined by the following axioms. Objects cannot travel faster than the speed of light. As velocity approaches the speed of light, the passage of time approaches zero. As velocity approaches the speed of light, light approaches zero. Length approaches zero. As velocity approaches the speed of light, mass approaches infinity. The general theory of relativity adds the following axioms. In the presence of large gravitational fields, the passage of time slows down. In the presence of large gravitational fields, the space curves. In the presence of large gravitational fields, mass increases. Dude, I fully understand it now. It's so clear. <laughs> I'm gonna have to read the rest. 
it's all up here now. We got it. <laughs> We're good to go, boys. I'll, I'll check out them as, as as I as as we move along. If I find one that I, that I think is interesting, or if I or if something I want to understand more. For example, if you could run near the speed of light, you could reach a point where time only moves half as fast for you. If you were to keep running at the speed at that speed for 24 hours, 48 hours would elapse in the rest of the world, meaning you would jump one day into the future. Understand, Hoi and Kuma? Ah. Why are you sing why are you singling me singling me out? I'm doing my best to hold back, but it looks like Makase Kirisu wants to pick a fight. I wish she hadn't said that name in front of so many people. It's too great a risk to let others know my true name. But that's not really time travel, is it? Now, Professor, now a professor calmly makes an objection. True, Makisei's example isn't strictly time travel per se, but I never expected an older man, a professor at that, to refute an 18-year-old girl. Maybe he's just testing the genius girl's resilience. Yes, you're right. The genius girl readily concedes the point. If she were a normal 18-year-old, it would be impossible for her to be this calm in front of all these people. A normal 18-year-old would panic when refuted by such a distinguished-looking professor. And yet, Makisei Kuris is giving off an aura of gutsiness that says, I can take this guy on. Then what about going to the past? Going to the past is possible right now. Take a look at the sky at night. You can see light from tens of thousand years ago, can't you? That's not time travel either. This time, this time it's a nearby student who objects. Well, I was just getting started. Was it just me, or did Kurisu look a little nervous just now? Let's say we wanted to make a machine that could physically transport people through time. What would we need? The best candidates for this are cosmic strings and wormholes. A cosmic string is a string-shaped uh, crevice with extreme mass. A string-shaped crevice? That must be how they entered our universe. But do cosmic strings really exist? The crevice is about as wide as an elementary particle. I, isn't that like uh, quarks, right? Isn't that elementary particles? Quarks, right? Like, I'm pretty sure it's quarks. Uh, the smallest unit of matter, however, the definition of what constitutes the elementary particle is unclear. Certain elementary particles have a corresponding antiparticle with the opposite charge. Oh, maybe not. It has immense mass, so it distorts space-time. If you were to travel through that distortion, you could make a full circle around the string in less than 360 degrees. In short, you can do something resembling a warp. This is called a space-time angular deficit. By the way, none of this shit's in the anime. <laughs> when you pass through an area of angular deficit, transit time becomes zero. Now we apply this to the cosmic string moving at near light speed. According to the special theory of relativity, time will flow slower for the cosmic string in relation to its surroundings. Therefore, passing through that, the area of angular deficit would cause the transit time to become negative instead of zero. In other words, you will arrive in the past after transit. If you use two cosmic strings, you can do a space deficit jump. If you loop back to your original location, you can return to the same time you started revolving. And that, roughly speaking, is time travel by means of cosmic strings. By the way, just so nobody misunderstands, cosmic strings are not the same as super strings. Good lord. In physics, the theory that all matter in the universe is composed of strings, the vibrations of which manifest as elementary particles. This theory, which, po which persists 11 dimensions, is currently impossible to prove experimentally. However, it is said that if the theory is proven, it will explain all of the phenomenon from the birth and scope of the universe on a macro level to elementary particles like quarks on the macro on the micro level. That's it. Okay. Now then, you need three things in order to travel to the past with cosmic strings. First, the cosmic strings themselves, two strings to be exact. By the way, they are hypothesized to exist only where the universe was first formed. 
so they might be a little hard to find. Second, you would need the energy required to make them move to, to, to make them move them at near light speed. How much energy do you think you need to accelerate something as long as the Milky Way to, to near the speed of light? I'm pretty sure it's a little more than 1.21 gigawatts. This earns a few chuckles from the audience. Third, you'd need a spaceship capable of reaching these cosmic strings and returning, with the time traveler alive, of course. What do you think, Hoyin san? Care to take on the challenge of cosmic string time travel? Dude, Hoyin Kuma is way out of his fucking, fucking element here, dude. Like, that's even possible. And why the hell is she addressing me? I wasn't even the one who jeered this time. Hmm? Looks like Hoyin san doesn't want to take the challenge. In that case, let's consider wormholes. They may be a little more realistic than cosmic strings. By the way, Hoyin san, do you know what wormholes are? No, don't ask me. I'm trying to hold back here. Since I've, been, since I've been challenged, though, I can't leave the question unanswered. It's like a shortcut through space, right? Are you asking me or are you telling me? Yes, that's correct. I got it right. I sigh inwardly in relief. There are two wormholes joined by a tunnel. No matter how far away the wormholes are, the transit time through the tunnel is zero. But, oh no, there's a problem. The wormhole tunnel suffers from supergravity and collapses as soon as it opens. So we need something to negate the effect of gravity. So-called exotic matter, a substance with negative mass which repulses other matter. Negative mass, huh? Is it something that floats if you leave it on the ground? Maybe not, I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like. Curiously raises her right fist. Say that say, say that the wormhole tunnel is being squished by an invisible fist. In order to pass through, you need something that could oppose my fist gra grasping force so that it can squish any so it can't squish anymore. Curiously opens her fist. You stabilize the tunnel with exotic matter injection. Instantaneous travel between wormholes becomes possible. To travel through time, however, takes a little more effort. For example, let's say there's a wormhole entrance here in Akihabara, and the exit is Los Angeles. First, we send the wormhole in LA all the way to the end of the universe at the at near the speed of light, and once it's there, we yank it back to LA. I actually, I'm kind of understanding this a little bit. I'm following this at, 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 a, at a very rudimentary level. Uh, how? According to the special theory of relativity, time slows down for objects. <laughs> time slows down for objects at a speed of light, meaning the the hole that returned to LA would be farther in the past than Akihabara's hole. So now, if Hoyin San jumped into the wormhole, he traveled to LA several years before he left. However, this is this still can't be called true time travel. It only seems that way. It's called the Urashima effect. In special relativity, a phenomenon originating from the fact that the time slows down as an object approaches the speed of light. For example, imagine that an astronaut travels to a nearby star and back to at close to the speed of light. This ship might take a few years from the astronaut's perspective, but he would return to Earth to find that thousands of years have passed in his absence. Oh, so like, um, Interstellar, right? I don't know, I've never, I never, I never actually seen the movie. <laughs> the important part is to return to Akihabara from LA through the wormhole once more, since the transit time is zero. Boy and Son will, will return to Akihabara several years in the past, time travel complete. The prerequisite for wormhole travel is simpler than the ones for cosmic string travel. First, the wormhole itself. They may exist somewhere in the universe, but nobody has ever seen one. The question is, can you even see one? Second, the energy required to move a wormhole to the end of the universe and back at near light speed. Third, exotic matter, which by the way has not been confirmed to exist. So if I if I'm getting this right, it seems like a lot of it seems like a lot of um, quantum quantum physics and quantum mechanics theories are based on, hey, if this exists, it's possible if this exists. Now I don't know if this exists, and the thing we need to make it work, I don't know if that exists. 
But if it did, this would be right. You can't prove me wrong, but you can't prove me right either. <laughs> so implementation of either one of either one would require a ridiculous amount of effort. It's not even a theory though. A theory is based on fucking. It, a theory is still based on you know. It's a theory isn't completely unfounded. You know, it's more of a hunch. <laughs> I would say. So do you see what I meant when I said that time travel is an absurd concept? Time travel theories are just thought experiments. Not one of them can create a viable time machine. That is my answer. Isn't there anything simpler, like something you can pull out of a drawer and just use or something? I'm afraid not. A firm declaration. This is, this is the limit of modern physics. I can't say how it might change in 10 years though. <laughs> Besides, even if someone did overcome the logistical requirements, there may be more factors that prevent time travel from working. And that's the and that's because fundamental problems concerning the principle of causality have not been solved. A scientific and philosophical principle that states that every event has a cause, and it is by that cause that an effect is produced. The theory of relativity is, for, is founded upon this principle. However, quantum physicists have observed micro-scale phenomena that do not appear to obey the principle of causality. Oh, okay. So there's like... Mi micro particles in the universe that just do things without a cause. I mean, time paradoxes and conservation of mass. The mass of the entire universe is constant. If a time tra if a time machine traveled from the future to the past, there would be sudden there would be the sudden extra mass from the time machine and its pilot in the past. I remember reading in a book, not a terribly reputable book, but still, that such a violation of mass conservation would put the universe in danger. It didn't say what kind of danger, though. If you think that conservation of mass applies to macro systems like the universe or micro systems like atoms or elementary particles, you are mistaken. What? Is that true? Ah, she's laughing at my reaction. That little. How mortifying. That's, well, I mean, okay, I'm pretty sure this, this like, conference takes place in the anime, but it does not go this in-depth in the fucking slightest of quantum mechanics. Conservation of mass only applies to chemical reactions that doesn't hold in modern physics at all. Something can come from nothing. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Well, yeah, if you, if you don't believe that, then you can't believe the Big Bang happened. Then what is the problem? The time paradox of the time paradoxes of time the time paradox of time paradoxes in other words the grandfather paradox oh that thing where you kill your own ancestor before you were born as long as the paradox goes unsolved the time travel can never be realized never what if you just don't kill them you can't think of it like a sci-fi movie it's not just about your family tree there are far greater dangers than that really it doesn't seem that dangerous any paradox, no matter how small, would cause the total collapse of causality, relativity, and every other physical law in existence. Paradoxes are nothing more than thought experiments. They cannot occur in reality, and they should not. Nothing has even, no, nothing that has even a 0.000001% chance of causing a paradox can happen. The universe won't allow it. Wouldn't you say that? Wouldn't you say this is the logical conclusion? There may be loopholes like paradox, like parallel worlds or self-consistency principle, but those seem too much like fantasy to, for me to accept. Yeah, I grind my teeth. When I hear, when I see Makisa Kirisu looking at me with her composed expression, I avert my eyes. Looks like I have no choice but to concede. Makisa Kirisu truly is a genius. I ended up listening to all of Kirisu's lecture at ATF. After two time travel theories she introduced at the beginning, she explained the rest with equal eloquence. She seemed a little nervous at first, but that quickly changed as she spoke. By the end, it was an impressive lecture, so impressive that you wouldn't think it was an 18-year-old's first time. 
She did well to respond to my malicious questions with sarcasm. She's got guts. Wait, why am I praising her? Leaving that aside, I saw Makase Kirizu dead, and yet she is still alive. My memories don't mesh with reality, and not just about Kirisu, my, con my conversations with Daru and Mayuri don't make sense either. Everything would be solved if I just told myself that what I saw was a dream, an illusion, it never happened, but never say never. These le this, this leaves me with no choice. After parting ways with Daru at ATF, I headed to Yanabashi Shrine, Ayashi Shrine. I needed to get exercised. I seriously doubt that the Makise Kirisu ATF was a ghost. Regardless, it's natural to speak at an exorcism after such an experience. Seek an exorcism after such an experience. I'm Japanese, it's in our blood. Yanabayashi Shrine is located on the other side of Kanda River. To find it, enter the first side of the road after crossing uh, Masebashi Bridge. It's a very small shrine that doesn't fit with the surrounding multi-tenant buildings. Kanda Myojin is the more famous shrine in Akiba, but I, de I de deliberately chose this one. The shrine is so small you could easily miss it if you weren't looking. Regardless, I can hear the chirping of cicadas from the few trees growing here. It's Ocarine! <laughs> there are two girls sitting in front of the main building. One of them is Mayuri. The other is a docile looking beauty in traditional Miko attire. Ushibaru Luka. A stunning example of feminine charm and grace. Lips delicate like a cherry blossom in bloom. The essence of Japanese beauty. The chief priest's son. That's right. Son. Lovely in every way. But he's a guy. Good afternoon, Okabe-san. He bows his head. The voice of a girl, the mannerisms of a girl. More feminine than any girl I know. But he's a guy. Taller than Mayuri, yet oh so slender. But he's a guy. Looks stunning in Miko robes, but he's a guy. Holding a bamboo broom, apparently in the middle of cleaning, but he's a guy. <laughs> it's almost evening, yet still hot as hell outside, but he's a guy. Damn cicadas won't shut up. But he's a guy. <laughs> Lukako, the blade I gave you, what happened to it? He's a, fr he's a friend of mine. I call him Lukako. We met when I rescued him from some aggressive f photographers in Akihabara's pedestrian heaven. It also so happens that Lukako and Mayuri are classmates. I learned that fact after I had gotten to know him. Lukako is taken aback by my sharp question. He starts fidgeting with a flustered face and tears in his eye and tears in his eyes. Um, you mean Demon Sword Samedare? Correct. I bought it for you so you could learn to control your power. Oh yeah, you bought it at Blade Works, right? I think it cost you 980. Don't say another word anymore, and they will come to silence you. They are gonna silence me? Thanks for worrying about me, Okreen, but who are they? I ignore Mayuri's question. So, Lukako, are you making sure to practice with uh, Samidare like I told you? Yes, I do practice swings once a day. As long as you carry it and master Sensin Seishin Zama school at Swordship, you can prevent the dark flame inside you from consuming your soul. Demon Sword Samidare may be an intimidating sword, but that is only the form it takes to hide from the world. One, when one worthy of to wield it appears, it unleashes its true power. And it was on a sale for 980 yen, tax included. Thank you, Okabe-san. It was a wonderful present. My name is, isn't Okabe. It's Okarin. I'm sorry, Kiyoma-san. As long as you understand now, speak the words. As long as you understand, now speak the words. Uh, um, help, sai... Kangaloo? No, 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 not Kangaloo, Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Yes. L. Psi Kangaroo. D did I get it right? Lukako smiles happily as I nod. Thank you. Such a lovely smile. 
but he's a guy. <laughs> Such a beautiful master dis disciple relationship. Mayushi's not a um, Fujoshi, but she's getting a little excited. Uh, Mayuri chan, please don't imagine such things. Jeez. Though we don't have a master disciple, though we don't, though we do have a master disciple relationship. I, Huey, and Kuma have gone to great lengths to brainwash, uh, I mean teach, Lukako about the evil conspiracies that rule the world and how to resist them. That stuff about Demon Sword Samidare is part of that training. Look aside, Lukako is very obedient and hardworking. Plus, he always he's always eager to learn new things. A master couldn't ask for a better disciple. Though he does have the weakness of not catching on too quickly and being too shy. What are you doing here, Mayuri? I came to see Luka-kun. Uh, Komi-san's coming up next month, and I want him to cosplay as uh, Kirari-chan from Rynet. But he won't say yes. But cosplaying, that's just too embarrassing for me. But I'm sure you'll look great in it. The phrase, someone's this this cute can't be a girl, is really popular, you know. Come on, make your cosplay debut. Mayuri's hobby is making costumes. She made at least 30 so far, but it's rare for her to wear one herself. Instead, she seems to get her kicks from seeing other people wear them. It looks like she's chosen Lukako as her next target. Naturally, the costume Mayuri is currently raving about is for a female character. Normally, I would understand why a man wouldn't want to dress like a girl, but come on. Lukako has no problem wearing Miko robes. Why should, why should cosplay be any different? But whatever, I have no business to, I, I have business to take care of. Save the trivial stuff for later. Eh, but it's really important to Mayushi. Mayushi. It, and it's trivial to me. Anyway, look at go. There's a reason. There, there's a good reason for my being here today. I need you to perform an exorcism. An exorcism? Then I'll go get my dad. Please. Wait. No, it's nothing that serious. I just need some peace of mind. That's why I came here instead of Kanda Shrine. So with that said, bring out the usual. Um, the usual? You mean Samidare? No, what the hell? What the hell? Who the hell uses a demon sword for an exorcism? The usual for an exorcism should be obvious. Oops. My guys, realize how fucking loud these cicadas are. Um, we need to fucking turn this game down even more. Is it sound effects volume? Probably. Yeah, that, that, that quite did it, though. Yeah, it quieted him down a little bit. Uh, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's that stick with the zigzaggy paper thingies that the priest do, does a shaky thingy with. They do, yeah, if you want to shut one up. <laughs> that sounded really dumb, Ocarine. Quite a shock to hear that from Mayuri. Oh, the Onusa? But I don't know if my father will lend it to me. I'll go ask him. Lukako makes a quick bow, then runs off towards his house, which is on the shrine grounds. Meanwhile, Mayuri takes her pocket watch out of her bag to check the time. It's a very old watch, not the sort you'd expect a high school girl to carry. Its name is Pockety. Obviously, that's the name Mayuri gave it. It's not... 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 It's, not its brand name or anything. Uh, I don't think... I can think of a voice actor in the original, in the end. Well, it sounds like they got the same voice actors, at least. Um, I can think of one you'd want to turn off. I just know that if you want to watch the anime, you... Usually I'm, usually I'm not, like, anti-English anti dub. But for this show, I've seen a little bit of the dub for this show. And it is fucking terrible. Obviously, that that's the name Mayuri gave it, not its brand name or anything. Ever since elementary school, Mayuri has carried Pakati with her everywhere. It's almost it's her most important treasure. Well, time for me to go to work. Do your best. You're gonna you're going straight home afterwards. You going straight home afterwards? Yep. Mayuri leaves in. Mayuri lives in uh, Aki, Akibu Akibu Akibukuro Akibukuro. She comes to Akihabara by train just about every day. 
It should be obvious since we're childhood friends and all, but I live in uh, Ikibukuro too. I thought I've been staying, though I've been staying at the lab since summer break began. Mm, see you tomorrow. I call Mayuri to stop before she trots off. Yeah, dude. Did you know that Persona 5 made Akihabara? <laughs> they named an entire town after the game. Wait, Mayuri, back at Ra uh, Radikan, you heard a man scream, right? Scream? Mayuri blinks several times and puts her fingers to her temple as if in thought. And she gives a smile. When was that again? This afternoon. I don't think I heard anything. Well, alright. Oakling's a weirdo. Mary leaves this time for good, though she pauses to wave at least a half a dozen times before disappearing beyond the archway. Thanks for waiting, Okabe-san. Okiko returns shortly after Mayuri leaves. In his hands is the white zigzaggy thing I asked for. Dad let me borrow it, thank goodness. Um, did Mayuri try and leave? Uh, don't worry about it, Mayuri. Begin the exorcism at once, Okiko. Um, okay, but do you really want me to do it? What exactly am I exercising anyway? Lukako is flustered. Is he really up to this? I'm beginning to doubt. I should have known better. The instant doubt touches my heart, a terrible chill shoots up my spine. <sighs> it's the evil spirit in my arm. I grab my, I grab my violently shaking wrist. Be still, foul spirit. <sighs> Hurry, Lukako. It's trying to take over. No way, please. Hang in there, Okabe-san. I'm, I'm not Okabe. I'm, I'm sorry, Ryoma-san. Uh, but what should I... Exorcism, hurry, just do it like I taught you. Okay. With a serious look on his face, Lukako grabs the Onosa with both hands as if it were a sword. His stance is impressive, I've taught him well. Um, um, his face is red and he can barely talk. It looks like he wants to say something, but he is hesitating. Panicking, because he feels awkward. Amateur. Please, Luca, expel the spirit from me. I... I... I don't want to kill you. Uh... Luca starts crying. Looks like he's really annoyed. Reason tells me he's a guy, but his lovely appearance makes me feel guilty. Like I made him... Like I made a frail girl cry. Yeah, do you get shot right in the street for that? It looks like Lukako managed to work up his resolve. Hear me, evil spirit. He raises the Onusa up high, shaking it left and right. Please leave Okabe, I mean, I mean Kiyoma-san. That's great, now strike my arm with those zigzags. Eh? The tip of the Onusa touches my upper arm. In an anime, this would be the cue for some dramatic shockwave to occur, but nothing like that happens. The only sound is the chirping of cicadas. D did it work? I take a deep breath. I, the trembling in my arm has stopped. Oh fuck, what's this? <laughs> and this to you like, yeah, this Loki guy sounds like Persona 5 drop it. <laughs> Okay, looks like you drove away the evil spirit. Good job, Lukako. Lukako sighs in relief and blushes. I'm glad I was able to help. His shy smile really does make him look like a girl. But he's a guy. After I get back to the lab, I take the broken TV down to the brawn tube workshop for repairs. Daru and Mayuri have already gone home, so I have to carry the TV down the narrow staircase by myself. It's brutal, back-breaking work, but I manage. 
push the workshop door open with my hips and head inside. The room is dimly lit by the setting sun, but the gloom is offset by the glare of the, from a, the gigantic CRT in the center of the room. A 42-inch CRT television. Oh, really? It doesn't seem like something that could get in modern. You can get in modern Japan. With LCD TVs becoming the new standard, I seriously doubt anyone would want a bulky old CRT. Well, there's two in my fucking dining room. Yo, what's up, Okabe? Sitting in front of the huge, sitting in front of the huge CRT is an equally huge man reading a sports newspaper. Okay, I'm not gonna call him this because I can't pronounce that. They just call him Mr. Braun, so I'm gonna call him that. He's the workshop manager, actually the owner of his whole building, Mr. Braun. I call him Mr. Braun. Okay, never mind, we're good. It's a fitting name for someone who loves Braun tubes. What's up? That TV you gave me looks broke, that's what. I bet you were treating it rough, weren't ya? I barely managed to set the heavy TV on the counter. Love, you gotta, you gotta treat him with love. I got mail. Hi, Harry, what do you want? I didn't want any of the other uh, Gero Froggies, but I did want Fatty. But now that I think about it, it wasn't really that cute. Actually, it was kind of weird looking. I wonder why I wanted one so bad. Hey, I just realized Fatty kind of looks like Darukun. Just the body, right? No comment on Daru's face? Uh oh. <laughs> I'm guessing it didn't go well. <laughs> I got shoved in the fucker! Oh fuck. What's about ball guy talking about love? Sends shivers down my spine. I'll need repairs post haste. Man, why do you always talk like that? Mr. Braun get, begins investigating the cause of the problem. With nothing better to do, I look around the store. I don't know if it's just the dust hanging around the air, but something feels stagnant about this place. There are CRT screens everywhere. The haphazard layout makes them seem like junk, but they're all. I can fucking think about that tweet, goddammit. They're all functional, according to Mr. Braun. Oh. Fuck. They got a full range of both old and new. Some of them are probably older than me. There are even some flat screen HD CRT and flat screen HD CRTs that came out just before LCDs took the market. You're open late today. Don't you usually come up closer on this? Don't you usually close around 7? The crowds in Akihabara think thin quickly at night. All of the major electronic stores close around 8 or 9 o'clock. And then, as if the liveliness of the day was simply a lie, the town goes silent. I'm expecting something. You mean that chipmunk of yours? Don't be calling my little girl a chipmunk, you hear? The manager glares at me and takes a photo from his wallet. It's a picture of a young girl, shyly making a peace sign at the camera. One might assume this muscle-bound man to be some kind of pervert, but the girl is actually his daughter. She's about 12 years old now, I think. His love of her is second only to, for his, to his love for CRTs, or was it the other way around? I see her in, in the store every day, every now and then and again. What was her name again? You touch Nae, you're dead. That's it, Nae, a rare name that means to braid. She pops up at the store now and again, so we've interacted with, the, with her before. And by we, I mean Mayuri, since she's the only one Nae gets along with. Nae always hides when she sees me or Daru. I must admit, I'm impressed she can sense my aura of madness at such an early age. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, dude, you gotta play it on the CRTs, dude, otherwise it just doesn't work properly, and I can't get my smash out! There's few things that people care about more than Smash players and their fucking consoles and TVs. 
must admit, I'm impressed she can sense my aura of madness at such an early age. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Brown makes a grandiose kissing gesture in his daughter's photo. Once again, shivers on his spine. But seriously, besides your daughter, has this workshop ever had a customer? I've been renting the second floor for about six months. I don't recall ever seeing a customer. I would be surprised. I would be surprised if this place was actually making any money. Ain't a customer. He puts away. He puts away the photo and goes back to checking the TV, leaving me with, a va with that vague answer. Hmm. It's probably just a loose solder on the board. I can fix it. Really? Well, then by all means. Hold on. I'll get you an estimate. What? You're charging me? What do you think? This ain't some charity. You're the one who gave us the TV. Yeah, so what? Never said, I, never said I'd service it for free. Curse you, you have some gall to say that after fro foisting a half-broken piece of junk onto us. Oh, shut up. If you don't want it, I can take it back. Though, I'll have to charge you for its safe disposal. Extortion! You dare cheat the man who very well may charge, change the future of mankind? <laughs> Who's that now? Me, of course. Who else? Brush your teeth and go to sleep, kid. You've got some nerve to be back talking when I'm letting you rent the second floor to, to, for next to nothing. Hmm. You shall have your money, Mr. Braun. In the end, I'm no match for him. Just then, I heard the door open. Look up to see the girl that has entered the store. She's wearing a vintage jacket and tight shorts that highlight her long limbs and athletic figure. I find myself particularly impressed by her well-defined thighs. And her fucking dagger of a of a fucking elbow. What's that? <laughs> God damn it. Suddenly time stops. It feels like something activate activated the world. So wild out sorry. Um The girl is standing there with her arm in the air. Her smile gradually fades into confusion. What kind of reaction was she hoping for? Seriously. Anyway, is she the person Mr. Brown was expecting? Maybe she's someone he knows personally. Another daughter? Or dare I say, his girlfriend. She finally drops her pose and clears her throat. Um, I called earlier. I'm Amane. And just like that, time starts moving again. Oh, so you're the kid from the for the job interview. I'm Mr. Braun, the manager. A job interview? This young woman? You want to work at the dull, dirty, depressing, debt-ridden Braun II workshop with this filthy old manager? You want an extra thousand yen add to your rent? My words are about the truth, though I suppose it's not my place to get involved. Anyway, I had no idea that the Braun II workshop was hiring. You always look so... free. I didn't know you needed any help. Actually, I'm the one who begged for the job. The girl looks a little embarrassed. The boss refused at first, but I wouldn't take no for an answer. That's honestly surprising. You guys would drive or rare these days. Take a seat there, young lady. Oh, thank you. Looks like they're going to have a formal interview. I was going to leave, but since Mr. Braun hasn't kicked me out, I'll stick around a bit longer. The girl's expression is stiff. I guess she's nervous. Just because of a part-time job interview? In contrast to how she said she wouldn't take no for an answer, she doesn't seem to be so enthusiastic. Right, what was your name again? Amane Suzuha. Age? Um... Okay, I don't know, I don't know how it works in Japan. But that's not allowed, in, at, least, at least not in New York. That question is not allowed during interviews. At least, at least where I live. You can't ask someone's age. You can ask, are you older than 18? Or are you older than 21 or something like that? But you can't ask for someone's age. But over here, I guess we're obsessed with, with discrimination. So maybe it's not as bad in Japan. And maybe, maybe this rule doesn't apply. I don't know. I'm fucking whatever. Same as me. By the way, they just had to tell us that she's 18. <laughs> Student? No. She shakes her head. Why do you want to work here? Because I love CRTs. Tired. You start tomorrow. Wait. 
What? Is this some sort of joke? Are we on camera? Thanks, boss. Finally, Amane Suzaha seems to relax. <laughs> it's really weird, though, that Mayuri's 16, though. Like, it seems like they, they want to make sure that every girl is 18, but not Mayuri or, Luku, or Lukako. And then she looks at me. Um, who are you? You you dare ask my name? Banish the thought from your head, girl. You learn to learn it would place your life in jeopardy. Countless women have learned my name only to find themselves targets of the organization. Sarah in America, Claudia in Italy, Simone in France. I wouldn't put anyone else in danger. Hey, stop pulling things out of your ass. Isn't she just doesn't understand my pain. This idiot rents the second floor. Name's Okabe Rintaro. My name is not Okabe, it's Hoi. Quit it or I'll raise your rent. I'm Okabe Rintaro. The girl stands up, places her hand on my shoulder, and looks at me with a serious expression. I don't know anything about the organization this that's after you. But if you're ever in trouble, Okabe Rintaro, let me know. I can help with stuff like that. Huh? Stuff like what? If necessary, I can hurt them so bad they'll never bother you again. Mr. Brun, I don't think you should hire her. Yeah, she might be a wild one. I'll fire her if she causes any trouble. Anyway, ignore that organization nonsense. It's all in Okabe's head. It is? You just keep things you just keep thinking that. But someday, the world will kneel before me. And then Anamane Suzuha stares straight at me again. Maybe she has a habit for looking people in the eye. So that's the current trend. Thanks for the tip. Trend? I don't think so. Got mail. I really okay with it with the uh, this is exorcism. I feel like the more traditional ceremony would have been better. I'm worried something might have happened to you because my exorcism wasn't strong enough. It bothers me so much I can't sleep at night. P.S. Because of that, I couldn't do more than three practice swings with Samadare. Uh, what does traditional ceremony entail? I need detail. I, I need details. Don't tell me it's an ancient forbidden secret. Don't worry. Thanks to exorcism, my right arm has been quiet for a while. Still, there is no telling what could set it off. If I'm forced to battle again, let's just pray that the organization's ass ass ass. ass. I, it's not my fault that I read it like that. Assassins don't find me. Uh, this one's fine. Is there an internet option? Uh, I guess that's... Is that internet? Maybe. Ooh. I've ring my fucking wallpaper didn't change. Game lied to me. Didn't he put my phone away? Oh, there it goes. Oh wait, so then oh okay, so it's like it's only up there for like half a second. Gate of the Steiner. Fine. What about the phone ringtone? Oh, all the same. Okay. 
Okay, let me go get my let me go get my other coffee real quick. Yeah, well, nothing better than lukewarm coffee. How hot does it get in Japan? Because Jesus Christ, every single time I see like an anime in summer, they always complain about how hot it is. Is there like not AC in Japan? <laughs> so hot. I was at a university all I was at university all morning. As I returned to Akihabara, the heat is now becoming unbearable. I grab an iced coffee at the bakery inside Yodobashi to quench my thirst. While I'm at it, I guess I'll check at channel on my phone. It's mostly frequent by a cult board, the future technology board, and sometimes the physics board. I search for trends on the mass disappearance phenomenon or Mak Makise Kurisu stabbing, but turn up nothing. So, were those who lose nations after all? When I peek at the occult board, I find posts in multiple threads from someone claiming to be John Titer. Wait, John Titer is back? John Titer appeared on America BBS 10 years ago, claiming to be a time traveler. He claimed to have traveled from the year 2036 in order to obtain an old computer, the IBM 5100. It has like a, it's unique um, coding thing, I think. An American, yeah, yeah, it's fictional. American Computer Company, well, IBM isn't a, isn't a fictional American, whatever. Not only do they develop and sell hardware and software, they also offer service and consultation to enterprises. In recent years, they have made the latter of their, their main focus. IBM invented floppy disks and hard drives. Why does it say fictional? As far as I'm concerned, everything this as this says here is true. <laughs> Whatever. His claim started quite a storm among the BBS his denizens. Peter also made several accurate, if fragmentary, predictions of the future of future events. The start of the Iraq War and the spread of the Kutzfeldt Jakob disease, for example. To prove he was from the future, he explained the principles behind his time machine and provided pictures of its operation no, of its operation manual. But after about four months, he disappeared without ever revealing his identity. At one point, his predictions gained popularity even in Japan. Yes, he certainly did get some things right, but on the other hand, he missed several others. Some of his posts contradict each other too. That's why, to this day, most people doubt his authenticity as a time trap as a time traveler. So, after ten years of silence, the name John Titer is now on Japanese BBS. Ridiculous! It's obviously a troll. I want to see what this game's tips menu is for troll. On the internet, to post controversial opinions or false information for the purpose of provoking a reaction. Yeah, okay, well, that's pretty decent. It's pretty decent definition. First of all, John Titer is an American, yet now he's posting on at channel in Japanese. Let's take a look at his posts. 
I don't expect you to believe that I came from the year 2036. I see that everyone would like to know more about my time machine. Time travel technology is de was developed by CERN. They completed this, the first time machine in 2034. Time Traveler, lol. John Titer, lol. More details on the time machine. Do they sell time machines? How much do they cost? I've got about 100 million yen saved. Can you send me one? CERN has, a, CERN has a monopoly on time machines. Not even the most popular, powerful nations on Earth can acquire one. To say nothing of private citizens, CERN uses their time machine for power. By 2036, the world has become a dystopia. There is no war, no conflict. However, this is a false peace founded on the, on the complete eradication of liberty. What does LOL mean? What do you, why, why, did you, why did you come to this time? Was the Akiba satellite crash you were doing? Wait guys, Titer doesn't understand at channel lingo. Let's keep it simple, okay? If you know what I mean. Get a trip code, asshole. What the fuck is a trip code? By the way, if you can't figure it out, at channel is basically fucking 4chan. <laughs> I came here to change my present. In other words, your future. My mission is to destroy CERN's dystopia and destroy and res destroy, restore freedom to the world. This is a wonderful time you're living in. Everyone is free, but you will lose it all in just 20 short years. It is vitally important that you understand what the future has in store. What is a trip code? I might get one if you tell me what it is. You said only CERN has time machines. You have a time machine. That must mean you're working for CERN. Therefore, your goal can't be to destroy CERN's dystopia. You're a fraud. QED. Was it a dystopia? How can CERN take over the world in just 20 years? Look at the Middle East. You've been reading too much manga if you think you can get those guys to stop killing each other. Who asked you to change the future? Trying to play God? If they're, if they're promising world peace, then I for one welcome our new CERN overlords. My time machine is a prototype reverse engineered from stolen CERN technology. Compared to their time machine, its capabilities are quite limited. In 2036, the world is ruled by a single, all-powerful governing body. They control every aspect of our lives, deciding what we will eat, where we will live, and whom we will marry. There is no privacy and no choice. Anybody who dares oppose them is eliminated. There are no trials. In movies and stuff, all small changes to the past cause huge changes in the future. You've already changed the present by coming here. What happens if you make unexpected changes to the future? Implying CERN rules the world, do you even know what CERN is? Well, OP is a troll. So, if we find his dad and kill him, then the time traveler, Lamau, will never be born and we won't have to listen to this bullshit, am I right? I want to know if you can meet your past self. Can you have self cessed Of course you want to know. I'm talking about the so-called grandfather paradox. Well, that's been debunked. This world line has a divergence of 0 0.57124% compared to the world line I came from. Killing my father would alter divergence, creating a world line where my father is dead. However, it would not erase this world line. I would go on existing. CERN is a particle physics research institution that hasn't that hasn't changed in 2036. It is possible to meet your past self. The prevailing theory in my time is that nothing would happen. I, however, haven't met my past self. If you're really a time traveler, then fucking prove it. Post time machine pics or get the fuck out. Many worlds interpretation? Well, slow down, bro. Research, research institution taking over the world? Well, what? I do not feel the need to prove that I, that I am what I say I am. I am only posting these messages on a whim. My mission comes first. What are world lines? Can you meet yourself from another world line? What happens if you do? Late reply. A trip code is a way to identify posters. Put hashtag pa I said a hashtag. Fuck. Pound password after your name. Lol backpedaling. World lines are like an infinite number of rivers flowing in parallel. Along the way, they are constantly branching out into new world lines. This is called divergence. For example, whether or not you post this message board has practically no effect on the world's divergence. But if you were murdered, let's say, then divergence would change. However, it would only change by about 0.000002%, if that. A single human being's death is not terribly significant on a global scale. Wars, disasters, acts of terrorism, and other events that would cause widespread death and destruction have a much greater effect on divergence. Thanks for telling me about trip codes. I'll make sure to use them from now on. I'm starting to get tired of so let's pick let's pick up again tomorrow. It's been fun talking to everybody.
Looks like they already made a, an archive of these threads. Of course, they've, of course, there have been sites dedicated to John Titor for years now. This post clearly resembles what the original Titor wrote 10 years ago. I've read one of the books on Titor, that's how I know. This new John Titor is clearly an imposter. There are many Titor fanatics on At Channel. He's not exactly a household name in Japan, but I doubt anyone would fall for this level of trolling. As I continue to read, however, I find the response the opposite of what I expected. I find the response the opposite of what I expected. Everyone's accepting this time traveler as if this were his first appearance. Nobody has even mentioned his appearance 10 years ago. Finding this strange, I try posting a retort, but everyone ignores me. What the hell? You can figure this out if you do a little research, people. There's the, ori there, there's the original John Titor thread archived in English and plenty of Titor blogs in Japanese. Oh, fuck. Ugh. Can we go to a world line where fucking Among Us didn't exist? Please? <laughs> Enter John Titor's name into the search engine. 12 matches. Only 12? Moreover, all 12 are about the current Titor's postings on that channel. I can't find a single trace of the Titor from 10 years ago. Bizarre, this just can't be. I searched for information on Titor a few years ago. Back then, I got tens of thousands of hits. Is this search engine filtered? I tried searching on another site just to make sure, but it gives the same result. What is this madness? It feels like I've stumbled onto another plane of reality. Could this be another organization conspiracy? These past two days, I've been surrounded by nothing but chaos and confusion. I'll call Daru. I'll know about Titer for sure. After all, I've talked to him about Titer before. I only vaguely remember the details of that conversation, but I'm positive the conversation happened. By the time I dig my phone out of my bag, I no longer feel like making the call. Instead, I send him an email on the way back to the lab. He replies with his location. By May Queen. He means May Queen Yan Squared, a maid cafe. Dara is a regular there. Apparently, 3D cat maids are his thing too. May Queen Nyan Squared is only three. I'm going to just call it May Queen. Is only three minutes walk from the lab. Coming from uh, Dara Mababababa, take a left at Dudu across the quota, and you'll find that's where I'm headed now. That's usually busy in it's it's usually busy in Akiba during summer break, but now it's even busier because of the Rady Khan incident. The area was blocked off yesterday, but it doesn't look like they could keep the main road closed for two days straight. I haven't seen a single police officer today. But the Rady Khan building still seems off limits. The entrance shutters are closed shut and sealed with yellow police tape. We're here now in Akihabara the day after the unexplained satellite crash. The police barricade has been lifted, and a tremendous number of people have gathered in front of the station. The satellite's origin is still under investigation. We're told that it can't be removed until the authorities have more information. According to the police, the satellite does not appear to be dangerous. However, the tourists and local businesses' owners have raised concerns. The media has dozens of cameras set up outside for the, of the police line. And there are nearly twice as many onlookers as reporters, even enough to enough to fill the entire street with people. Everyone's aiming their phones and cameras at the satellite, like at the satellite-like object. Satellite-like, I hate that. So many people living in Akiba, you get used to crowds and big events, but the gathering of this size is unusual. I wonder when they'll get rid of that thing. I hope it doesn't explode or something. They've been letting people back into the area, so I guess there's no danger. Still concerned of its origin, its unknown origin. I'm surprised there isn't more security. Today, like always, otaku are shopping for doujinshi, imported games, electronics, whatever strikes their fancy. Aren't doujinshi's fucking body pillows? Fan created amateur monk. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh wait, no. Okay, I know what doujins are. My bad. Which are often, but not always, adult in nature. These are sold at special do doujinshi events, the biggest of which is the twice annual comic giga market known by fans as Komima. Gotcha. So it's fucking fan fiction, <clears throat> but for manga. 
Aside from the scene at Radi Khan, this is the same as any other day, but I still don't understand what I saw yesterday. I have accepted that the mass disappearance was just my, my imagination. Maybe I've become unable to distinguish reality from fantasy, like the media, like the media likes to say about the teen about teenagers these days. With that thought in mind, I return my gaze to the street, and there, in front of me, stands a woman holding her phone in front of her face. She took a picture. Her phone was clearly pointed at me. I tried to cover my face, but not quickly enough. I turned around just to make sure that she wasn't pointing it at someone behind me, but that doesn't seem to be the case. She's still staring at her phone. Without even glancing at me, she turns around and points her phone at some other pedestrian. Maybe she's just taking photos of everyone at the scene and not just me. But still, I need to have a word with her. The organization is after me, so I can't risk that photo getting out. Wait, 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 wait. Doesn't turn around. Is she so engrossed in her photography that she doesn't even notice me? Or does she not catch my magnificent native level English? Hey, you with the phone. Can't, with the phone camera. Wait, please, wait. She turns back, finally noticing me. Of course, her phone turns with her. Hey, no pictures. Are you with the organization? She completely ignores my objection. And then she goes back to looking at her phone. Answer that question, are you with the organization? If she is, then I may have to take, a, I have to take suitable measures. You, you're not... Probably not organization spy. <laughs> nice name. Even so, I can't let you keep that picture. The organization will stop at nothing to find my whereabouts, and they'll kill anyone who gets in their way. I need you to delete that picture immediately. Lady ignoring me. Is she even listening? Sorry. Wow, she finally speaks. Just a whisper, but it's something. I upset you. She lowers her head slightly in a bow. Or at least I think it's a bow. She's been looking down this time, so I can't really tell. Before you all apologize, before you apologize, I need you to delete that photo. I was shooting the scenery. She, her fingers dance across the phone's keys with an impressive speed, exactly the opposite of her annoyingly slow speech pattern. That's the scenery. You're a tourist, or is she one of the people who came to see the satellite? In that case, why did she take a picture of me? She shakes her head without looking at me. It's proof of where I was today. Lady ignoring me and apparently sightseeing in Akihabara. <laughs> You're a strange lady. Kiryu Moika. Hmm? My name. I guess she's introducing herself. That's nice, but I just want to delete that photo. I have a question for you, may I? First, the photo. There's an, uh, there's an urban legend in Akihabara. Have you heard of it? An urban legend? What is she talking about? Don't tell me there's a, a brilliant but insane mad scientist said to be lurking in Akihabara, and now that brilliant but insane mad scientist is the target of every assassin in the underworld? I've remained in this town for far too long. I'll need to make plans. Akihabara, you weren't such a bad town. I'm glad... The Phantom Retro PC. Retro PC? She replies with a nod, or something like a nod. They say there's one in Akihabara. Oh. The thing about a mad scientist. I'm relieved, but also disappointed. At any rate, this is the first I've heard about a phantom retro PC. A uh, retro PC? You mean like a 98? Well, that's the first model that comes to mind. But are 98s really that hard to find? She shakes her head slightly, or something like a shake. No, this. She turns her phone toward me. The screen shows an oddly shaped computer. It's hard to tell since the picture's monochrome, but it looks like some kind of PC. Looks kind of familiar. An IBM 5100. An IBM 5100. That's the computer John Titer tried to get. Her fingers twitch, I think. You seen one? No, I've only heard of the name. Coincidence? No. 
This could be the choice of Stein's gate. Know anyone who might know? Daru probably knows more about it. Daru probably knows more about it. He's my favorite right arm. A super hacker capable of breaking even M16's mainframe. The M16 part is a slight exaggeration. If I, that ever did happen, Men in Black would break down our door and take us away. But the super hacker part is true. The depth of his, of his computer knowledge is uncanny. Speaking of Daru, I'm supposed to meet him at May Queen. I don't have time to stand and chat with some crazy lady I don't know. Well, I'm off, Lady Media Scrum and moder Moderation. Lady Media Scrum and Moderation, okay. I try to make a smooth exit, one liner and everything, but she grabs my sleeve before I can disappear into the crowd. What are you doing? Your email, please. What are you, what are you after? The super hacker. I guess she wants to hear Daru's story. It's my fault for mentioning him. Well, I'm meeting up with Daru, so I don't like. Why don't I just take her along? No, wait a second. This could be a devious trap. Maybe she's really a spy sent to kidnap Daru. I'm defenseless without him. My only other ally is Mayuru, whose skills amount to costume design. I refuse. I'll never give up Daru. I slip past her and start walking faster. I glance back. She's following me. I pick up the pace, but she's still chasing me. Stop following me! I'm perturbed she shows me her phone again. On the screen is the picture of me that she took. That, you still haven't deleted it? Tell me, and I'll delete it. You dare blackmail me? Who do you think you- who do you work for? I attempt, I attempt to glare her into submission, but her eyes are already lowered. My glare is ineffective. I... she hesitates for a second. Work part-time at ARC Rewrite. What's that? An editing... an editorial company here in Akihabara. One of those companies that writes articles for magazines? Is this gloomy lady really fit for that kind of work? Wait, you plan on publishing my picture without permission? Don't you? The Mad Science of Akihabara unveiled. I can see the headlines now. That's all the organization would need to turn Akihabara into a sea of blood. No, I must avoid that gruesome outcome at all costs. I have no choice. Very well, I accept your terms. At any rate, as long as she has that photo, I have no way of knowing how it might be used. I pull my email address and show it to her. Looking back and forth from my phone to hers, she enters my info with terrifying speed. Of course, this woman is an esper. Talking about like from fucking Railgun? A general term for humans who possess supernatural powers, common powers include telepathy, telekinesis, precognition. Though more exact powers exist, it is rumored that some espers even possess the ability to reshape reality with pure force of will, derives from the term ESP, which stands for extrasensory perception. Yeah, so like from Railgun. <laughs> Oops, I clicked off the fucking game. There we go. Oh my god, there's, how many, there's 48 save slots. I dub her powers Shining Finger. Her magical thumb types curse, cursed emails at 255 characters per minute. Whoever receives one dies. Just done typing my address, I, it took all of 5 seconds. Name? Ahoyin Kuma, mad scientist. How is it spelled? First, Hoin for Phoenix, then In, and finally, Kyoma, which means a horrible truth that must never be revealed. Huh? Hoin for Phoenix, then In, and finally, Kyoma, which means a horrible truth that must never be revealed. I repeat my perfect explanation. This is the origin of my true name. Explaining the In part of Hoin would take too long, so I left it out. She enters my name with her head tilted to the side. Like this? 
Oh, owing Yoma. What the hell is this? Are you mocking me? He lowers her head a little more. An apologetic bow, I guess. Just hand me your phone, I'll enter it. She shakes her head, clutching her phone with both hands as if protecting it from me. Like a spoiled child who can't let go of a toy, she shields it from me with all her might. What does she think I'm going to do? Her reaction is a little depressing. Anyway, she's obviously not going to hand her phone over, so I asked for her address instead. I'll send her a, I'll send her a blank email. She told me her name a few minutes ago, but I forgot already, so I entered the name Shining Finger. What am I doing, what am I doing staying here in the middle of the street? Let's hurry up and send her a blank email. I gotcha. How the fuck do I write an email? How do, how do I compose an email, though? Oh, that's how. And send. She's staring at her phone. I don't think I've ever met someone who made less eye contact. After a few seconds, her phone receives the, the email. Okabe Rintaro? But how do you know that? How do you know that name? the blank email. Damn, my email's still linked to my real name. Let's change it at once. That's just my alias. I'll send another one my true... No. This is fine. Nonsense. I'm not Okabe Rancher. My name is Hoi and Q... He's really not buying it. Did you delete the picture? She nods slightly. I, I think. It's really hard to tell. Her body language is, subdued as, her, is as subdued as her voice. If you deleted it, then prove it. She, 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 silently sh she silently shows me her screen. The only picture remaining is the one of that computer. That's a relief. I'll email you later. So, ask, okay? About what? The urban legend. Oh, that. I almost forgot. With that, Shiny Finger wanders off. Throughout the encounter, she kept the same cool expression. Actually, I don't think we ever once made eye contact. Oh boy. Welcome back, Miaster. Why? Why do I why do I put myself through this? Why do I make these decisions? I open the door to May Queen Cafe and two familiar cat ear girls greet me with a smile. <laughs> It's Okarine. One of them is Mayuri. Right here, she's called Mayushi Nyan Nyan. <laughs> Since she works here, I'll stop by. I stop by about twice a month. I guess that would make me a regular customer. Actually, I've never been to any other maid cafe. Welcome back, Okarine. After bowing again, Mayuri gasps as if she thought of something. Hey, Okarine, Mayushi just noticed something. Welcome back, Okarine and Okarine go. Welcome back and Okarine go really well together. Oh, whatever. That's probably something in Japanese. Kiyoma, it's great that you came. Yeah. <laughs> you let me who came to greet me, Ferris Nyan Nyan, her professional name, of course, hits me with her trademark combo attack of cute cat-like gestures. She's May Queen's most popular maid. Even though she and Mayuri are about the same age, she looks and acts a bit younger. Darunyan's over here. Darunyan's over here. Uh. Oh, really? Isn't it like the second to last one or something like that? He's been waiting. Yeah. Daru frequents his, this cafe because he's got a crush on Ferris. Captain reads her public blog while muttering, Ferris, you're so cute, to himself. He's got it real bad. Oh, really? Yeah, as soon as I streamed, I saw that you were streaming. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I keep telling him to choose either 2D or 3D, but he doesn't listen. I also have trouble dealing with this cat girl. She always finds a way to best me. Are you holding out a secret meeting over to overthrow the evil organization? Yeah. 
uh, yeah, something like that. Have you gotten uh, what's what's your what's your current best, or did you not get a complete run today? Oh yeah, something like that. Ferris wants to join too. Yeah. No chance. Organization isn't isn't threatened by cat-eared maids. Not true. Yeah. Ferris has perfect has perfect secret technique to help take them down. What? You finally mastered that secret technique? Yes, yeah. After completing my pilgrimage to the Guiana Highlands and overcoming my mem my mentor's death, I finally mastered it. Hell yeah. 146.24. Okay. What mentor? I saw that Dist was, was speedrunning um, RE7 today. Dude, he was getting fucking mad at his, he was getting mad at his chat so hard today. To be fair, that's like every fucking time, but still. I also told her about the organization. And now she's more into it than I am. She's always the one to bring up the subject whenever we meet. By the way, it, this is the first time I've ever I've, I've heard this secret technique or whatever it is. So Ferris wants to participate in spirit in the spirit conference like you promised, Nia. Yeah. Ugh. She's not letting it go. I'll take 30 minutes if I play along with her. You're not suggesting we venture to the sanctuary. The answer is no. Although you may understand the hidden secrets, you're still too inexperienced. But but you promised, Nia, you're going to betray me? My brother is waiting for me there. Because when do you have a brother? And what the hell is the spirit conference anyway? Ferris looks at me with, an act with actual tears in her eyes. I falter, even though I know it's just one of her cutesy acts. Whenever I, whenever I talk to her, I run out of comebacks, which is really unusual for me. And then she takes the initiative, leaving me with nothing to do but listen to her fantasies. I mean, come on, you can only take it so far. There's a very clear difference between her stories and mine. As anyone can see, I speak nothing but the truth, while Ferris has only delusions and made-up backstories. I always, have, I always have to play along. That's why I feel like I can never best her. Um, I don't quite get it, but can my Yushi go to the sanctuary too? Great, now look who's joined in. It's just going to get worse from here. I have to end this conversation now. You can't come. This discussion is over. Eh? No fair, Kyoma. That's right, leaving my Yushi and Ferris Chan behind is mean. Who is Ferris? Ferris Chan. It's Ferris Chan, right? Right. Mary and Ferris look at each other and smile. She's talking about this Ferris? Is that her real name? Have I been mistaken this whole time? That's a disturbing thought. Well, Mayushi has a hard time saying Ferris, so I call her Ferris Chan instead. Oh, so that's it. It's like we're in girls' school. That's not too tabby. Okay then, moving on. Show me to the table already. How long do you want me to stand here and waiting? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Nya. Table for two this way, Nya. God damn it. Actually, I'll leave it to you, Nya. Nya. God. It's not make me say it. It's make me feel weird. What do you want, Lukako? Um, I asked my Rachel about what it is you're fighting against, but she just laughed and didn't answer. What should I do? I want to help Kima, son. You don't, need to, you don't need to know. Not yet. Eventually, a Steins Gate chooses. I will. You will learn the truth whether you ready, whether you're ready or not. It's fucking game, dude. If you didn't notice the cat-eared maids here at uh, May Queen are required to add cat sounds, yes and yes, to their words with some frequency. Mary takes my hand and leads me inside. Apparently my Yushi Nyan Nyan is the only one who leads customers by the hand like this. It probably comes naturally to her, she doesn't even realize the effect it has on her customers, and that's why she's second to Faris in popularity at this maid cafe. Yeah, but her fucking blonde wig sucks. She guides me to Daru's table. The table's about 60% full. Among Akiba's maid cafes, May Queen's popularity is solid, but not booming. Considering what Ferris and the others are wearing, it's more likely more like a cosplay cafe than a maid cafe. Furthermore, the cat ears and Nyan Nyan dialects makes it less accessible to low-key to low-level otaku and first-timers. 
On the other hand, those same cat ears are a topic of heated debate among diehard Maid Cafe fans. Maids don't have cat ears. Cat ears plus maids equals two times moe. The great, de the grand debate. These two viewpoints clash. What level of top? I'm at least. <laughs> I'm at least mid tier. So like we're looking at like three or four. How high do the levels go? I I don't know what the level cap is. Level 1000. <laughs> well, I haven't finished One Piece, so I'm, I'm not even I'm not even low level according to Viox. This place is. <laughs> I don't think so. Level 10,000 XP. <laughs> this place is one of the older maid cafes in Akihabara, but doesn't get much media exposure. Maybe that's what makes it more comfortable than most. At least that's what Daru says. He talks about this stuff so much that it's been burned my, my into my synapses. Garu-chan, Ocarina is here. Nia. Hey, you're way late. Seriously, man. Garu's in front of me, but doesn't look my way. Looks upset for some reason. So, what were you just talking about with Ferris? I want details. You really want to know? I don't think you'd understand it. Hell, even I didn't get most of it. Ah, the usual. Your conversations are too much for regular otaku. You guys exude an aura or something, you know. It's like you two. It's 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 like you two have your own. What? That's the wrong. It's like you two have your own real. Oh wait, maybe maybe it's it's like you two have your own reality marble. You know, I can't forgive you. I think Ferris Chan likes Ocarine, Yeah. Of. All the maids and masters here, and yeah, the only one who can keep up with Ferris Chan is you, Ocarine. I'm not even close to keeping up with her. I'm so jealous, you lucky bastard. I have no interest in women who dress themselves in lies. Like you're one to talk. Silence, you unfaithful bastard. All your 2D wives are crying. Ah, you struck a nerve, man. Oh, the uh, theatrically grabs his chest and falls onto the table. I slip from one of I slip from one of the glasses of I sip from one of the glasses of water that Mayuri brought to our table. Master, may I take your order, Nia? Omelet, rice, and hot coffee, black. Has anyone ever ordered anything from a maid cafe that wasn't fucking omelet rice? Do they serve anything else in these fucking restaurants? <laughs> Coming right up, Nyanyan. After taking my order, Myri finds her way towards the counter as if swimming between rows of tables. I hope she doesn't trip. So, what does she need? Daru asks without getting up from the table. Oh, that's right. In my con in my confrontations with Shining Finger and Cat Girl, I almost forgot my original objective. <laughs> it's gonna head to the lab in about an hour. I have to have an urgent matter to discuss. Top secret. I leaned on the table and scanned the air without moving my head. You remember John Titer? John Titer? Who's that? The self-proclaimed time traveler who appeared on the internet about 10 years ago? I thought we talked about him before. Is this a new addition to your made-up backstory? It's nothing like that. Everything I say is the truth. What a pain. Well, I guess I can play along. So, what's the source on this... Tighter guy being from the future. Wait, you seriously never heard about him before? Seriously, bro, I haven't. Sure you didn't. Sure, sure, sure you didn't just forget. I can't say for sure. There are even there are even books about him. I might remember if you show me one. You really don't remember? Memories fade. We're not computers, man. This is wrong. I remember talking to Daru about John Titer back in high school. It was only idle talk, so it's possible that Daru forgot about it. Daru is quite the internet addict, but the internet lets you ch choose what information you want to see. There's no guarantee that Daru looked up info on John Titer. If he had, I doubt he would have forgotten so completely. 
It's my... Is it my memories that are mistaken or everyone else's? Then what about the IBM 5100? Whoa, you know about that? Cool. So, you know about it? It's the model IBM released back in 1975. Right, that's what John Titer said on At Channel. He traveled to 1975 first, obtained an IBM 5100, then leaped to 1998. What kind of computer is it? The stupidly expensive kind. Back when it came out, computers were so expensive that average people couldn't get their hands on them. It was full of proprietary IBM technology and was a pretty powerful computer for its time. Then six years later, in 1981, IBM launched the popular IBM PC series. Now that's more famous. Anyway, it's not like I'm an expert, it's just stuff I read on a wiki. Have you heard of the urban legend that there's one in Akihabara? You bet I have. Just last month there was big talk about it on the net. Some at channelers heard the rumors and went searching for it. My friend on Freypara, sent, Sister Centipede, was the main person behind that. Even the legendary Neidhart, Der Busenchenil, joined the fray, but they still couldn't find it. So it was just a hoax? Who knows? There's tons of stuff underground. There's tons, there's tons of underground shops in Akiba. It wouldn't be strange if an IB-15100 suddenly turned up in some hole in the wall. Hmm, I see. My phone suddenly starts vibrating. Ah, oh, Shining Finger, what's up, girl? Okay, son, I mailed you as soon as I could. My name is Kiryu Moeka. I am 20-year-old freelance editor. I believe I mentioned I work part-time at Arc Rewrite. So, sorry for taking your picture. It wasn't on purpose. I need, I need some shots of Akiba for work, and you just happened to be in one. Actually, to tell you the truth, I was hoping to sneak some photos, some shots of the satellite, Lamau. How old is the word Lamau? By the way, the word, sorry. <laughs> the fucking acronym. By the way, the picture I took was just a test, not the final shot. That's why I was using my phone. Even if you hadn't begged, even if you hadn't begged me to delete it, I wouldn't have posted it, so don't worry. Anyway, I should get to the point. I'm really sorry for asking like this, Okabe, but... It would be super great if you could ask your friend, the super hacker, about the IBM 5100. I don't really know anything about computers, especially old computers. All I have to go on is that picture I showed you. Ah, I attached the image. Absolute, I'd be absolutely positive, okay? I'd be, absolute, be absolutely positively sure to reply, okay? I'll be waiting, and if you could, I'd be super happy if you gave me your super hacker friend's email address. I'll mail you again. It's okay to email you again, right? Of course it is. Bye. That's such a shit tier picture, dude. <laughs> oh, come on. What's with, what's with this mail? It's disregarding the weird timing. Is this really the gloomy, unsociable woman I met in front of Radikan? She's like a completely different person in this email. Does she have a split personality or something? Well, I got some info into the IP5100, so I guess I should have a. I guess I should give her a reply. <laughs> Dude, it looks like someone dipped her fucking phone in mud and then took the picture. But if I send an immediate reply to a woman I just met, won't it come off as clingy or desperate? I, Hoyukima, will not be taken lightly. This is my chance to make sure to make her understand which one of us is the super is the superior human being. And above all, I have yet to ascertain if she can be trusted. She might start harassing me if I apply the wrong way. And besides, she hasn't proven that she's not working for the organization. Nonetheless, it, would, it couldn't hurt to tell her what I learned from Daru. To discourage her, of course. Let's ignore it. This is, this is out of kindness. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the wait, Daru. So, there's one thing I need to know. I scan the area with my eyes once more, then lean in close. The IBM 5100 has the power to destroy the world, right? What? It doesn't have the power to do anything, let alone destroy the damn world. Uh, hi, girl. What's this, Nia? The world's gonna be destroyed, Nia? There springs my omelette rice. Oh my god, hang on. This shit reminded me of something.
Let me look it up real quick. Like how the music just changed there. Something more like upbeat. Here it is. I found it. Oh my god, my, all, my, all my recommendations are fucking Danganronpa theme because I'm working on that video. Um, let's see. I need to turn down the game. Okay, here it is. So I fucking love this video. I saw it today. Fucking weird Monokuma's theme was. <laughs> I don't know, I just thought it was a good laugh. I'm probably alone in that department, but I don't care. Oh yeah, you showed me this. This shit's funny. It's it's worth watching again. Oh fuck! Hang on, I need to I need to turn this up again. <laughs> Hit it. Dude, I forgot how much fucking fun the uh the um uh the music in Persona 4 was. Doing her cat like gestures while keeping her tray balanced in one hand. True feline agility. Oops, I just saved a screenshot by accident. Despite nyan 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 nonsense, Ferris is in the co consummate is a consummate professional. Master, thanks for waiting, nyan nyan. I'm at rice, nyan. <laughs> Damn it! The cat girl puts the omelet rice on the table and then takes a bottle of ketchup from her apron pocket. She uses it to write, The World is Doomed, in red letters upon the omelet's blank yellow canvas. Please enjoy your meal before the world ends. <laughs> Whoa, the world is doomed? For the win! Ferris' handwriting is so cute it puts my omelet in danger too. It appears the cuteness has shattered Daru's sanity. I give him a look to say, calm down, but to no avail. I smooth out the ketchup with the bottom of my spoon, erasing the ketchup words. Ah, what a waste. I'm gonna eat it you away. Darunyan, Darunyan, have you considered participating in Ferris Cup, Nyan? Yeah, of course I'm participating. Ferris Cup, what's that? It's a mouthful of omelet. I take a mouthful of omelet rice. Next Sunday, we're hosting Ryanet tournament at the cafe, Nyan. Ferris starts dancing in place. I prefer she not jump around like that when people are eating nearby. Ferris is the event organizer. It's my idea, Nyan. It's all my idea. You can participate too if you want, Kuma. Entrance fee is 1,000 yen and includes a drink. 
Whoever beats Ferris gets to enjoy some Ferris hump cooking. It'll never happen. Ocarina sucks at Rainet. Yeah, but it's so fun. No, I'm fine. I stopped shoveling the omelet rice in my mouth, and then I deliver a melancholy sigh. Rainet Axis Battlers, huh? Whenever I hear that name, I remember the former champion. Has it already been two years? No, it's nothing. Uh, forget what I said. Yeah, it? That sounded so serious, yeah? Who's the former champion? Fucking, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. Interesting little deet. Probably doesn't exist. Probably, probably doesn't exist. I mean, Rhino didn't even have an official tournament until about a year ago. Yeah, but you still can't forget him, can you, Nia? What? I remember that. I remember that you and the champion, my brother, were such good friends, Kyoma. Were you so close that made me? You were so close that made me jealous, Nia. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, not even because. Uh... Well, yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, if you're talking about if you're talking about the core party, right? Because, like, you know, Kanji was in a was in a different grade as well. So you're talking about like the, the, the core four, then yes. And when she took my story and ran and ran with it again. Well, the core, yeah, the core four. I never even said anything about him being her brother. Hell, I don't, I don't know if Ferris even has siblings. I shouldn't have talked about stuff like this in front of Ferris. But it's the time, it's time to let go of the past. Seize the day with your own paws. Her shout resounds through the store, her fingers snap at me. Even though it's painful, no, because it's painful, I succeeded my brother's dying wish and perfected my skills as a Ryanetter, Mia. Yeah. Do you remember, Mia? Yeah. She always used to say, someday, let's bring peace to the world with Rynet. Ferris, bring me my coffee. Yeah, yeah. I presented my empty plate to Ferris. I always eat quickly. It's a habit I picked up naturally during my years on the run from the organization. Screw the slow food trend. I like the core three. Well, I can't speak on Persona 3 in the, at all. <laughs> Third thing, Master, just a moment, yeah? I do plan on playing it at some point, just not anytime soon. Ferris takes the dish and heads back to the counter. Ugh, if I let things go as they were, I would have had to play along another 10 minutes in her fantasy world. Ferris is one of the most skilled Rhinetters I know. Haru explains with a wry smile. She's gone and undefeated in over 400 official, unofficial matches. Is she Rix and Gracie's? Is she Rix and Gracie? You don't even give me a fucking tip page for that? I don't know who that is. Thank God I saved this game on my SSD. I don't know how long that save would have taken. <laughs> I want to play Persona 3 on the, um, you know, on console. You know, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to play it emulated. Delray ignores my perfect retort. It's so disappointing that Ferris doesn't go to the official tournaments. She'd win if she did, no doubt. Why doesn't she? I'm sure, it's for the customers. She probably doesn't want to inconvenience the store. Truly, a model made. Also, she's Mayurishi's age, so she's pro she probably has school too. She doesn't want to inconvenience the store, yet she's holding the Ferris Cup here. It doesn't matter at all. The point is, Ferris is cute, and cuteness is justice. Cute cat-eared maids are sweet, if you know what I mean. And that's all that matters, right? So in the end, do you bat, do you bat for the 2D team or the 3D team? I dare say I'm by. Let me go to the bathroom real quick.
at least it's not identical to the anime. So it's still, it's pretty much a new experience for me. <laughs> You're an inspiration, Dario. I know. I'm just too awesome. Dario usually doesn't show enthusiasm for anything. The exceptions are more are for Moe and Ferris. I wish he were as I wish he I wish he were this passionate about our experiments. Wait, I have a message. Did she message me while I was in the bathroom? Because I didn't hear any I didn't hear anything. Final battle is close at hand. Yeah. You're more percep perceptive than I thought, Nia. So, now you understand what's at stake. The Red Southern Cross will soon hatch, Nia. Time has come for Ferris to, jour to, to journey to the sanctuary. Prepare for... I I can say no more, Nia. Uh, etch? Possible. You mean it's already awakening? I. It's 50 years earlier than I predicted. What does this mean? I see. So the holders of the original sin, those who, like me, were born in Protype 13, have begun to assemble an Akiba, guided by the star that we alone can see. The time is right. All right, we'll do that one. Because the original sin, like scholar of the first sin, you know, because I'm a fucking idiot. I had to pull Dar away from Faris so that we could return to the lab. We arrived to find it in hotter than find it hotter than a sauna in hell. I quickly opened the windows, letting a small breeze blow in. <laughs> Won't be enough. The breeze is also 100 degrees. I flip our fan to full power and place it on the table in front of me. I really wish we had an air conditioner. I turn on the computer. This is our PC for communal use among lab members. It still uses an old CRT monitor, so it looks ancient. But I don't let it but don't let its looks deceive you. Our computer with Staru scrounged up some parts and made some mods to it. In any case, I don't spend much time on it. I mostly use it to update the Future Gadget Laboratory's homepage, check my email, visit news sites, and browse at channel. I wonder if the new Titer is still posting. I see that everyone would like to know more about my time machine. Look at the fucking This background is just Ferris. <laughs> I see that everyone would like to know more about my time machine. I'll ha I'm happy to explain. Just so you know, it's impossible to reproduce with current technology. Certain critical components won't exist until CERN invents them in 2034. Time travel works by altering gravity. Basically, you can think of it as using the twin paradox, but that alone isn't enough to reverse time. Still here, Faker? You're annoying. Go away. So your power is gravity control, not bad, but still not enough to top tier power. Still not enough for top tier power levels. The twin paradox is that like the Urashima effect? That's just slowing time down, not reversing it. Who gives a shit about the time machine? Give me stock prices. That's a good point. It uses t Tipler cylinders and curved black holes, doesn't it? Just like you said ten years ago. And your time. Hey, who's? Oh, that's it's us. My bad. Your time machine is 1970s Chevy. I know all of it. Oh gosh, shut the fuck up, you disgusting chuny scum. The twin paradox and the Urashima effect are different things, duh. Time traveler, lol. John Titer, lol. Huh. A, uh, a Chevy's an American car, right? I'd rather go German with a BMW. Yeah, yeah, well you also fucking... Whatever. I don't like BMWs. By Tipler cylinders, are you, ref are you referring to the Tipler machine? Well, what? A Tipler cylinder would have to be in 10 km diameter, 110 km long, have equal mass to the sun, and revolve 2,500 times per second to become a time machine. How do you fit that? In how do you fit that into a Chevy? Even if you could, a Tipler machine can't travel farther back in time than a moment of its creation. Enough of your delusions. At channel is not your blog. I want to hear from Titer. This is a surprise. Does this mean people of this age already know about my time machine? Did you really encounter me 10 years ago? If so, then that must have been another world line. I, at least, have not gone to the year of, 20, of 2000. 
In any case, the important point is that a rotating black hole has the same effect as a Tipler cylinder. You can learn more about Kerr black holes by studying the Penrose diagram or Tipler calculations. My time machine works by generating a pair of Kerr black holes. In Japanese, please. Petter came back 10 years ago. Source? Came 10 years ago? The uh, source, okay. What the fuck are Kerr black holes? Explain using boobies, oh erotic one. What the fuck? I'll pay 1,000 yen to ride your time machine, not a yen more. Source this Holy Sun's delusions. Real deal. He didn't deny it. All aboard Hoyan's crazy train. Prepared for a train wreck. Curve black hole time travel is theoretically possible, but one, how do you get black holes to spin? Don't tell me you wait until one you until you find one spinning naturally. That's ridiculous. How do you pass through a singularity? There's no way a Chevy can withstand the pressure. Why the short explanations, John? You stupid? Want to die? Still no stock prices. This isn't a delusion. I know for a fact a Titer posted 10 years ago. There's even a book about it. Search the used bookstores if you don't believe me. His Chevy has a gravity distortion unit. That's what he said 10 years ago. Yes, it does have a gravity distortion unit. My time machine is not perfect, but it was built by a third party who reverse engineered CERN's design. The gravity dis distortion unit is a little unstable. First, the unit produces a micro-singularity, then injects electrons to induce rapid rotation. This generates a local gravity sine wave. As the time machine passes through the singularity, the gravity distortion unit regulates the pressure to ensure safe passage. I'm not a specialist, so I can't explain the mechanics any further. Let me just say that curved black holes can be manufactured. I assume everyone's aware of CERN's current experiments with black hole creation. TLDR, shut the fuck up. Unstable? That sounds dangerous. Oh fuck, Titer's black holes are gonna swallow the Earth. He's not just a mass murderer, he's trying to wipe out the entire human race. Find his parents before it's too late. It's not that you won't explain, it's that you can't, lol. How about... Kuri Gohan and Kameyamaya? Fuck off. How do you set the destination? The Earth is constantly moving, or didn't you know that? By the way, I propose tighter equals Hoyin theory. I set the destination with a VGL system. That's variable gravity lock. It functions by reading the local gravity of the destination and locking the tip or sine wave onto that location. By locking onto the Earth's gravity, it ensures that I don't end up floating in space. It uses four cesium locks that make the calculations, so the margin of error is negligible. Hoye needs to shut up. Well, I never heard of any tighter from 10 years ago. What the fuck did I, what the hell happened to my voice there? So the universe is deep in tighter shit. Same information was in Titer's book. All you've done is post 10 year old's copy pasta. Anyone could do that. How do I how, how do I know you're the real Titer? Jonathan Somoe, my my waifu, I recognize different opinions. I'm feeling more and more disappointed, still nothing concrete. Nice try, I guess, but I won't be fooled. Oh, I shouldn't have wasted all day on that channel. We have more important things to deal with. Namely, the phone wave, name subject to change. We haven't experimented with it since yesterday. Is It's high time to figure out what's going on with that thing. Earlier, I asked Daru to connect the, the phone wave, name subject to change, to the computer. He finished setting it up yesterday, and now he's about to do a quick wire, about to do the quick wire work on the development uh, in the development room. Hey, Daru, what's with the X sixty eight thousand? I mean, it's a twenty year old machine with specs lower than my cell phone. It's cool, duh. So it's like, it's like the reason why some protagonists are odd-eyed, even though they're Japanese. The fuck is odd-eyed? Heterochromia. I. Oh, okay. The condition where the eyes are different colors. Gotcha. A trait often found in anime manga. There usually isn't a reason for the character to be odd-eyed. It's usually just more, or moe, or a coolness factor. Well, in Wonder Egg Priority, it's actually um, an important uh, detail. Watch that show, by the way. Not getting you, bro. It's cool. If it's cool, then it's cool. Anyway, there wasn't much of an option. This was the only PC we weren't using. What about your new one? No way, we don't know what could happen when it's connected to your crazy machine. It could kill the performance. Selfish bastard. Besides, we made the phone wave name subject to change together. It's our crazy machine. 
Anyway, did you do any research on the jellification? Yeah, at the university this morning. Why would a banana jellify? What kind of science are we dealing with here? I examined the sample under a microscope and found it was a sh it was shredded at the molecular level. Shredded? It's not a mere phase transition. The banana became something entirely different. Could it have rotted? Nah, that's there's no way two minutes in microwave could do that. Then I remembered about the fractal structures. The meager sponge thing? Oh my god. Meager sponge thing. An example of a fractal... Okay, we need to read this one first. In geometry, a structure that demonstrates self-similarity, the smallest portion of a, of a fractal structure... Fractal... Fractal... Fuck you. Structure will appear similar to the whole. Common examples of fractal structures are snowflakes and coastlines. An example of a fractal structure, take a cube and do the following. One for each side of the cube, cut a square hole in the center with one ninth the area of the face. Each side now has eight squares. Two, for each of these eight squares, cut a new hole with one ninth area of the, of the square. Repeat an infinite number of times, the result is a sponge-like structure whose surface area approaches infinity as its volume approaches zero. Oh, that's interesting. It's really hard to like visualize, but it's cool. The Menger sponge thing. Yeah, it looked like something drilled holes into the banana. An infinite number of holes in a fractal pattern right down to the nano level. Exactly, yeah. Whoa, what could do something like that? I have one hypothesis. Adding a dramatic pause to build tension. Daru gulps, waiting for me to continue. It's the result of the microwave's electromagnetic waves. Well, what does that mean? If my guess is correct, then our phone wave, named subject to change, has the potential to become a weapon of unprecedented destructive power, one that could change the face of war as we know it. I twist my lips into a maniacal grin. Then I whip out my phone and pull it and put it to my ear. It's me. We're proceeding to stage two of the plan. Soon they will learn that, that judgment day is near. All shall be as Stein Gates as Stein's Gates as Stein's Gate wills. Resistance is futile. El Sai Kongru. Been talking to your imaginary friend. I'm done with the wiring. I want to explain that he's not imaginary, but revealing the identity of my contact would be betrayal. The last thing I need is another enemy, especially one whose power and cunning rivals that of the organization. The phone wave, the name subject to change, is now an indecipherable mess of wires. All we did was hook it up to my to a computer, yet it turned out something like McDi like something McDiver would put together. It's now we can see, now we can access the microwave's terminal mode and see exactly what's going on in this in its computer's in this computer brain. Well, what's next? We have the we have bananas. Just before I left my May Queen, Myri asked me to buy some bananas with her money. She's too nice for her own good. Or maybe she didn't even consider what would happen. By now you think she'd know that if I buy bananas, I'm going to experiment on them. Poor Mayuri. And so I put the entire bunch of bananas into the phone wave, named Subject to Change. You know, Mayushi's gonna cry if you use them all, right? Wasn't it her money? She donated that money to our research efforts. You don't have to use the whole thing. One is enough. One. Daru retrieves bananas, peels one from the bunch, and sticks it back inside the, inside the phone wave, named Subject to Change. We'll never reshape the fabric of society as long as money dictates the limits of our science. Hang on, important things are happening apparently. Oh, Ferris, what do you want? So that's what it's after. That's that's what it's after all. That's what it, that 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 was it after all. The holders of the original sin, known as the prophets, Nia. Among them is the girl known as the angel, the fallen angel who accepted chaos. Nia, yeah. I attached a picture of her face and remember it well. Nia, yeah. oh, and before I forget, looking at the picture without protection will cause divine will, will cause divine eye to activate original sin. 
activate ex 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 excitation <laughs> will activate original sin excitation mode 666 compulsory receptor release which will annihilate you at the subatomic level so be careful yeah. the fuck is that <laughs> What do you want? Alright, well, I guess we can't respond to her. Good. <laughs> You're the only one who wants to reshape society, Ogarine. We lost all enthusiasm the second we got back to the lab. What a fickle man. Come on, start the timer already. Right now, right now, we where do we where do I put my phone? Phone, phone. Yeah, I will, bro. I just had it out. Call complete. Instant access. Hello, this is Phone Wave. Name subject to change. The Mayushi guidance system. You can operate the timer from this menu. As we're pushing the pound button, please enter the heating time in seconds. In hindsight, we should have made the Mayushi Guidance skippable. Having to wait each time is quite annoying. For example, press pound 60 for one minute. For two minutes, press pound 120. It's finally over. Okay, entering 120 pound. Complete. The turntable inside the phone wave named subject to change begins to spin backwards. Two minutes sure is long. It doesn't actually have to be two minutes. Mayuri had the timer set to two minutes when she first discovered the freezing function, or whatever it is, so we're just reproducing that. Naturally, we have experimented with 60 seconds and 180 seconds, too. If we set it shorter, the freezing only goes halfway, if, if at all. Conversely, setting it longer increases the effect. You know, if the microwave's emissions are doing it, then shouldn't our cells be getting jellified, too? While looking bored, while still looking bored, Daru finally gets into the discussion at hand. Well, have you ever nuked yourself inside the phone wave? Name subject to change. Mm, can't even fit in there. Anyway, what's your source in the electromagnetic waves? If you must know, it is my mad scientist's intuition. Oh, so, no facts. Edison once said, without 1% inspiration, 99% of perspiration is wasted is wasted so inventions inventors of the world be inspired end quote wasn't it genius's one percent inspiration 99 percent perspire pers perspire is that perspiration <laughs> sorry to disappoint but in in recent years i it's become common knowledge that 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 is a misquote oh did she edison said that be inspired Yes, be inspired, he said. Right. <laughs> Edison actually quoted Miyu after um, Miyu gave Edison um, a recording of all her moans. I don't know if that was exactly what he said, but I'm sure it was something along those lines. At least that's what the wiki said. Therefore, as a genius mad scientist, I always in on my the phone wave named sub subject to change rings. This is just going to jellify the banana like usual, isn't it? We need a new experiment. It feels like I wasted 120 seconds on nothing. Daru opens the phone wave, names subject to change, changes door, and peeks inside. What? What? He rubs his eyes, blinks several times, then resumes staring into the microwave. What are you doing? Well, uh, it's gone. Gone? What's gone? The banana. What is he talking about? I pushed Daru aside and looked into the phone microwave. The phone wave, name subject to change. It's gone. There's nothing inside. The banana has vanished without a trace. After a short pause to collect myself, I whip out my phone and speak into into the silence. It's me. Slight problem. We may have awakened something terrible. What do you mean something terrible? 
I ignore Daru's panicked cry. Well, that was panicked cry, sorry. I su I'm surprised too. My heart's pounding, but I try to appear calm. I'm invoking Emergency Order 666. Activate Cold Heart Protocol. What? What do you mean you need congressional approval? There's no time, you fool. Tokyo will be blasted into atoms. Put my phone away after yelling. You should be an actor. Shut up, you Ferris stalker. Why don't you hide the banana? Who's a stalker? The banana, where is it? Are you planning on becoming... Are you planning on become a street magician or something? You're the one who hit it, aren't you? Uncomfortable silence. I realize my throat is dry. Yeah, me too. Where the hell did it go? How should I know? Where did you go, banana? Banana? <laughs> I take, a, I take the turntable out of the microwave, scour every nook and granny, but find neither peel nor stem or the, of the banana. Wait, I think I get it now. It's not electromagnetic weapon, it's a teleportation device. What? Wait, that's absurd. How else could it have vanished? The microwave has was closed. Um, maybe we should just calm down. Yeah, you're right. We, take, we each take a deep breath. Okay. Oh, I know. I'll eat one of the remaining bananas. That will calm me down. I reach for the bunch of bananas. What? The... the impossible. Impossible. Not three minutes ago, Daru plucked a banana from the bunch and put it inside the phone wave named subject to change. But now there's no sign of a banana that was ever plucked. Instead, a single jellified banana has appeared among the regular bananas. Oh shit, what the hell is going on? Daru notices it too. He reaches out to touch it, but I quickly stop him. Wait, how many bananas are in the lab right now? Just these, I think. Is this gel banana attached to the same stem as the banana you just picked? I don't know, man. I wasn't paying attention. It doesn't look like it was ever plucked. No cuts or anything. Aside from the gelification, it looks completely normal. Hey, Daru, could this possibly be... The word I spoke impulsively a few seconds ago, I hesitate to speak it again. But I must. Because no matter how unbelievable it may be, we saw it with our own eyes. My head's full of question marks. I don't know how this happened, but if I were to explain it as I saw it... The banana that was inside the phone wave, named Subject to Change, returned instantly to its bunch. In other words... A teleporter. We've invented a teleporter. Oh? I hear a girl's voice coming from the lounge. That looks like an interesting experiment. Who's there? My heart just skipped a beat. I turned towards the voice in surprise and get pierced by a sharp stare. Impossible. What are you doing here? The 18-year-old genius girl, a sadistic who, a sadist who humiliates men in public, also known as the zombie. Makisei Kurisu? Nice exposition, bro. <laughs> who are you calling a zombie? What is the meaning of this? What is your purpose here? I'm here to see you, Okabe Rintaro-san, or is it Hoin Kuma-san? Wait, how the hell does she know my real name? I've never spoken in front of her. I was right, you're, the one the, you're one of the organization's top agents, an esper with superhuman powers. No wonder you rose from the dead. I'm not dead, alright? Please stop killing me off. Hashiya-san, can you do something about this guy? You came at a bad time, Akishi. With Okarine freaking out like this. Daru doesn't seem phased by this girl's ex entrance. Why? Have you betrayed me, Daru? Calm down, man. Are you being blackmailed? Or did she seduce you? I glare at Kurisu. He's my right-hand man. How dare you? You've crossed the line, bitch! Get a hold of yourself. Kurisu's eyes flash dangerously, I think. Such intensity from an 18-year-old. 
Maybe she didn't resurrect her after. Maybe she didn't resurrect after her first death. Maybe she's a robotic killing machine constructed to replace the dead Kurisu. Is that it? For now, I'll do as I'm told. Ashida-san gave me the address ap after yesterday's lecture. He also told me your name. That's all. The truth is kind of a letdown. So you're here to see me? Is that it? Yes. You claim to have seen me die. I came to see if that was the truth, or just a pathetic excuse to grope me. I came for the answer. Now that you mention it, she did treat me like I was perv yesterday. Well, I suppose I should fucking go back and read that. I should be grateful that she didn't call the cops on me after what I did. But what choice did I have? Anybody would react the same way if a dead person reappeared before them, right? But your current behavior is all the answer I need. It was all an act to grope me. My initial hypothesis was correct. Not so fast. There was more to this than you know. <laughs> I must clear my name, or I must be labeled as a perf, or I'll be labeled as a perf forever. Anyway, let's put that aside for now. Really? That's a relief. I was sure she's going to call the police. But that for now part bothers me. Kurisu enters the development room with a quick, confident stride. Even though she's only 18, she's got a decent figure and good posture. Not much of a chest, though. Her presence seems to fill the cramped room, driving me and Daru to the corners. Can she tell this area's off limits? I haven't pr properly introduced myself yet, have I? I'm Makise Kurisu, pleased to meet you. She holds out her hand. What is she trying to do? Shooting, shoot, shoot lightning from her fingertips? You can't even shake hands. Are all Japanese men this difficult? Shake hands? This girl genius is asking for a handshake. We only met yesterday, and just moments ago she was on the verge of calling the cops. You're not Japanese? I've lived in America for seven years. What about it? America? I look down at her slender fingers. Glossy, healthy fingernails. Uh, no unnecessary nail polish. I stare fixated. Slowly, I extend my hand, making sure to keep enough weight on my heel so that I can flee at a moment's notice. I lightly grab the tip of Kurisu's index finger between my thumb and index finger and instantly let go. What's your problem? I can feel your aura of malice. You must be a powerful kung fu master. Don't be ridiculous. Then you're a ninja. Give it a rest. Damn, she's completely cold. Her tone gets scary sometimes, too. If you grew up in America, shouldn't you say, ha ha ha, nice to meet you, with a smile across your whole face when asking for a handshake? No, wait, you should be asking for a hug, right? Perhaps that's too mu much to expect from a killing machine. What kind of stereotype is that? Yeah, I never heard of that. Here's who sighs. She's not even looking at me. Instead, she's staring at the bananas next to the phone wave, ne named subject to change. Bananas which have just exhibited the, a most unusual phenomenon. Of the bunch, one has been completely jellified. Fascinating. Grisha brings her face closer to it to get a good look. Have any f have any forceps? No. Oh. And then Grisha stabs the ge gelatinous banana with her index finger. She buries her beautiful fingertip knuckle deep into sl into the slimy banana. What are you doing? That's that's precious data. It's squishy. Grisu extracts her finger, pieces of gel clinging to her fingertip. She puts that fingertip into her mouth without any hesitation. No taste. Gross. She says it with a straight face. You have quite the appetite, I see. A side effect of the resurrection, perhaps? I fucking... If you're that hungry, I guess I could give you a banana or two. No thanks. Either way, those bananas are Mayushis. No, don't be shy. This is an offering. Take it. As if, who would eat some Perv's banana? A Perv's banana? Dara starts shaking as, as if he's been electrocuted. What? What's wrong? Eat a Perv's banana. Squishy. Finger in mouth. Gross. The sour expression. It's like his car cranial pervert pr processor is overclocking. Um, can you say that one more time? 
with a more humiliated expression, if you please. Huh? Come on, say it. Who would eat some pervs banana? But if you could add an ah, but it's so after that, it would be extra delicious. Huh? Ah. Uh, suddenly, Kirsten's face turns bright red. Ugh. Oh, Daru. Maybe a worry. You might. You might be a worthless, disgusting perv. But let me say, well done, sir. Payback is sweet. Now to follow up the maximum combo. Or let's show this conceited little girl how true adults fight. Yeah, true adults. So Makise Kirisu, just imagine something didn't... You just, you just imagined something, didn't you? By all means, tell us what. Don't be shy. Why you? Come on, say it, genius girl. What's, what's the imagination of a genius like? I'd love to hear it from you. You ass. Kirisu st turns her back to us with a, with her perk shoulders. With perk shoulders. Looks like she's capable of expressing human emotion after all. That rules out robotic killing machine. I feel refreshed. I haven't felt this good in years. Way to go, Daru. That's my right hand man. Always gets the job done. I get it. You're both pervs. Well, you could say that. <laughs> At least one of them is honest. Don't admit it, you idiot. I don't want to hear that from you. Okay, if I came off as a little rude, I apologize. Kirisu sighs deeply and turns back to us. Her composure has already returned. I was only acting that way because you molested me, but I'll ignore that for now. I wish she would stop saying for now. It's like she's gonna call the cops on me later. Please tell me what happened to this banana. It's also like, it, I'd also like to hear about that. Kirisu glances at the phone wave, name subject to change. That's that microwave thing. That's top secret. The one thing I'm, cl I'm, I'm clear to share with unauthorized individuals is that its name is phone wave, name subject to change. Name subject to change? What's that about? Phone wave is weak. It needs a better name. I couldn't care less about its name. Afraid that's the only information you're cleared for. Uh, hold on, Okarine. Maki says she's Ma Maki Maki says she's might be able to explain what's going on. Hmm? Well, she is a genius. She would have to be. She would have to defeat my sharp wit. We can. She would have to be. She would have to be to defeat my sharp wit. We can trust her intellect at least. But it's hard to stomach her attitude. Plus, she's a da she's got danger written all over her face. Daruku was taking a nap earlier, and I think he has sleep apnea. It really surprised me when he stopped breathing. I told him he should lose weight, but he won't listen. Okreen, you should talk to him too. Okay, poor Daru. Not to mention, she's a little scary too. Then I get a then I get a great idea. That creepy grin, are you thinking perverted thoughts again? You said your name's Christina, right? Who the hell's Christina? I never said that. Christina sounds like the name of a Hollywood film star. It definitely has more flavor than her real name. If you wish to learn the secrets of this microwave, then you must meet my conditions. Which are Condition 1. You must become a lab mem. Ramen? No, lab mem. Stupid. Short for laboratory member. You mean you want me to join your research team? I'm supposed to return to America in August. I'll have you sign a non-disclosure agreement so you won't betray our secrets. Break the agreement and I'll report your steamy perverted acts to Science Magazine. Ugh. You're a monster, Ukraine. I'll take five copies. From the moment you become a lab mem to the moment you, you your departure, your brain shall be used for the benefit of our lab. You're so full of it. Let's let's see the contract then. What contract? This is a lab, not a not a corporation. I don't mind letting you lending you my knowledge, but if there is more pervy nonsense involved, the answer is no. Don't worry, we don't bite. 
No more molestation? No, alright. You said that was, a, that was condition one, so there's gotta be a second one, right? It better not be... The second condition is... That you'll overlook all past acts of molestation I may or may not have committed. Ocarine, you're so petty. You're the pettiest person I've ever met. That's why we love you. That's why we admire you. Shut up, Daru. You have no right to talk. By the way, Daru's perverted acts aren't included. You two can work it out yourselves. What the hell, man? Those are the conditions. If you can't accept them, then you must leave at once. So what will it be? I don't think it's a bad deal at all. I mean, for you. Kirisu puts her fingers to her brow and shakes her head in an exaggerated gesture. Jeez, I feel like I'm hyper. I feel like I'm hyper secreting non nor hyper secreting noradrenaline. Let me pick up my jaw off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is noradrenaline? A neurotransmitter secreted to the brain. The brain. Proper name: neuro. No norepinephrine. Secret secreted in an excited emotional state. Juju's Bizarre Adventures. <laughs> After used to express awe at someone's cute abilities, often used sarcastically in reference to negative character traits such as pettiness. When was this said in, jo in JoJo? I don't remember this ever being said. Although it has been a while since I've watched like older JoJo, so. I saved too. Fuck, I clicked off. They don't care about your disclo dislocated jaw. Do you accept the conditions or not? Answer me, Christina. Stop adding Tina. My name is Kurisu. Kurisu looks up at the ceiling to calm herself down. Does everyone in America make such exaggerated gestures? Sooner or later she'll say, damn, and oh my god, or motherfucker. Okay, I accept. Good answer. From this moment forth, you are lab mem number 004. Welcome, Christina, codename the zombie. I won't answer to either. Use my real name, Hoyin. Spend a minute staring each other down. Grace is the first to look away. Is it the, she does so in a way that says, Good grief. I'm such a child. You say something, genius perv girl. Come on, no more saying perv. I won't treat you like a perv either, so let's drop it already. As long as you understand, now for the issue at hand, Daru. Give Christina. No, Tina either. Give Kurisu-kun an explanation of our experiment so far. But I refuse. Okay, now that's a JoJo reference I know. <laughs> there. <laughs> On the internet, it's frequently used as a way to... It's a cool way to turn someone down. Yeah, during the fucking... Uh... Oh, what fucking game were they playing? They're playing some of the fucking dice, I think. How old is part four? I mean, this is only 2010, though, but still. There's fucking JoJo references and fucking Steins Kate, I didn't know that. In the end, I'm the I'm the one who has to explain along along the way. Along the way, I also relate the tale of my heroic deeds, retail of uh, which enrages Kurisu, of course. But I finally tell her everything about the bananas and the phone wave, names subject to change. Kurisu doesn't ask any questions. She's quick to understand, as expected of a genius. Fascinating. Let's hear your opinion. I think we can at least throw out completely worthless theories like electromagnetic weaponry and teleportation. Lady doth protest too much. Can we run the experiment one more time? I want to see it for myself. 
Without waiting for our approval, Kurisu plucks an untouched banana and sticks it in the microwave, then starts entering the commands on her phone. It's strange. She's still wearing her usual frown, but I can't shake the feeling that she's really enjoying herself. I can't put my finger on why I call it a hunch. But, I mean, she is a scientist. Why shouldn't she enjoy experimenting? Oh, okay. yeah. Well, I figured it's probably a part one reference because I didn't, I, I didn't recognize it because it's been, like, forever since I've watched part one. When Dio kisses Arena and those other kids are talking about how much they admire Dio for being that kind of guy. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I remember now. I remember now. Good times. Good times. Okabe-san, Hashida-san, please watch the bananas. I, I also don't remember because it, it wasn't even a fucking thing that one of the main characters said. It was like a, 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 a no-named character off in the fucking background. Who are you to give me orders? I'm the mad scientist, Hoi. Whatever, just keep your eye on the bananas. Okay, so she's a little snippy. Then when I do as we're told and stare at the at the bananas. Truth be told, we're planning to watch bananas anyway. After missing it the first time, we were determined to witness what transpired with our own eyes. Sixty seconds have passed. Any change? Nope. Any second now, the jellified banana should reappear on the stem. If, on if it only happens once, we can just call it an accident and be done with it. But if it happens twice, then that's proof that something is actually going on. And then Kurisu will have to admit that I, the great Hoi and Kuma, have invented humanity's first teleporter. I keep staring at the bananas in anticipation. 100 seconds. A few months after Kurisu's report... Ah! The Jubana suddenly appears without a sound. Now there are two of them on the bunch. It happened faster than the blink of an eye. It appeared. I'm at a loss for words. I just witnessed the unthinkable. The phenomenon is clearly teleportation. The microwave timer chimes. Here's who peeks into the microwave, stumped. How does it look? Huh. Oh, uh... At 104 seconds, it d disappeared ab abruptly. Yeah. He's quite flustered. I don't think many people could remain calm after witnessing such a phenomenon. So, it is a teleporter. It's the first in human history. Kirisu quickly comes down. She furrows her brow and crosses her arms, tapping her right foot as she mutters to herself. Teleportation. Is that even possible? It did move. No, no matter how unbelievable that may, no matter how unbelievable that may be, could it be quantum teleportation? No, that only occurs at the quantum level. Don't avert your eyes from the truth. What you see with your own eyes is everything. She gives me a sharp look. Her eyes are like a sniper's, hard and keen. By the way, I love how they go out of the way to call it Juju's bizarre adventure. What is Jojo? I'm not sure if like that's how they would spell it in Japanese if they're doing it using um, Romanji letters, but still, it's like as if as if JoJo ever cared about copyright. Did it really teleport? It's dangerous to reason from the conclusion. Well then, genius girl, what do you call this phenomenon? Let's sort this out. Neither the banana bunch nor the frozen chicken teleported, correct? So, maybe there's a size limit for objects that can teleport. But aren't those chicken pieces smaller than bananas? We use the same chicken for, ex for each experiment. They come back and they come in 12 packs. Mayuri only buys her favorite juicy chicken number one. That's quite a lot then. What about salt? You experiment with salt too, right? We used a handful of table salt on a plate once for, for one experiment. Nothing happened. Maybe the plate was in the way. Of course we tried it without the plate, but that didn't change anything. 
then maybe each individual grain of salt was too small or something. Hmm, I need a clue. Looks like our genius girl is fighting a hard battle. She starts pacing the room, looking a little annoyed. Anything else? Have you noticed anything else about the phone wave? Not phone wave. Phone wave name subject to change. Forget about that. So, have you not? Have you noticed anything or not? Curry is looking at Daru like she's asking him, not me. True, he should know more about the phone wave name subject to change than I do. He's done all the maintenance on it after all. Oh, right. One time it shot off a huge electrical discharge. What? I don't know anything about that. That's because you weren't around when it happened. Discharge? How much? It was like a fluorescent light lit up the development room. It lasted about two seconds, I guess. What were the circumstances? I was adjusting the, the cell phone attached to it, unhooked it, and put it and put in my own. A little bit later, Sparky Sparky. When was that? Oh, around noon yesterday, when you went to see the when you see Dr. Nakabachi's presentation. Dr. Nakabachi. That's right. I went to see Dr. Nakabachi's press conference. Uh, sorry, conference yesterday. Come to think of it, he stole his time travel theory from John Titor. Maybe the current John Titor is actually Nakabachi. But wait, Daru, didn't you say that Dr. Nakabachi's presentation was canceled? Yeah, but you went with Mayu Mayushi's anyway, remember? No, I don't remember that. After all, Nakabachi's presentation wasn't cancelled the way I remember it. I still don't understand why my memories seem to disagree with everyone else's. That reminds me, I sent you an email back then. Did you get it? An email? That email you showed me at ATF yesterday? When I nod, Kurisu comes closer. It said someone stabbed me at the presentation, didn't it? Yeah, but for some reason, Daru's phone received it a week ago. Huh, wasn't that one of your stories? If it wasn't, then that would make the timestamp weird. I always speak the truth. If you don't trust me, I'll show you my send history. I whip my phone and pull up the call history. Uh, where the fuck is it? The... here? This is the history, isn't it? <laughs> but... It's gone. Oh, shit, okay. Not a trace of that email remains. According to my memory, I think it was about 30 minutes after Dr. Nak Nakabakuji's conference. About 10 people, including me, saw Kurisu's body, panicked, and fled Radi Khan. That's when I sent that mail. But no matter how many times I check, there is no record of it. It should be there, but it isn't. Just like the banana inside the phone wave, names started to change. Where did it go? I could have sworn I sent it just before 1 p.m. Oh yeah, that's when the discharge phenomenon happened. The show I was watching was about to end. Suddenly, a flash of inspiration strikes. Inspiration. Edison would be proud. This isn't something you can accomplish with effort. Basically, I'm a genius. I turn to Daru and Kurisu with a huge grin on my face. I get it. So that's what happened. Uh, what? Oh, this is one of Okarine's usual habits, so don't mind it, seriously. Silence. I've reached the answer, and now the world will tremble. I slap the top of the phone wave. Names are going to change. This baby can fit so many bananas in it. <laughs> the disappearance of my mail, the strange timestamp, and the sudden electrical discharge must be related somehow. And? Huh? I understand that they're related somehow, but how? 
It's your job to figure that out, Christina. As she does on, talking to this guy is so tiring. Everyone's like that at first. The trick is not to take him too, not, not take him seriously. And you call yourself my right hand man? Whatever, I'll prove that I'm right. If we can reproduce the electrical discharge phenomenon, it should bring us closer to understanding the timestamp mystery. Darrow, describe the phone wave name subject to change its status when the discharge phenomenon occurred. It was kind of a mess. I connected my phone to the phone wave, and I was testing to see if I could control it with the X68000. I disconnected the phone, plugged into the phone wave, name subject to change, and replaced it with mine. And then I hear the door open in the lounge. I'm home, so hungry. Murray comes in carrying a convenience store bag. Looks like she's done with work. Time to eat some chicken. Juicy chicken number one. Okay, Okreen. Okreen, did you buy the bananas, Okreen? When she enters, I fucking skip the dialogue. When she enters the development room, her eyes go wide. What, we have a guest? When she notices Kuriasu, uh, Mayuri bows her head with, a, with her usual smile. I'm Ayushi, nice to meet you. I'm Makise. Apparently, I'm a lab mem now. Really? That's great, another girl lab mem. Or, what are we doing with the X68000? What, what were you doing? Like I said, I was adjusting the incoming mail settings. I was monitoring the moment I received mail for remote control. That's why I put it on freezing mode for 120 seconds, too. I made it so that you can start freezing mode by computer. I tested that out yesterday, too. Mayuri, insert the juicy number one into the phone wave. Name such as a change. Do you all want some? I can give you one each. With her usual dit ditziness, Mayuri puts the chicken inside the microwave. Daru explains what everything on the computer monitor means. Hmm. Doesn't look that different from using DOS. I enter 120 pound on the keyboard and strike the enter key. The phone wave, name such as a change, subject to change, starts up. The juicy chicken number one starts spinning backwards on the turntable. Kiryu stares hard at the phone wave, name subject to change, as if not to let any anomaly, anomaly uh, no matter how slight, escape her notice. So we've reproduced the conditions that existed when the discharge phenomenon occurred, right? Uh, how was it again? You there, assistant. Huh? Me? Who else? When did I become your assistant? Just send something into my phone. If we produce the conditions correctly, then if she sends something to my phone while it's connected to the phone wave, name starts to change, it should arrive with a timestamp from the past, not the present. But my assistant, Kurisu, just scowls. I don't even know your email address. What a useless assistant. Don't call me your assistant. Daru, send an email from your phone. Uh, sure, but what? Anything. Uh, um, send Christina's a perv. I thought we agreed to stop saying that. Well, let's com let's compromise and go with oh, Karin's a, a perv. You traitor! Good job, Hashi-san. Kurisu grins and gives Daru a thumbs up. I really don't like this. Oh no, my Yushi's bananas. <laughs> It sounds like Mayuri has found the result of our latest experiment. They became gel bananas? We experimented on them. But they were Mayushis? Way to send the mail now. You'll be reimbursed later by Hoyin san, that is. Why me? Jeez, why do you always have to experiment on Mayushi's food? Don't tell me you're experimenting on the chicken, too. We are. Okay, sending it now. Sending, sending, click. Now she slips past me and steps up to the, f act to the active phone wave name subject to, ch subject to change. Before anyone can react, she grabs the handle. Wait, don't open that. Huh? 
but it's too late. Blue white light fills the room, crackling angrily like like the heat heart of a storm. An electrical discharge. A violent sparking sound. I grab my Yuri and pull away from the phone wave. Names to change. Are we going to die? Thin cloud of smoke fills the room. It smells like something's burning. My eyes are numb from all the flashing light. I try blinking several times to regain my sight. I can hear Kurisu and Daru coughing. Everyone okay? Somehow. That was definitely more than two seconds. Mary squeezes my upper arm with her slender fingers. Oh, Green, um, what just happened? My vision gradually returns. Larry looks perplexed. Are you okay? No burns or anything? Mm, it doesn't hurt anywhere, so I think I'm okay. Looks like covering my area was the right choice. I may be insane mad scientist, but I still risk life and limb for the safety of my comrades. I gently let my area out of my embrace. Ugh, well, that was something. I wipe the sweat off my brow. Hey, look at this. Grace's voice is strained. With my vision finally restored, I take another look around the room and see what strikes me as speechless. The large table in the center of the room is made of thick, solid wood. It can hold about five or six people without breaking. That's why we place the phone wave name subject to change and the X68000 on it. That table has been split in two as if by woodcutter's axe. The computer and other parts connected to the phone microwave are scattered across the floor, and the microwave itself has broken through the table. It's literally stuck to the floor. What the hell? How did that? Yeah, it's a microwave, but it's not heavy enough to make a hole in the floor. This can't be caused by the electrical discharge. Some some other phenomenon? I shake off my surprise. This is no time to be standing with my jaw agape. Hoi and Kuma. Seize the moment. Heh. <laughs> Just as my calculations predicted. First, some maniacal laughter. Next, try to take out my phone. I try to take out my phone and do the usual, but unfortunately, it's still plugged into the phone microwave. Phone wave, name subject to change. El Sai Kongru. I whisper the words. Words have no meaning. Words have no meaning. Words I use simply because they sound cool. These words have meaning because they have no meaning. After years of repeated use, just speaking them is enough to calm my heart. So, about my ear, she's chicken. Eh? Mary stands up and looks inside the phone wave named Subject to Change. It's embedded in the floor, but she somehow manages to pry the door open. Ah! My ear, she's chicken is all burnt black. I pat my ear's shoulders to cheer her up. Juicy chicken number one, made of noble sacrifice for the progress of science. Let us pray for its happiness in the, in the next life. Chicken doesn't matter. Right now, we need to determine what happened with the with the phone wave. It doesn't matter. That's so mean, uh, Christina Chan. Hey, Hoya Kuma, do something about this Mayushi son learning my name wrong. More importantly, we need to, we need ventilation. Silence, all of you. I affix everyone with an overpowering stare. This shall be remembered as the moment that the greatest experiment of the century succeeded and brought humanity a step forward in a new direction. These guys have no right to ruin that with their foolish talk. My heart pounding, I detach my phone from the phone wave named subject to change. Luckily, it's completely unharmed. I open it, it still works. I bring up the list of received emails. New emails should come in at the top. However, my heart beats even faster. The topmost mail isn't one from Daru sent before the discharge occurred. It's this impossible phenomenon is exactly what I was hoping for. I look back through my email history. 
and there I find it. Ocarina's P. <laughs> success. I don't know why, but it was a success. The timestamp proves it. I received this email on July 24th, five days ago. This is the exact, this is the same exact thing that happened to my, to my someone stabbed curry suit email. A mail sent on the 29th arrived on the 24th. And just now the truth is revealed to me in a flash of inspiration. It all, it's all, it all connects. There's a, there's a meaning behind this series of events and only one true answer. I've discovered the phone wave name subject to change changes true hidden function. This isn't intuition. That's right. This is conviction. Let's just spit it out. What do you think it is? I feel my lips twist into a grin. I met Kurisu's glare head on. First, let me say one thing. The greatest inventions are created by accidents. This we call serendipity. Get on with it. Oh dare she ruin my speech. Oh well, let's get to the point. The mail was sent to the past. The chicken returned to its frozen state. The plucked banana returned to the bunch. No way. Curious seems to get it now. As expected of my genius assistant. Yes, way. This is the choice of Stein's Gate. The phone wave, named subject to change, is a time machine. I've been quick saved, apparently. The dawn of a new day. Actually, it's already noon. I didn't sleep at all. I got mail. Oh my god, girl! <laughs> wow, she wants to talk. Wake here. Are you. Are you a student? Welcome back, Kuhn. Are you on summer break? Wake Yeah. <laughs> are you uh, are you a day person or a night person? If you'd rather I email you around a certain time, let me know. I want you to reply as soon as you can, but I don't want to be a bother, so let me know, okay? By the way, I don't like talking on the phone, so please don't call me. I just remembered I didn't tell you my phone number. That's okay. I'm a lot more comfortable communicating by email anyway. What about you, Okabekun? Are you still asleep? Rise and shine. Have you talked to uh, to the super hacker yet? Oh, I'd also like to hear more about John What's-Its-Face. I'm, I'm super curious. I'm nocturnal, so I usually don't go to bed until the sun comes up. Hey, just like me. <laughs> it's not so bad once you get used to it. Uh, mail me when you wake up. Yeah, so like what I do is I, I have like I, I have like a, a black curtain and then I set my, my light to turn on at a certain time. So I like naturally wake up to light. Because I don't have to worry about my sleep schedule. I don't worry I really have to worry about I really don't have to worry about waking up at a certain time. It's not bad. Sleep preparation makes the summer sun seem all the brighter. I really don't want to go outside, but I'm fed up with the humidity inside the lab. I chug a bottle of Dr. P. My stomach protests maybe I drank too fast. I'm exhausted, my hands are shaking slightly, and my vision is cloudy. I could pass out if I'm not careful. Maybe I should take a shower. That should stave off exhaustion, if only temporarily. This building has a basic shower room. There's no bath, but it's enough. The lab would fucking... You to read it. The lab would be hell without it. Daru's, Daru is at his computer, his back turned toward us. His right leg is bouncing impatiently. The room is mostly silent, save for the electric fans humming in Daru's mouse clicks. Daru doesn't look my way, he doesn't try to start a conversation. Neither do I. Outside is a sunny summer afternoon, but inside the air is stale and empty of life. Yesterday, the shocking experiment convinced me that the phone wave, named Subject to Change, was also a time machine. 
But Kurizu didn't seem willing to accept the results. She just stared. She just started screaming. A, a time machine? A time? It can't be. Then she took a mad dash out of the lab. It was like she couldn't get out of here fast enough. As for Mayuri, she was depressed about her chicken and bananas, so she skipped her daily co costume sewing and went home. Grudges over food run deep, I guess. Which leaves the lab empty, save for Daru and me. Our enthusiasm shot through the roof when we realized that Thorn Wave, named subject to change, had tremendous hidden potential. We nearly died of excitement after successfully sending an email to the past. So we stayed up all night doing experiments to confirm whether or not Phone Wave, named subject to change, is indeed a time machine. The results, however, we went to the supermarket and stacked up on wide, wide, wide variety of items. We tossed each of them into the phone wave, named sub subject to change, but everything failed. No change, nothing happened. After the experiment the, where the discharge phenomenon occurred, everything warmed up normally, no jellification. Suddenly, we couldn't get anything to happen. We still have no idea why. First, let's review the problems revealed by the last run of the experiments. Problem 1. Electrical Discharge Safety Precautions We removed everything flammable from the development room to reduce the risk of fire. We also prepared two fire buckets full of water, just in case. But that's not a fundamental solution. We'll keep an eye out for now, but if things get dangerous, we should seriously reconsider re relocating our experiments. Do you use water in electrical fires, though? Would that work? I don't think it would. Don't you, don't you get like a special type of like extinguisher for electrical fires? Like you would for grease fires? I could be wrong though. I never had to take out electrical fire before. I never fucked up that bad when building a PC. Keep an eye out for now, but if things get dangerous, we should obviously we should seriously consider relocating our experiments. Problem number two, mass increase. When the discharge phenomenon occurs, the phone wave named subject to change suddenly gains mass for unknown reasons. Because of this, the microwave broke the table and made a dent in the floor. To deal with this issue, we place a microwave on the floor, we spread cushions and blankets underneath. This hides the hole in the floor too. It's only a temporary fix though. If we make any more holes, Mr. Braun is quite capable of raising my rent. And that's to say nothing of the calamity that will cause if it falls to the floor. Anyway, we need to find the source of the mass increase. Amateurs like us even can, that is. But the first two problems pale before the third. The last problem is critical. Until we solve it, we can't really experiment with a phone wave named subject to change. Problem number three, we're not even sure of the necessary conditions to send emails to the past. No matter how many times we tried, we couldn't pin down a single condition. We spent the entire night doing trial and error. We tried over 40 different things, but not once could we reproduce the discharge phenomenon. I had the idea that opening the microwave door was the key. That theory was proven false. There might be something else I'm missing, but for now, we're at an impasse. We started off in high spirits, but grew more and more frustrated as time progressed, which brings us to the present. Honestly, I gave up. That's why I spent the entire morning lazing about like this. Another email pops on my phone. Ah, Shining Finger, fuck off. I haven't gotten a reply yet. Are you still as are you still asleep? You sleep too much, Rokobekun. You're living like an old man. Well, I guess I'm not one to talk, Lamau. Anyway, let me know when you have something on the at IBN 5100. Pretty please, Moeka. I think you must my phone. Yep. I've been getting way too many of these since yesterday. They're all from Shining Finger, the woman called Kiru Mueka. I never even used I never used email this often before. Even Mayuri only sends me one or two a day, and she's a teenage girl. Frankly, this is starting to get my nerves. I saw how fast Shining Finger typed. That would have been enough to tip me off that she was a male demon. Was careless. It's too much of a pain to reply, so I ignore it. I finish my bottle of Dr. P, my stomach gurgles. 
I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. I'm so hungry, I don't even feel like showering. What the fuck does that even mean? I called out to Daru, who's hammering on the keyboard. What the hell is that? <laughs> what is that? I'm just looking around the lab now. Like, I know what this is, because it's, it's, it's in the anime, but like, I don't remember this. Hey, wanna go to Sambo or for some people? Yeah, it does look it does look like something uh Rust 7 Burr. For sure. I was thinking the same thing. Nah, too much trouble. Aren't you hungry? Yeah, but I got a mail. Hmm. You're such a bum. Mayushi is spending money. Mayushi's spending money is getting dangerously low. You and Daru need to chip in, chip in two sometimes. You don't want to get between me and my food. Dude, I fucking love Mayuri. She's so cute. You eat too much anyway. Go on a diet before it's too. I'm not gonna send that to her. Don't get angry. Next time I'll treat you to anything you want to eat. So buying, so keep buying more bananas for the sake of our experiments. Yeah, we'll send that. You don't be mean to Mayuri. All right, that's rule number one. You don't get between Mayuri and her food. <laughs> what, what is what is doing on the count? What is doing on the computer? Anyway, I'm curious, so I casually peek over his shoulder. There's an image of a futuristic-looking facility I've never even seen before. Virtually colored cords crawl through the gigantic octagonal 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 how can I say that word? What the fuck is wrong with me? Octagonal octagonal tunnel, like the interior of a spaceship from sci-fi movie. He's 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 a fucking scientist in university, and he's never seen a CERN super collider apparently. Based on the height of the pe people in the picture, the tunnel looks more like 10 meters tall. Incidentally, the people don't look Japanese. Ah. Daru sighs heartedly. I don't know if the blank look in his eyes is from sleepiness, exhaustion, or if something's just wrong with him. The Large Hadron Collider. Sure is cute. What? What did you just say? Large Hadron Collider? Co co well, it's Kali. What are the fuck? Is that an incantation? No, a secret technique? Large Hadron Collider. You don't know about it? I grab Dara's relaxed shoulders and wring them out. Ow, 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 ow. What, what are you doing? Are you conscious? Of course, man. What is this Large Hadron Collider thing? You know, it's what CERN uses to do their experiments, LHC for short. It's seriously Moe, recommended. What the fuck? What do you mean Moe? You're lusting for something that's not even humanoid? Of course not, but there's something about it that gets me excited, you know? It makes me smile, you know? Don't you get- don't you feel that? I think of it, I remember you said that you found factories and undersides of highways irresistible or something. Yeah, same thing. Where does it end? 2D, 3D, and even inanimate objects? Life's too short. I don't want to limit my interests, you know. And yet you do anything to avoid things that don't interest you, hypocrite. CERN. That name. I've seen it somewhere and recently. Where was it again? Oh, of course. John Titer. Oh yeah, that guy you mentioned earlier. He's the guy uh, uh, at channel's going crazy about, isn't he? That one might be an imposter. I was talking about the one about the John Titer who appeared 10 years ago. He appeared 10 years ago? The same guy? I had hoped that Dara would remember, but no such luck. Anyway, John Titer mentioned CERN. I don't remember all of it, but there's one thing I'm sure of. 
Titer made a prediction, namely that before the year 2034, CERN would develop a time machine. A time machine? That's a timely topic. But that wasn't just 10 years ago, this new Titer said the same thing. It doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago or 10 seconds ago, that's not the point, Daru. This coincidence could very well be the choice of Stein's Gate. Can we trust this Titer guy? It doesn't matter if we trust him or not. Now we have now we have something in common, a time machine. We should investigate CERN. We've got nothing to lose. Vigor returns to my body. Curiosity truly is the greatest delicacy for a mad scientist like me. Anyway, the phone wave named subject to change is experimental is is uh, experiment has hit a dead end for now, so it shouldn't matter if I make a little detour for this. Tell me everything you know about CERN. Mm, sure thing. My CERN folder is smoking hot. The fuck is wrong with this man? Daru strikes his keys with a renewed passion. He goes to the he goes to the My Pictures folder and opens a folder literally called CERN. CERN is the world's largest particle physics research institution. Its popularity called the European Labo Laboratory and Particle Physics, or the European or Organization for Nuclear Research. It's close to the border of Switzerland and France, on the outskirts of Geneva. It's famous for the birthplace of HTML, HTTP, and the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web? You mean the internet? Bingo. That thing at the beginning... That thing at the beginning of most URLs. Yeah, you mean the thing that we don't have to type? CERN invented that? All I know about CERN is what I read in Titer's book. I never knew they were that amazing. Most people aren't aware, but there's a Japanese research team working at CERN too. What sort of research does CERN do? Uh, particle physics mostly. CERN can do experiments no one else can because they have the biggest particle accelerators in the world. The low energy anti proton ring, the proton uh, synchrotron booster, and the large electron positron collider. And the big boss is the largest accelerator in the world, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider Ton. Ton? Otaku possess the ability to anthropomorphize in Moe form just about anything in the world simply by sticking Ton at the end of its name. Various powers encompass even particle accelerators. Daru doesn't seem to notice my shock, he just brings up the next image. LHC is a 27 kilometer long circular tunnel built underneath CERN's headquarters. Its purpose is to smash protons together in the hope of creating unknown elementary particle reactions. They started experimenting last year. Before they started, there were rumors that the experiments might create mini black holes. No, those mini black holes will swallow the Earth. The universe is in danger, etc. Mini black holes. I'm pretty sure Titer said his time machine used mini black holes. Are the things he said about CERN true? What's the possibility of that actually happening? 100% that that it won't. CERN, offic CERN officially denies it. Let's say a mini black hole was formed. The amount of energy would be so tiny that it would disappear instantly upon formation. It would be impossible for it to swallow the world. But where there's smoke, there's fire. If I remember correctly, Titer claimed that CERN began time machine research in 2001. In 2034, they complete the time machine. Right now, it's 2010. If they actually started that research, it would have been nine years ago. According to their official announcements, they only began experimenting in 2008. That's suspicious. Of course, that's assuming Titer's story is true. Some of Titer's predictions were on the mark, but most weren't. I'm also perplexed by how everyone around me seems to have forgotten about Titer's 2000 appearance. There's something important in Titer's tale, or at least I want there to be. I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. Don't be surprised, I sniffed out an evil conspiracy. John Titer, CERN, you see where I'm going with this. Yeah, that's right. They're likely connected to the organization. Coincidence? Come now. Don't disappoint me. What? Evidence? Well, if you must know, whispers, whispers of my hands, whispers of my mad scientist intuition. 
Those bastards are trying to destroy the world. Yeah, with many black holes, but what if we're to steal that technology? What then? Of course. Who do you think I am? Everything everything is the choice of Steins Gate. El Sai Kongaru. I put away my phone, then turned to find Daru giving me an, exa an exasperated look. Just, who the hell are you fighting with? Just hearing that from Orkarine makes me happy. Aww. Daru, I know we must. I know what we must do. What was that? Don't you was at me? You're supposed to grin like you know exactly what I'm talking about. What kind of hacker are you? I want him to say something like, "Well, why the hell not?" So, what's in it for me? And then we continued like this, grinning stylishly the whole time. Slyly, sly, slyly. Me, a week's worth of potato chips. Daru, ten days. Hmm. You sure are a glutton. The dive makes you hungry, man. Deal. Get started. You got a bus. Something like that. Yep, a real cool conversation. But the real world Daru just purses his lips. You always give such half-baked explanations. Try to sound in intelligible before you try to sound intelligent. Work with me here. You are a super hacker. Stop saying hacker. It's at least say hacker. See where I'm going with this? No, not at all. <sighs> Hack into CERN. Aru stares at me in disbelief. Is that some kind of joke? I know you can do it, Daru. Expose their dastardly deeds and find any hints you can about the time machine. Dastardly deeds? You're just imagining that stuff, Ocarine. We stand at a crossroads. Will the phone, mic with a phone wave name subject to change, become a functional time machine, or will it die as a garbage in as garbage in a lab storage? Are you serious? I'm always serious. I look, I look Daru straight in the eye as I answer. Looks like that made him understand my position. Daru sweeps the garbage off his desk and sits up straight. I'm not responsible for the consequences, got it? Suddenly Daru is bursting with energy. It's like his earlier lethargy was a lie. Deal, get started. Let's do this. For your payment, I'll deposit a week's supply of potato chips into your Swiss bank account. Daru doesn't respond. He's already deep in concentration. Anyway, I'm going to sleep. It's all yours. I lie down on the sofa and let the clacking of Daru's keyboard lull me to sleep. How many, how many times does she email me? Oh, not once, okay. Yuma, we're operating in um, mun mundane, mundane world. You're supposed to be discreet, yeah? You, you don't want them, them to notice you, remember? Uh, remember summoning has taken 2,000 years to prepare. If it fails, everything will be ruined. Although, I suppose that m might make things interesting. Yeah. Insisting that I, the great Hyoin Kuma, run and hide? You risk my you risk my ire, cat girl. Uh what's this one? No 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 no. Akiba part of the mundane world? Nonsense. This has this town has belonged to chaos for centuries. As it shall forevermore. You what are you scheming? Oh my god. I can't even read this one all the way through. It won't let me scroll. Oh, there we go. I have to use the keyboard. Is the church still devoted to the fool's errand? Even if they manage to resurrect their messiah, humanity's faith is less than 70% of what it was at his time. Mankind doesn't need dis decrepit old gods to save them. What the fuck do I do for this? Wasn't the original sin Adam and Eve eating the apple? That's the original sin, right? I don't know, I never read the fucking book.
I wake up to the twilight sun steaming in through the window. Streaming in through the window. A refreshing breeze blows in, softly brushing my cheek. Naru is exactly where I left him before I fell asleep. He's sitting in exactly the same position. Not much has changed besides his typing speed. Oh, and now he's muttering to himself. I guess he hasn't had any success at hacking yet. I look around the room, but I can't find Mayuri. Maybe she's not coming today. I guess food-related grudges really do run deep. I stand up and stretch. I don't want to bother Daru, so I don't say anything to him. I take a cold Dr. P out of the fridge and quench my thirst. Then I throw myself back down onto the sofa and start browsing at channel on my phone. And what perfect timing. Titer is currently posting in the thread. Alright, let me get some more water real quick. Everett Wheeler model is correct. Please look it up to learn more. It seems you're still all clinging to the preconceived notions of time. Time simply time does not simply run from past to future like a car in one way in a one, on a one-way street. To be more specific, the laws of causality do not allow contradictions to occur. If the result of an event, the the effect is changed, the event itself, the cause, also changes to prevent a paradox. That's why there are so few people who can observe changes and divergence. Divergence being the world line's percent difference from the standard. Die, troll. You claim to be a time traveler without any proof. Stock trends, please. I'm counting on you, Mr. Time Traveler. <sighs> if you can't observe changes in divergence, then how can you possibly measure it? Oh, I know. Your time machine has a magical device that measures it for you. Lol. Oh, and you still haven't explained how a research institution conquers the world. Details. Plucks. Oh no, humanity is doomed. What has science done? JPEG. Oh my god. Lol, noobs responding seriously to troll thread. This tighter guy is a shit troll. Don't you people have anything to offer besides insults? How about you how about contributing to the discussion, plebeian scum? If you assume that time doesn't flow in a straight line, then the idea of time travel is much easier to swallow. In such a, in such a scenario, a time machine traveling to the past doesn't need to fight against the flow of time. I say Titer's points have merit. By the way, Titer, I'd also like to know more about CERN. What can you tell us about their current activities? 
Tell me which horse wins the next European uh, Emperor's Cup. I'll bet my entire life savings. The one thing that is accurate so far is that no one's fucking taking this seriously on the internet. They're just fucking... They're just shitposting. <laughs> All over the place. Everett Wheeler model equals many worlds interpretation. Basically, that means parallel parallel worlds. What's with all the stupid name tags? This Hoyan Kuma is more annoying than Titer. You call yourself Tite John Titer, but you're fluent in Japanese. Writing in English would make would, would at least makes it seem more realistic. You can't do English, can you? Well, they can, but you know, localization. Can I ask you a favor, Titer son? My mom died last year in the Shibuya earthquake. If I stop my mom from leaving home, then can I undo her death? So please, lend me your time machine. That's fucking sad. You're gonna believe this- you're gonna believe this time traveler, lol, without proof? Are you an idiot? No one seems particularly interested in what I said about time not flowing in a single direction. That's proof that your preconceptions are deeply ingrained. Honestly, it bothers me that you simply accept it as truth. Yeah, dude. Like, fucking... It's <laughs> a really, really sad comment, like, around all these fucking shit posters. That's proof that your preconceptions are deeply ingrained. Honestly, it bothers me that you simply accept that as the truth. I'm starting to understand why CERN was able to take over so easily. Whenever a major event causes divergence to change, the timeline is reconstructed to prevent paradoxes from occurring. For example, let's say that a major event causes this world line to diverge to into a new world line. Call it World Line B. As the timeline is reconstructed, all of your memories of reading and posting on at channel will disappear. To replace my memories of your doing some of you, of, of you doing something else. In other words, by changing the present, you change the past. I wrote about CERN yesterday. The only other thing I can say is that you must not believe their lies. They've already succeeded in creating a mic micro black holes. This fucking name, dude. Curry, Gohan, and Kameyameya. I desire only to quench my intellectual thirst. Unlike you closed-minded fools, I will reserve judgment until after I have heard what Titer has to say. And then I will make contact with Titer and acquire his time machine for myself. The mad scientist Hoi and Kuma will have his last laugh. Suck it, sleazebags. Tell me stock prices are fucking die. I won't believe until you tell me. That's not restructuring the world, you idiot. That's altering people's memories. Who the hell can alter memories of nearly 6.7 billion people? Do you realize how stupid that sounds? I think I would have noticed if someone went and screwed my brain. And does that... Does any of that have to do with the mini world's interpretation? Do some research, lol. Like our black holes? I, why is my scrolling, like, fucking slow as fuck now? Oh shit. Wait, the future's a wasteland? That means I can be a road warrior. Uh, fucking mic stand keeps on falling. That means I can be a road warrior like a like a like a mod buggy, right? And ride a mod buggy, right? I'm gonna get me a mohawk. Anyone know where I can buy spike shoulder pads? I checked CERN's homepage. It says they've ex ex been experimenting since 2009. Can they really make black holes? What the hell's gonna happen? Does Titer have a mohawk? God, it's fucking moe. Are you implying our brains make this world make make the world? Are you saying the universe is a giant tree with where the branch and where the branches or something? Is that some Eva level bullshit right there? Go back to 2036. Who are you replying to? I don't know how to re I don't know how to uh 314. That's probably that's sorry, that's probably just us. Is this how you reply to a specific person? Thank you for showing me. Reconstruction is the timeline and alteration of people's memories. I think they're essentially the same thing. Why are you so intent on saying they're different? With a few exceptions, nobody can keep their memories across world lines. They are reconstructed along with everything else when divergence changes. Uh, what's a road warrior? Anyone home? I am immersed in a heated in, in, I'm immersed in a heated internet argument when an unfamiliar voice interrupts me. Door opens and a girl peeks inside. I recognize her. It's the girl I met yesterday at the Braun Tube Workshop. Hi, I'm from Braun Tube Workshop. When her eyes meet, she smiles. The TV you sent in for repairs has been fixed. Mind picking it up? 
Arrow's typing gets even faster. Looks like she he, he looks like he's in the zone. It would be a bad idea to disturb him with our voices. I nod to the girl and hurry outside. Why do we have to be so sneaky? Um, what was this girl's name again? I think it was something like uh, Aruma or um, Amor. All oh, right, Amane, Amane Suzuha. Currently, my genius partner in crime is expecting an important mission. I don't want to bother him. Hmm. What exactly are you? What exactly do you guys do? I told you before that learning our secrets could put you and everyone you know in grave danger. You're called Future Gadget Laboratory, right? How did you know that? I never told you. Wait, are you an organization spy? I raise my guard and spring into praying mantis stance. But Suzuha doesn't fucking know what I said because I skipped it. Sk uh, stares blankly. That's what it said in your mailbox. Oh. I lowered my guard. Why didn't she just say so? Now that you know, it's not like you can unknow. I'll give you a short explanation, but you must not tell a soul. Suzuha nods firmly. Is this me or are her eyes gleaming? We are the Future Gadget Laboratory, dedicated to defeating the evil organization that rules the world from the shadows. Wow. Is the evil organization CERN? Yeah, but... Oh, so I was right. Those guys really are contemptible. Lo are, are really are a contemptible lot, aren't they? She nods to herself for some reason. And contemptible. I thought I was the only one who uses words like that in normal conversation. How did you know we were hacking into CERN? What? You're hacking them right now? Me, my big mouth. Just answer my question. How did you know about our business with CERN? Ah, uh, um, well. Actually, I overheard you this afternoon. If you stand here, you can hear stuff from the window. The window? Come to think of it, it was open, and Daru and I were talking loudly. But if you can really hear us from here... Look up the second floor. The window's still fully open, but I can't hear a thing. I guess Daru is working quietly. I look down. There's an unfamiliar bicycle parked at the front of the Braun Tube Workshop. One of those mountain bikes, its frame, its frame is all sparkly, its tires mostly clean, it's probably new. It looks pretty fast, but whose is it? I've only been working here for a day, but... Suzuha opens the Braun Tube Workshop door with a wry smile. I've got a lot more free time than I expected. I've gone on four or five... I've gone out four or five times today, figured I'd recon... Re... Re... What the fuck? Re... Re... Reconnoiter? The front of the store... What the hell is that? See if I couldn't spot any... See if I can spot any customers. Now there's a word you don't hear in casual conversation. Yeah, no shit. I'm pretty sure it means to perform reconnaissance. To scout an area and gather intelligence. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> is you some kind of secret agent? Follow Suzuha into the store. So that's when I heard you guys talking from the second floor. I got interested and looked it up online. Now all I now I know all of the rumors about CERN. Damn, we were careless. Looks like we need to close that window when we discuss sensitive matters from now on. But if we do that, the lab will turn into a scorching hell. Damn if I do, damn if I don't. Anyway, you must not tell anyone else. Or else men in black will raid us. Ah, yeah, so I understand. I'm actually tight-lipped, so don't worry. Suzuha grins and thumbs her chest confidently. All is quiet inside the Braun Tube workshop. That gigantic TV isn't on. Mr. Braun's not here either. Where's the manager? Yeah, he left right after he finished repairing your TV. He probably went to see the chipmunk. He disappears during business hours every now and then. 
Whenever I ask him where he's going, he always says something like, I'm picking up my beloved daughter from school, or my beloved daughter has a cold with a huge grin on his face. Who is it? Hey, what's up, Lukaku? Uh, I baked cookies today. I had everyone in my family eat some and got their seal of approval. Would it be okay if I bake some for your lab, friends, master? Oh, and it would be great if you could teach me some more techniques with Samidare. Whenever you have time. P.S. I managed 10 practice swings today. Hold on, we warmly welcome your refreshments. In fact, you can come cook for us any day if you want. I'll even provide you with a maid uniform. Perfect. He dotes on her too much. It probably just annoys her. Anyway, just how irresponsible can you be to neglect work to see your daughter? He used to put a back soon sign on the door whenever he left, but now he has Suzuha take care of things while he's gone. So, here's the fixed TV. This is how lightly tap the TV on the counter. He said to charge you 1,000 yen. Damn, manager, I bet he gave it to us just so he could charge a repair fee. What? It's only 10 bucks, bro. Settle down. I reluctantly take the bill out of my wallet and hand it to Suzuha. She takes the receipt. Apparently, it had already been written out. Thanks for your patronage. Well, just take it anyway. By myself? Are you joking? Huh? Didn't you bring it here by yourself? Do you know it takes 10 times more effort to go up the stairs than down? Defying gravity is no easy task, woman. I guess I can help, but... Oh, I see. So we're already in the age where women do physical labor. She mutters, her tone pensive. How sarcastic of her. I don't remember anyone asking for your lab... Uh, sorry, for your help. Honestly, getting help from a girl like you would just hurt my pride. Wow. Applause. That was so manly, I might be falling for you. What's wrong with the term, thanks for your patronage? What's wrong with that term? Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. How many would you like? Thank you for patronage. <laughs> I was so manly. I might be. I might be falling for you. You think you can trick me like that? You're lying, aren't you? Eh? What makes you think that? It's one of my powers, coloring gentlemen. The power allows me to see through lies. Liars appear to glow red. When then they die. You have powers? Suzuha's eyes pop, but then she clears her throat as if to hide her surprise. Are you some kind of esper? When I nod, she whispers into my ear. Are there a lot of espers like you? Uh, of course not. I'm, I am special. I thrust my chest out as far as possible to display my majesty. Oh, you had me scared for a second there, but still, it's amazing that people like you exist. Maybe CERN is the reason there aren't more people where I come from. After muttering some nonsense to herself, she finally nods in understanding. By the way, does the ability to see through lies have any combat application at all? If it were me, I'd want to I want perfect accuracy with a thousand meters, and ultra-fast reflexes that let me tear my enemy's limbs off before they can react. What the hell is she talking about? Is she a survival game otaku? No, wait, don't tell me. You, you're an organization assassin, aren't you? You must be the, old, must be the one they call Miss Golgo. Who hired you? Nobody hired me. What's a Golgo? She's trying to gloss things over with an insincere smile. Her confusion is suspicious. That reminds me, I think I remember her saying something awfully disturb so awfully disturbing things when we first met yesterday. Anyway, do you have any other powers? Even if I did, there's no way I'd tell a hitman hired to kill me. I'm not going to kill you. Revealing my power would be suicide. They are more effective uh, they are most effective with the element of surprise. In other words, they're for me to know and for you to find out. Meanie. Say what you like. Burning tension runs between us. Our eyes meet, invisible sparks scatter. Oh, ka be kun I want you to reply to me already. I've been waiting, you know. And please, tell me the Super Hacker's address when you can. 
if we don't get crackling, someone might, someone else might get to the IBM 5100 first. Oh well. And then an email arrives to break the stalemate. I turn my attention away from Suzuha. This ringtone is starting to piss me off. It's most likely from the male demon's shining finger. I can't tell without even checking. Well, it's getting ridiculous. Because of stalker qualities and maybe split personalities, I shouldn't have given her my address. Oh yeah. <laughs> my uh my my uh my raid notification. I look at Susaha and see her lying on the counter. She's praying with some she's playing with something in her palm in the palm of her hand. It looks like a small metal pin. Honestly, that one and the drain damage one are my two favorite notifications. Anyway, how can she be this lazy on her second day? Half of it's because the notification has dancing you. <laughs> I love CRTs was a lie too, wasn't it? Oh, why the frown? Did you get a death notice? A what? Just wondering. Just wondering if I got a death notice. How can she say that with a straight face? What the hell is a death notice anyway? Do those ever even exist? Um, what I meant to ask was if you got some unpleasant news. You could say that. This girl is hard to get a handle on. I really should have let my guard down around her. There's this woman who's obsessed with finding an IBM 5100. This is how it leaps up as soon as I speak. An IBM 5100? You know about them? Yeah. I see. So the IBM 5100 legend is famous, huh? Maybe that retro PC is more popular with female otaku than I thought. Yeah, that's it. I heard the urban legend from someone. How much do you know about it? I actually tried looking for an IBM 5100, but in the end, I came to the conclusion that there isn't one in Akiba. I see. Well, that's true. You sound like you know something. Eh, well, I do and I, I don't, I guess. I don't know about it personally, but I happen to hear about it from a knowledgeable acquaintance of mine, or something like that. <laughs> Another insincere smile. I'm starting to think she's not a very good liar. You can tell she's lying whenever she smiles like that. Sure enough, she doesn't offer any other information. She just keeps that insincere smile plastered on her face. But who are you? Ha! Suzuha falls back down on the counter with a deep sigh. He looks at me from, the, from that position. I was thinking of giving you a bunch of interesting information on the IBN 5100, but when you look at me like that, I don't feel like it anymore. I'm not even interested in the IBN 5100. I'm more concerned with CERN right now. Solving one of Akiba's mysteries won't topple the organization's reg regime, regime after all. You don't have a shred of credibility. I have no way of knowing if that interesting information of yours is true or not. Wow, that's harsh. Well, I admit, I am, a, I am acting kind of suspicious. I won't let you. I won't give you a hint. I won't tell you. I think she's what she said. And then you'll writhe in agony when you can't figure it out. Truth is, the IBM 5100 has a hidden function. A hidden function? That reminds me, I'm pretty sure John Titer from 2000 said something like that. I searched through my memories. If I remember correctly, the IBM 5100 can do something with other proprietary programming language. I can do something or other with a proprietary programming language. No way, how did you know? Tell me, tell me. I only vaguely remember, but it looks like I hit the mark. I grin. It's another one of my powers. Leading question. I can read your heart of hearts. Oh, fucking Christ. What? No fair. For some reason, Suzuha covers her face with both her hands. She opens her fingers just enough to peek at me. That's, en that's not enough to escape my power. I see everything, Amane Suzuha. Resistance is futile. <laughs> anyway, the IBM 5100 has a secret function. Head hidden function. 
It can decipher IBM's proprietary programming language, which was written before APL and BASIC became widespread. I know what BASIC is, but what the fuck is APL? It's short for a programming language, a programming language introduced in 1964. Beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code, a beginner's programming language frequently used in the 1970s. Interesting. Oh my fucking god, I clicked off the goddamn game again. It's so easy to do that for some reason. Uh, isn't that surprising? Now I remember, John Titer said the same thing in 2000, and right after that, an IBM engineer officially admitted the, to, the, to that function's existence. Now it's a dead programming language that can only be deciphered with an IBM 5100. The reason Titer traveled to 1975 to obtain a 5100 was because he needed that, that function. Maybe Moeka wants to use it too. Or maybe not. Shiny Figure doesn't seem like the type who'd know about that sort of function. That's why the IBM 5100s are so rare. While talking, Suzuha kept keeps dropping her glance to the metal pin in, in her hand. She rolls it with her, around with her fingers. I guess that's a habit of hers. So IBM 5100s are super rare. Maybe if I get one, I could sell it for a high price. That could be a good way to raise research funds. But first, I have to deal with CERN. Life in 2036 is very different from what it is today. Most people live on farms, growing their own food. All forms of commerce and communication are restricted. There's no travel, no internet, no railroad even. Most people never see another town, let alone a city. Science continues to advance, of course, but the vast majority of people do not benefit from that progress. Technology belongs only to those chosen by CERN and the Committee of 300. It's very peaceful, at least on the surface, there's none of the conflict you see in this era. There's no war? How is that possible? How did CERN resolve the, the situation in the Middle East? What have you got against world peace? Sounds like CERN is doing humanity a favor. This tighter guy stole a time machine from CERN, didn't he? He's, a, he's the bad guy here. Die in a fire, terrorist scum. The world in 2036 is governed by CERN. All nations, even America, have disbanded their armies. To put it simply, civilization has returned to an 18th century level of technology and exists under a communist system of government. Except now, that system works flawlessly. Right now, we should be asking your, your, right now you should be asking yourselves, how is that even possible? How does a system of government that collapsed in the 20th century exist without any discontent? The answer to that question is the reason I am here. Yes, I am a terrorist. There are others like me who fight against CERN. We think of ourselves as a resistance, but there is no denying that our actions are a kind of terrorism. Anyway, I want to hear more about the many worlds interpretation. This fucking dude. You said that has been pro that, that has been proven by 2036. How? I knew you were a terrorist. How many have you murdered? What if my kids are among them? Maybe I really should kill your father. Protect the future. Stop being there around the bush. Give us answers. You're the one. You're one of those old men who participated in the student riots, aren't you? Filled your head with a bunch of bullshit, and now you can't tell fact from fiction. Am I right? Delicious nationalistic tears. Well, CERN probably figured it out. They've got a time machine to experiment with it. To, to experiment with, right? It would make you no better than Titer. If you're willing to face the consequences, then go right ahead. Titer, question: Did World War Three take place as scheduled? What do you mean as scheduled? Why did you come to this particular time? Did you find an IBM? Did you find an IBM 5100? Is John Titer plugging for? Is John Titer plugging for the commies? I thought that went out of style years ago. I thought Titer was crazy, but this Hoying guy is even crazier. Get a room, guys. World War Three, Lamo. There isn't supposed to be an IBM 5100. Isn't there supposed to be an IBM 5100 in Akiba? As I've already explained, my goal in this time is to change the future. I post here to warn you of what's going to happen. Perhaps convergence will render my efforts meaningless, but even if one person pays attention, that's enough. World War Three is that something I said in a different I said in a different world line? I would like you to talk. I would like to talk to you in private. Please email me when you have time. 
Of course, if anyone else here would like to email me, feel free. Serious inquiries only, please. All I've been getting is hate mail. Here's my address. Twenty hours have passed since Daru has started hacking. Night gives way to a refreshing summer morning. I glance at Daru while browsing at channel on my phone. He's fidgeting even more, now his legs are like pistons. His knees move up and down in harmony with the rat -tat, tat tat of his keyboard. Daru hasn't slept in about 40 hours, but he still won't get off the computer. I was going to ask him if he'd like a break, but his entire body is exuding an aura that says don't talk to me. I curl up a bit and return to my phone. My discussions with John Titer are just make are, are just aren't making sense. Not even Titer himself seems to know about the Titer from 10 years ago. It's hard to imagine that everyone at channel is conspiring against me. But how else my how else can I explain it? Out of options, I decide to email Titer directly, just as he had told me to. His audacious he audaciously exposed his own address on the app channel. I guess that's his way of saying, bring it on. In my email, I question the difference between his posts now and his posts 10 years ago. The current titer hasn't even acknowledged the latter. I only vaguely remember them, but they basically went like this. In 2015, World War III breaks out. Many people die. Well, no one told me. Did you guys have World War III without me? Was I not invited? <laughs> By 2036, the world is a nuclear wasteland. John Titer travels to 1975 to obtain an IBM 5100. The IBM 5100 was necessary to revive te te technology lost in World War III. The IBM 5100 has a hidden function, the ability to read IBM's proprietary computer language, which in which predates APL and BASIC. But only certain IBM engineers are aware of that function, so it does not appear in the manual. In 1998, Titer meets his younger self and his parents in America. John Titer was a soldier who volunteered for this mission. John Titer is an American. Furthermore, in 2000, Titer correctly predicted the outcomes of some future events. The Peruvian coast earthquake in 2001, the election of a new pope, the outbreak of the Iraq war, China's advances in space, and so forth. Though he only talked vaguely about each one, they all came true. On the other hand, other predictions went unfulfilled. For example, the Y2K bug, the Civil War in America, the cancellation of the Beijing Olympics, the inauguration of America's first female president in 2009, and so forth. There's more, but let's leave those aside for now. I'm going to ask him why those predictions did not come true. Also, most of your predictions from back then didn't come true. If, you're, if you're from the future, then why didn't your prediction come true? I'd appreciate explanation. Sorry for the sudden mail. All right, let's send it now. If he can't answer to my satisfaction, then the current Titer is an imposter. This is your litmus test, John Titer. Nah, uh, so what are your true colors? Okay, 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 okay. You need to hear this. You need, you need to hear this. Because I haven't, I haven't been playing this with with um, with any dialogue because they're speaking in Japanese. It'll just be annoying. Um, but you need to hear how cute Tuturu is. How the fuck do I make it play this dialogue? Oops. Here we go. It's 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 even cuter in the anime though. 
Now I need to find it. I know exactly. I know the exact moment this happens in the anime, and it's so it's so cute. Yes, give me the Tutoru compilation, please. Must find it. Must find it. I think I found it. Now let's find it. <laughs> um. <laughs> Is this it? Here, yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me turn off the fucking music here. No, get off that. Okay. It's the best tutoru in the entire fucking series. It's <laughs> my, my favorite part. <laughs> it's so good. I love it so much. My ear comes in. <laughs> Sorry, I had. I, I, once we got to the part which says "Tutoru, good morning," I had to show that part. <laughs> Looks like she's forgiven us for experimenting on her food. She's back to her usual smiley self. What are you doing here so early? Well, I heard you guys had stayed up two nights in a row, so I brought you some goodies. Dude, Titanfall 2 is... Mmm, it's so good. The campaign is very nice. Excellent, good job. Though, to be accurate, it wasn't two nights in a row, I took an afternoon nap yesterday. Mary starts fishing through her convenience store bag, and then she takes out... Ta-da! Canned... Odin? The canned Odin, uh... Oh, don't... Isn't it just Udon? But just said differently? I don't know. Uh, it's still warm when she gives it to me. I open the lid right away and eat the beef. Mayuri and I have been together for a long time, so she knows what I like. And when it comes to canned Odin, beef is where it's at. It's a present from Ayushi. They're 270 yen each, so savor it, okay? I've been getting tired of eating bananas and chicken lately, but these instead, of, but buy these instead from now on. But Mayushi doesn't have enough pocket money to splurge like this all the time. And Mayushi loves bananas and chicken, so she'll keep buying them. I considered, I consider saying you'll get fat if you only eat frozen foods, but that threat's that that threat's not very effective against Mayuri, so I'll hold my tongue. Yeah, true. Her high metabolism, her high metabolism prevents her from getting fat, no matter how much she eats. But wait, there's more. Ta-da! 
Next, she produces a small box with a Rhinet illustration. Rhinet sausage. It's com it comes with a it comes with an Upa bottle cap as as a bonus. I really wanted it, so I bought it. Oh my god! She sticks out her tongue with a shy giggle. Something tells me that in a few months' time, this lab will be in neck deep in Upa goods. There are only a few things right now, like the cushion on the sofa, but that number is sure to grow exponentially. So how's Darukun? Yeah, he's in the middle. He's in the midst of a hard fight, so he should at least rest a little. I mean, I never, I never said he had to do it all at once. Darukun's super hacka spirit is on fire. Don't say hacka. Empty diet coke bottle comes whistling through the air. It hits my head with a nice thunk. He sure is tense. Mayuri and I evacuate to a corner of the lounge and eat quietly. Eat, eat the and quietly eat the Odin. I don't know what the fuck that word is. But isn't hacking bad? Mayushi doesn't want you to do bad things. I would be a fool to let Daru's super hacker, I mean hacker skills, go to waste. Ugh. Incidentally, it looks like these hackers hijacked a certain system back in 2008. We found news articles about it online. That means even the inventors of the World Wide Web have holes in their security. With, the, with his skills, Daru should have no trouble getting through. Besides, we're doing this to expose CERN's wrongdoings. This is a war against the dark forces that secretly rule the world. Bad things are bad. Hmm, that's unusual. Myra usually just accepts whatever I say. Well, I admit, I admit it, we are doing bad things, but there's no way we can stop now. Who are you now? Oh, it's John Titer. Oh, never mind. It's, I, th I thought that was John Titer because it's such a weird fucking email, but it's just Amane. It has, it has the same domain. Uh, this is Amane Suzuha. First email. Thanks for exchanging addresses with me yesterday. I finally made a friend here. Yay, don't worry. I want to email you to, uh, I, I won't email you too much, and I might be slow to reply to. I'm kind of new at this email thing. It's okay to laugh at me. Um, there was, that wasn't an exchange. You took my address book by, uh, you took my address by force. I had no choice but to, to submit. Where were you living before? Haven't used cell phones much? Uh. I don't, know, I don't know how much these messages actually matter, though. There's no way we can stop now. I need to change the subject. Mayuri, want to trade my sweet potatoes for your beef? If you want to trade, I'd rather have your quail egg. That'd be ridiculous. Next to beef, quail eggs are my favorite. But Mayushi likes quail eggs, too. Settle for... Uh, s settle for my... Uh, Chikuba? Mm, okay, Chiku is better than sweet potatoes. With that said, I skewer the Chiku and put it in my can. And I get her beef in return. Subject change complete. Myri really eats up conversations about food, so it's easy to manipulate her. Mm, soon, if I can just get the SQL table, I'll have more than enough passwords. You're no match for me. Daru has started talking to himself. Looks like things are falling into place. Daru really is a super hacker. I think this is the first time I've seen him serious. Daru bends himself forward, staring holes into the screen. But all I see on the screen is the same string of numbers and letters. Oh, come, come, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, uh, you can hide from me, you naughty thing, you. How does it feel to be naked? His eyes are bloodshot, and he's starting, and he's and he started rambling. Maybe the lack of sleep is getting to him. Daru opens up a new window, types in 12 character string, and slams the enter key. An air sound rings. <laughs> he quickly deletes the string and enters a new one. He keeps repeating that sequence until finally... Oh yes, yes! Matching ID and password login complete. Hell yeah, taste it! Yes, it is! What enthusiasm. Did you get it? 
The smug bastard turns around with an expression of immense satisfaction, as if he's gone to La Petite Mort. A condition of mental and physical release unique to male physiology, characterized by a feeling of supreme calm and composure. Entering the state is almost like becoming an empty shell, also known as hyper sage time or saint time. Wait, why is it unique to male physiology? Is the st the idea the state of supreme calm and exposure? That's uh, composure is a unique male thing. What? Whatever. Mission complete. Really? Wow, that's amazing. I don't really get it, though. After 20 hours of agony, it's finally over. To show Daru my appreciation, I toss him an unopened uh, Odin can. And Odin can's the best after a job well done. Well done. Well, uh, well done. You really are the world's greatest super hacker. Hacker. A hacker. I'm glad you're on my side. So, did you find out how they were, how they're planning to destroy the world? I haven't looked yet, man. All I did was get us connected. But it's all downhill from, from here. I'm sorry if you're tired, but please start checking. The keys on this conspiracy have got to be in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it, but let me eat this Odin can first. After a short meal break, Daru taps on his keyboard more nimbly than before. The question is, who is this poop? who this passer belongs to. Why is that? I went into CERN's database and got a data table. From there I focused on people with simple passwords like 11111111111 or an A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H to get my hands on an ID. It'd be awesome if this turns out to be the server admin's login, but I don't think we're that lucky. In, Jap in Japanese, please? Same. Basically, if this is if this is the CERN admin's password, we can taste every inch of CERN's luscious, luscious flesh. But if it's just an ordinary researcher's password, then we can only see CERN's boobs. Darukun, that's naughty. Put the erotic examples. Basically, you mean there'll be limits to what information we can access. Exactly. Anyway, it's only a matter of time before I get a server admin's password. Let's save that for later. I'm really sleepy now. It'd be cruel to push Daru any further. It's unfortunate, but overworking him isn't an option. Let's let's let him rest so he can regain his energy. Oh look, looks like a uh, looks like our ID belongs to an Accelerator Division Chief. So it's not a server admin. It would take a miracle to get one of our one of our first try. How many staff members do you think CERN has? How many? Over 6,000. That many? Well, for now, let's look at this uh, Accelerator Division Chief. Uh, his name is... Jack. Let's look at his email log. And of course, the emails come up in English. Oh, no, that makes Mayushi's head hurt. Mm, it's pathetic to flinch at a mere sight of English. Dara, what does that say? Need to translate it. This is a job for Dr. Excite. Nah, I've got a better idea. Daru boots up the translation software and auto translates the open page. Poor, unnatural Japanese shows up. First line says, Happy New Year. Looks like a New Year's greeting. Something about going on vacation in Spain. Oh, lucky bastard. The email. The, the email's normal, nothing out of the ordinary. If we keep scouring the log like this, we can also identify the server manager. You know, looking through someone else's email without permission makes me feel really guilty. Myro gets depressed and moves away from the computer. She sits on the sofa and hugs her giant upo cushion with a sigh. I know we're doing something socially unacceptable, however... 
I abandoned guilt when I chose the path of evil long ago. When I chose the path of evil long ago. Let the responsibility be mine. I will not ask you to answer for my crimes. 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 What a guy. I'll let Ocarine do me in the butt. I decline your offer. Daru, go to fucking sleep. <laughs> I get peeking, Daru. Ocarine, you're bad. You make my Yushi sad. That's of no concern to me. You just sit there and pretend your hands are clean. Upon further examination, we discover several emails with the title Experiment Report. In English, naturally. Looks like he sends emails like these almost daily. LHC Experiment Reports. There could be a hint about time machines in there. We should try reading them. This is definitely a crime, though. That's what his lips say, but his hand still clicks in the email. What comes up is an unintelligible series of symbols. This is encrypted. Of course it isn't that simple. Well, cracking this should be a piece of cake. Nice, super hacker. He's a genius, no doubt. Daru undoes the security in less than 10 minutes. The real time sync is deciphering the crappy machine translation. Um, translate into proper Japanese, it's... Hi, Pole. That's acting completely unnecessary. Uh. Uploaded today's data to the server. The LHC is performing admirably. Can't say the same about the rest, though. This baby's fickle as a cat, but it was surprising to be obedient this month. It would be great if it stayed like this forever. But don't you think this work is under unrewarding? This kitten... This 27 kilometer long kitten has been in operation for nine years. Our research will change the course of history, yet only a small group of people are allowed to see it. Of course, if it were ever officially released, it would be one hell of a scandal. People would probably say something like, Call Robert Zemke to CERN right away. He could build it in less than a year. Nine years? Daru finishes reading, I rub my temples with my thumbs. Calm down, let's sort things out. Do you think there are any translation errors in that email? Did Daru notice something unnatural too? He's not joking like he usually does. If you trust the translation software, then that's what it says. The Japanese translate the Japanese is strange in places though. But that doesn't make sense. I thought the LHC was only put into operation around spring last year, but this email makes it sound like it's been in operation for nine years. That is strange. The email send date is is this year, 2010, so nine years makes it 2001. John Titer posted this on At Channel yesterday. The only thing I can say is that you must not believe their lies. They have already succeeded in creating micro black holes. I gulp. If you read between the lines of this email, it sounds like they're doing some sort of secret experiment. Also, Robert Zemeckis is a super famous Hollywood movie director. He directed a trilogy of smash hit time travel movies about 20 years ago. I groan. No way. Was I right? CERN's hiding a major secret from the world, and it's related to time travel. Keep looking, Daru. Search for anything related to time machine research. Seriously? I don't know if Daru is questioning my order or the possibility that CERN might be researching time travel. Either way, he begins tapping on the keyboard again. Hmm. There aren't any emails with this with the phrase time machine in them. Yeah. And the phrase Z program was used hundreds of times in the past few months. Do you think it could be the, about the current LHC experiments? What is it specifically? Black hole formation experiments? Hmm. Let's try looking for a document. Found one. Dart opens up a PDF to att attachment. Oh, it looks like this is top secret stuff from France, England, and Holland. Government secrets. CERN's not even a government organization, so why? Wait, should we be looking at this stuff? We might be in a little deep here. I don't care. Give me the details. 
Hold on, if we get caught, we're not getting out of it. We're not getting off with an apology. Are you so incompetent as to let yourself be traced? I took the necessary precautions. Then I fail to see the problem. Well, thanks. Daru makes a slightly awkward face as he takes the file about the Z program and feeds it into the translation software. Hmm. May 14th. 137th Z program experiment report. Because we have already succeeded in the creating mini black holes, the report is omitted. First, stop, stop. All of a sudden, Titer's prediction became reality. So CERN did use the LHC to generate mini black holes, but they announced that their experiments still haven't succeeded, so why? This is what Titer was referring to when he posted don't believe what they say. But the goal of the experiment was, wasn't was even to generate many black holes, it was to create new elementary particle reactions. Daru doesn't take this doesn't take his wide eyes off the monitor, but in reality they're already generating those mini black holes. Sure it does seem like it. What does it say next? Um Result error. Human is dead. Mismatch. For details, consult Jellyman's report number 14. We propose that further experiments be halted until the lifter is perfected and all local field conformity points are online. What does that mean? Human is dead. It means somebody died, right? What? Somebody died? Seriously? I groan. This isn't a joke anymore. Something very serious is going on here. Maybe we are in our, maybe we are in too deep. Hmm. What if we are? And what if we are? I'm not afraid. I'm not. After all, I am an, the insane mad scientist Hoi Huma. We can't stop now. I can't control my curiosity. Besides, now that I have proof of their evil deeds, ignoring it would just leave a bad taste in my mouth. My throat's gone dry. I swallow my saliva. In an attempt to keep whatever composure I can, I scold myself for being so faint of heart. What is this Jellyman's report? Daru starts typing once I ask my question, but he soon clicks his tongue. I can't find it in Jack's email. We need an account with more privileges. Then we'll save that for next time. Search for something related to time machines. You know we're not going to find anything, right? After that, Daru spends about 15 minutes fi fishing through the Accelerator Division Chief's email, but he doesn't find anything about time machines. Worlds like Accelerator, Technical Committee, and LHC Project Lead came up, so I guess we should look for an ID from there. Maybe then we can get more information. You can't look it up with the ID you have. Daru shakes his head. Well, I guess let's call it a day. By the way, what we just saw was CERN's biggest... CERN's biggest server, so but I also found a strange database on the network. Strange how? It was buggy. Buggy? I mean, it was full of some kind of code. But the code was gibberish. Utterly impossible to decode. Thank you very much. Could it be encrypted? Uh, not by any algorithm I've ever seen, and it, it wouldn't even work as a program. It j just bothers me. Why would they have a database that nobody could ever use? This is strange. That is strange. I'll see what I can find out. Daru tries every every trick in the book to crack the mysterious database, but after about an hour, the, piston, the pistons he has for fingers begin speeding up. Eventually, he just slams the keyboard out of frustration. Ah, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. You call this a program, dumbass? Go to hell. Oh, great. He snapped. I think you should stop. Ari puts down her sewing tools and turns to Dara with a worried look on her face. My head is spinning. I can't make- I can't take it anymore. This is bad. Dara's breaking down. Maybe I'm pushing him too far. He's been up two days straight. He's probably at his limit. Good work. Go rest, Daru. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, even if it isn't a bug, but an actual program, only the guys who made it could 
understand it. I've never seen anything like it, a program unlike anything he's seen. Hmm. At that moment, music bursts from my pocket. Okay, there's John Titer. I gulp. A flash runs through my head like an electric shock. There's quite a bit of text, but what catches my eye are the first several lines. Of course, everything is falling into place. What you talking about? Nari looks at me curiously, but I don't have time to answer her. I'm frantically assembling the pieces in my mind. John Titer, CERN, the time machine. These things are all connected, and now I have another piece of the puzzle. I shiver at my own brilliance. I didn't get to read it. Is everything you wrote... If everything you wrote is true, then we have a lot to talk about, particularly concerning the IBM 5100's hidden functionality, which I have not mentioned to anybody yet. I am indeed surprised that you know about it. However, I have not gone to the year 2000, though it is possible I may go there later. There are three possible explanations. First, the John Titer who appeared in 2000 is my future self. In other words, I go to 2000 later and write about the things you have told me. But that would cause a chicken and egg paradox, wouldn't it? Second, you're delusional for making things up. For the sake of serious discussion, let's set aside let's set, let's set this possibility aside. Third, you may have seen something I wrote on a different world line. That would mean that ten years ago you existed on a different world line than the one bef than, than the one we are on now. However, that raises another issue. When the other world line changes, the entire timeline I re I reconstructed from past to future in order to prevent the paradox from occurring. That was proven in 2036. In other words, it should be impossible for you to retain memories of a previous world line, unless you too are a time traveler, that is. Do you have any idea what could have what Do you have any idea what the cause could be? Hmm. Daru, I think I know how we can read that program. Seriously? How? I aim my phone's camera at the screen displaying the supposedly bugged data and take a picture. I attach it to the message, does this code look familiar, and send it to Titer. A mysterious database inside CERN, a program unlike anything Super Hacker Daru has ever seen, its true form is... If my hunch is correct, John Titer should know. What? There's no way. Say, say what you like. We'll know soon enough. We wait for Titer's reply. Though it's only been a few minutes, it feels like an eternity to me. It's here. I quickly open the email. Where did you f find that? That's written in a program proprietary in, in a in a proprietary IBM programming language used prior to 1975. You can only decipher it with an IBM 5100, and its contents are enough to raise goosebumps in my entire body. Just as I suspected. Hmm? I was right, Daru. I know where that data comes from. An IBM 5100. That retro PC has a certain special function. In fact, for more than 25 years after it went to the market in 1975, nobody knew it knew of it save a few IBM engineers. That function was first brought to light by John Titer, who appeared in 2000. And well after Titer posted about it, the, an actual IBM engineer admitted to the hidden function's existence. Which reminds me, I talked to Suzaha about this only yesterday. I can also decipher IBM's proprietary programming language, which was written before APL and BASIC became widespread. Isn't that surprising? Now it's a dead programming language only decipherable but with an IBM 5100. What an incredible coincidence. A prime example of synchronicity at work. It's almost like an almighty it's almost like an almighty will is pulling the strings. 
No, no, I say. This discovery of ours was inevitable from the start, for this is the choice of Stein's Gate. Wait, so CERN has an, I, has an IB100 database? Those machines aren't compatible with any modern software. Why would they do something like that? Answer me this. What is the best way to secure a machine against external cracking? Well, make it standalone, of course. Which, by the way, is why our nuclear launch locations still use floppy disks. They are not connected to any network. Jaro quickly catches on to the intent of my question. If only IBM 5100s can read, can read it, then I guess that's kind of standalone. Which means that CERN's keeping their most important secrets hidden there. How do you know about that hidden function anyway? It is recorded in my brain's extensive Index Laborium Prohibitorium. How the fuck did I grab get that, dude? Jesus, but I can't say, like, fucking simple-ass words. Titer said it himself ten years ago, but Daru wouldn't believe me when I, even if I told it, even if I told him the truth. Very original. I ignore Daru's retort. Hey, Ari, we have an important matter to discuss. Assemble. I can hear you fine from here. Nayuri's sewing doesn't get off the sofa. It doesn't matter whether you can hear or not. This meeting concerns the fate of the future gadget laboratory. Nay, the fate of human of mankind. So I want it to feel more secretive, like we're scheming or something. It's important that we stare closely at the monitor and exchange dramatic lines. The atmosphere right now is too light. It's all my area's fault. Ayushi won't participate in your evil schemes. Well, I can't have everything my way. Listen, you two. Henceforth, the future gadget laboratory shall begin emergency top secret operations. This shall be the first stage in our war against the dark powers that manipulate the world from the shadows. Our enemy is CERN, a scientific institute engaged in the most evil research imaginable. Green, you're too loud, and I've been up all night. Crap, I guess I am being too loud. That kind of ruins the whole secret feeling. And the window's open, too. Suzuha's down below. I'm sure she can hear everything. So I turned it down a notch. Understand, the world has no need for two mad scientists. Before they can get ahead of us, we must outwit them. Who are they? You know, them. Um, Mayushi doesn't understand it all. Basically, we must obtain the Phantom Retro PC, the IBM 5100, said to be located somewhere in Akiba. I make a magnificent declaration, but Daru does just rubs his eyes and Mayuri returns to her needlework. Damn it, is there anything you guys react to? We uncovered a massive conspiracy here. How come you aren't excited? I'll pass on the search. I'm seriously tired. Besides, I want to keep combing CERN's server. Uh, that's true. Well, you're the only one who can do that, Daru, so I'll leave it to you. So, the I-5100 investigation squad shall consist of Mayuri and me. I can't. Mayuri makes an apologetic face. I have to make costumes, and I have work to. And I have work too. So basically, you two are telling me this. I'm the only one with free time. Oh, that's cool. I can barely read. Fine, I'll manage alone somehow. It's useless to try and stop me. Understood? Are you going to do something bad again? Nah. It's all talk. I'll leave my useless comrades behind and stride gallantly out of the lab. I step out onto the street. Immediately, a bicycle skids to a stop in front of me. Hi, Okabe, we're in Thoreau. This is how it gets off the bicycle and gives me a strange greeting. I want to ask her, are you an American or something? But I'm distracted by her shiny bicycle. It's the same bicycle that was in front of the Braun Tube Workshop yesterday. I guess it belongs to her. I wonder how much of that set her back. I mean, it does look pretty expensive. Pretty nice technique there. Bicycles are fun, aren't they? I've never ridden one before coming here. You never ridden a bicycle? Nope. 
I had ridden motorcycles before, though. Isn't that backwards? Weird girl. And what's with that flashy braking back there? I think I'd be pretty dangerous if she did all that through the town. Beginners get cocky and get into accidents. You see that pattern all the time. If you're going to go full speed, at least wear a helmet. Going to work now? Uh, yep. The Brawn Tube Workshop shutters are open, but the shop itself never opens until around 11 or 12. I don't know exactly when, it seems like it seems to change with Mr. Brawn's mood. That's perfect, there's something we need to talk about. Oh, we got mail. Oh, it's Ferris. Oh my god, this, <laughs> this delusional woman. But the fallen angel, F.E.S. Fess prophesized his resurrection in her song, Esoteric Choker, Nian. This song is the cat's meow. <laughs> I found a copy of the album she put out back in the indie days. I had to pay her through the whiskers for it, and faithfully decoded each song of prophecy regarding Judgment Day. Nian. It's so quiet. Let me turn it up for myself. Okay. I need to get the shop ready for business. Just what does this crumbly old brawn tube workshop need to get ready? Uh, nothing really. Jeez, I just mildly sweep in front of the shop. If I clean inside, the boss gets angry. Everything's where it needs to be, he says. So he's paying her to not clean. Nothing's wrong with that guy. Uh, so hear me out then. But I'm so tired. In other words, she doesn't feel like talking. I glare at her. You would be unwise to anger me. Does it have to be right now? I glare at, my glare is not very effective. She doesn't falter at all. But I still maintain a stern expression and nod. Then go ahead. This is how she shrugs her shoulders as she locks her bicycle and then she turns to me. But keep it short, okay? Where is the IBN 5100? No intel yet. What? I don't know. Oh. But, by the way, you talked yesterday. It sure sounded like you knew. No, I know someone who knows. Uh, then take me to them. I won't, it won't, I won't take no for an answer. Refuse and I'll show you a living hell. I can. But Avon said I'd show you a living hell. I can't introduce you even if I wanted to. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, don't tell me they're an imaginary... They've been dead for years. I'm sorry. Eh, it's okay. Anyway, there's nothing I can tell you. Honestly, I'm hoping you can tell me something. Suzaha pats me on the shoulders. Funny, you'd think I'm the one who's supposed to cheer her up. Just then, Mr. Brown opens the door and makes his appearance. Hey, part-timer. It's only your third day and you're late. Uh, sorry, boss. The streets were a little crowded this morning. If you're not going to take this seriously, I can always give you the boot. Here? As for you, Okabe, don't you lay a finger on my part-timer. Are you the aren't you the lecherous one here, Mr. Brown? Why, you... Just say something like that in front of Nae, I'll murder you. Gotta keep my honor as a father. Besides, I ain't got no use for a skinny girl like her. What was that? Take that back, boss. This is actually mad now. What, you mad? I'm not a kid, I'm a warrior. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is how his burning passion has the manager shocked. I, on the other hand, am impressed. On impulse, I take Suzuha's hand and grasp it firmly. I like the look in your eyes, you, you part-time warrior. They shine with the radiance of the, be of the, of the beasts unseen in the modern men. Never, never forget these, those eyes of yours, and you shall surely change class from part-time warrior to true warrior. But I'm already a warrior. Stay diligent. In your training, you shall have a place on my, at my side on the field of Ragnarok. Ragnarok? This is how it looks confused. 
What's that? The final battle against CERN. You've got something like that planned? Count me in if you do, but I've never heard of it. Of course you haven't. This is the first time I've revealed it. For I shall be the one to initiate Ragnarok, and the world shall be reborn. Wow, you sure are brave, Okabe Rintaro. You'll probably fail, but I like your spirit. I wish my comrades were as spirited as you are. Apparently, Suzaha has comrades. I'd like her to introduce me. That way I can form my personal army, the Phoenix Crusaders. Oh, wait a sec. Why does she assume I'll fail at Ragnarok? Looks like I'll need to instill the fear of Hoying Kuma into this girl. Why doesn't my store attract nothing but weirdos? Damn. Whatever, part-timer, just come inside. Coming. Later, Uncle Baby Rintero. Suzuha waves and winks at me as she heads inside the store. Wait up, Okarine. Then Mayuri comes down the stairs, passing Suzuha. So, you're going to help me search after all? That's the Lab Mem spirit. Oh, no, that's not it. I was just thinking about buying lunch. She really is a glutton. Not even lunchtime yet. So, where do you plan to go? Mm, what to eat? Mayuri places her finger on the bottom of her lip as though in, in thought as she walks. Sambo's beef bowl sounds good. This tiny high school girl truly has the guts to enter Sambo alone. That place isn't like the chain restaurants with their colorful menus and brightly lit interiors. First, first timers are often crowded by the high school atmosphere. Plus, the clientele is almost exclusively male, but Mayuri doesn't care. She just sits there, shoulder to shoulder, with students and salarymen, smiling as she eats her beef bowl. It's like, um... Uh... Fuck. I forgot her name. From Love is War, when she went to go get ramen. Meanwhile, the Sanbist's regular Sambo customers are posting comments online like, The Goddess has arrived, or Goddess for the win. But Sambo isn't open this early. I try to warn her, but Murray's are, my Yuri's already is, is no longer there. <laughs> Jesus, she's gone. Mary disappears like this every so often, and each time she does, I wonder for one. I wonder for one terrible second if she really has vanished from the world. I look around and see Mayuri standing at a distance. She's gazing up at the sky through the buildings. Ah, here we go again. She stopped in the middle of the street, so other pedestrians look at her, wondering what she was doing. But she doesn't notice their stares. She slowly reaches out to the sky, as if entranced. And then she freezes in that position. This is one of Mayuri's habits. I call it Stardust Handshake. Mayuri says that she liked looking at the night sky ever since she was little. Her reason is romantic, or perhaps childish. I feel like I can reach the stars. When I asked her about it one day, she smiled and gave that answer. At first, she only reached out to the night sky, but lately she's been doing it without regard for the time of day. Like now, even when she was walking and talking with someone, something inside her just seemed to switch on. Honestly, it's a little crazy. It's too early for stars, Mayuri. I, wake, I walk up to Mayuri and call out to her. She slowly lowers her hand with a blank stare at her, on, her, on her face. Where the fuck was that? There I am. You know, even during the day, the stars are still up there. Getting philosophical is nice and all, but it's dangerous to stop in the middle of the street. <laughs> That's true. Oh, just now, uh, when I was looking at the stars, I decided to have ramen for lunch today. How are ramen and stars even related? Mayuri's mind works in mysterious ways. I know I said I'd search for the IP5100, but I have no idea where to start. I spent about an hour on the internet cafe searching for information, but turned up nothing. I buy some mango, I to say mango, mango juice with a tapioca from a juice stand inside Yod uh, Yodabashi. I lose myself in thought as I drink it. It's Saturday, so it's starting to get crowded in front of the station. 
some maids are distributing leaflets uh, to the people coming out. I know Daru is well acquainted with retro PCs, but is there anyone else? Oh yeah, Shining Finger was obsessed with the IBM 5100, wasn't she? I'm really reluctant to contact the male demon though. But ultimately my feelings are trivial, Ragnarok hangs in the balance. But I decide not to bother. I finish my drink and wander towards Chu Dori. Oh great. Uh, it's her. Will you get back to me already? Whatever the hell this is. <laughs> okay. It's like she can read my mind. I instinctively scan the area, searching for that gloomy woman in the crowd. No sign of her tailing me. Oh well, I guess I'll send her a reply. In the email, I ask her to call and include my phone number. Now I just have to wait for her response. And there it is. You finally contacted me. I don't like talking on the phone, so let's exchange emails instead. Please? Wait, she wants it by email? A lot to cover, and rather not type it all out. I need to find out her phone number. Give me your phone number, along with any information you have on the IBM 5100. And send. Look up at the f after finishing my email and see a huge crowd of people in the front of Vadi Khan. I guess the satellite is still a big deal. The media presence hasn't died down since the day of the crash either. Vadi Khan is still closed. And of course, the satellite is still there. Not 30 seconds have passed before I get a reply. As I'm about to look down and read the email, I catch sight of a familiar face in the crowd. Ah. Well, if it isn't my assistant, what are you doing here? Hey, when did I become your assistant? It looks like she'll snap at me, so I, d I dampen her spirit. I go back to check my email. So to dampen her spirit, I go back to check my email. What's wrong with this woman? I don't have anything. How about you? I told her to, let, to tell me her phone number and she just ignored me. And she doesn't even have any information. How useless can you be? Why are you glaring at me? Oh, don't worry about it. I have to cause my frustration. Oh, so you're just raging? Don't glare at me. You've glared at me before, haven't you? That's because you keep doing pervy... Ugh, no, I'm not saying anything. Another one? Tell me the super hacker's address. I want to snap my phone in half and throw it on the ground. What do you mean, tell me the super hacker's address? You're making fun of me with that music note? You're not getting anything from me. Anyway, why does she need to send me two short consecutive emails? I mean, she might as well just combine them into one. Are the emails you're getting really that unpleasant? They're more unreasonable than unpleasant. I can't quite describe it in one word. Stop sending me all these short emails. I'm begging you. Just gather your thoughts and send everything together. I feel a little satisfied after sending that email. Turn to Kurisu again. So, Christina, what brings you here? You're going to call me with names. Could you at least be consistent? Anyway, my business here doesn't concern you. Oh, why are you pouting? I'm not pouting. I just don't want to get involved in your silly games again. Nonsense. You're, basic, you're already a lab mem. You have the duty to work for the benefit of the lab. Well, she is only a temporary member. No, it's because she's a temporary member that we need to get as much out of her as we can. I regret losing myself to curiosity back then. Curious who sighs and looks up at the satellite. We're not alone. Several other people are standing here and looking up. It's Akiba's latest tourist attraction. You've come to see the satellite. I guess. Doesn't make sense. Normally they calculate satellite orbits so they can burn up in the atmosphere when they fall, so how can that thing be in such perfect condition? And that's to say nothing about the huge hole it punched in the building. Are the satellites that durable? Where's this satellite from, anyway? 
They still don't know. Rumors say it's from the former Soviet Union, but Russia denies it, so it looks like they can't remove it yet. Three days have passed and it's still unknown. How interesting. I smell a conspiracy. So it's another organization cover-up. They knew I'd be at Radi Khan and they tried to erase me. Organization? What's that? The organization is the organization. Its formal name is something else, but all all those who know of its existence call it the organization out of fear. They rule the world from the shadows, transcending nations, even politics, e economics, religion, and even science in their clutches. That's obviously a crackpot conspiracy theory. Thank you very much. Grace who hangs her head and blushes for some reason. What's wrong? <laughs> nothing. Really, nothing, okay? Say another word, and I hit you. Crazy girl. Anyway, what's happened to the f with the phone wave? I thought you didn't want to get involved, and it's not the phone wave. It's the phone wave name subject to change. Just answer me. Have you learned anything? No progress. We've tried at repeating their experiment, but at present we haven't even been able to reproduce the discharge phenomenon or send another email to the past. I see. Another email. The fuck? There we go. Was I being annoying? I'm sorry, but I really need information on the IBM 5100, and you're the only lead I have right now. I'm relying on you, Okabe. I swear I won't send any more short mails, so please don't abandon me. I need you to help me look for the IBM 5100. I promise to let you know as soon as I learn anything, so let's work together, okay? Looks like she's rethinking things. Hopefully I don't have to worry about any more email assaults. Hello, can you put your phone away when you're talking to someone? Don't be like that. Rather, you should praise me, for I have taught a I have taught a foul male demon to behave like a civilized human being. Why are you so pompous? I'd ask you the same thing, Christina. Okay, let's send a reply. Oops, I didn't even get to read it. I clicked. I accidentally double clicked. I typed that out and send it. Are you done with a little mail exchange, hoiin san Oh, so you remember my true name. Indeed, I am Hoiin Kuma. I was being facetious. How was that facetious? You call me by my, cor my, my by my correct name. You make no you made no mistake. You'll make a good assistant. Okabe san, have you sought professional help? I am not Okabe. This is exhausting. So, about the phone wave name subject to change. After the experiment, you screamed like a... You, you screamed something like a time machine, it can't be. Did something awaken a past trauma? No, and don't go making up one either. Back when she was five... Back when she was five years old, Christina was on the plains of Arkansas when lightning... I wasn't hit by lightning and I was still living in Japan when I was five. And why Arkansas? I was trying to imagine tranquil scenery, and the first state to come to mind was Arkansas, second was Oregon. Not Utah? I mean, relatively speaking, isn't Utah more suitable? Then answer me, Christina. Why did you freak out back then? I can't pull up my phone, so I can't even read what I sent. Let me hit the bathroom real quick.
Okay. Fuck. No reason. I simply didn't want to believe French science should stay in the realm of fiction. It's not a dating sim. <laughs> Even though it looks like one. French science? Don't be ridiculous. You saw it with your own eyes. You, sh you saw the email leap to the past. You saw the banana travel instantly through, this through space. I saw, but we must be missing something, or maybe we're just seeing what we want to see. Remember what I said at ATF? Time machines are just a pipe dream given modern technology. And yet, a bunch of amateurs like you just stick a phone and microwave together and expect time travel to occur? Ridiculous. But it did occur. Will you deny what you saw with your own eyes? Are you saying that theories trump reality? Then I hope you enjoy sophistry and word games because that's all you'll ever have what do you mean word games quantum theory for example if you ask me theories like that are nothing but word games wait are you rejecting modern physics who do you think you are trust what you see that's the only things that met only the only things that matter are things that happen things that don't happen things that aren't observed are just hypotheses when hypotheses pile up and theories are verified, they become reality. That's how modern physics comes to understand the truth of the universe. But something, sometimes your hypotheses are mistaken. Even Einstein was wrong about some things. So you're going to do nothing? You're going to do nothing just because you could be wrong? Then enjoy your dirty little lab and your silly gadgets because that's all you'll ever have. No, I never once have gotten Sprite from McDonald's. You'll never reach the truth that way. Failure teaches success. I see. Nice rebuttal. You're never getting off your high horse, are you? By the way, Christina, I have always felt that physicists are hypocrites. What? There are phenomena that everyone knows occur in reality, but which but but which physicists refuse to research. What do you think about that? I don't know what to say unless you give me some examples. Ghosts, for instance. The occult? Really? You refuse to research it just because it's the occult? That contradicts what you just said. You'll never reach the truth that way. People have seen ghosts. There's, a, there's even photographic evidence. So... Where are the theories? Why do physicists refuse to speak? It's a different field of study. You can't call physics the study of natural the study of natural phenomena, then decide some things don't count. True, but and that's why we must investigate the phenomena of sending emails to the past. You shall assist me. No. Here's who gives me a clear-cut answer, along with her usual glare. So the genius girl really does hate me. I won't have a hand in your fringe science. I won't make the same mistake my father did. Your father? You make a fine argument, but it won't work in the scientific community. The day you decide to research time travel is the day you're out of the job. How can you be so certain? Because that's what happened to my father. Very Sue grimaces. My father, a physicist, loved time machines. He was so fascinated by Wells the time machine that he seriously studied tra time travel but because of his obsession he was practically exiled from the scientific community I will never get involved with the time travel research this time my sh her sheer force of her, sh her sheer force of will gives me pause um um I think she's really pissed I may have stepped on a landmine here what do I do? If I get her any angrier, she might seriously hit me. Let's calm her down a little. Okay, let's do that. But what should I say? I'm sorry I got emotional. She apologizes first. Christina's calm character saves me. Don't worry about it. 
I wanted to test your character, so I made you angry on purpose. Huh? Anyway, the phone wave isn't a time machine. Email is a man-made system, so the phenomena should be explainable in the scope of that system. I understand. I had no idea that you hate me. You hate time machines that much. It's almost like an allergy. I apologize for forcing you to become a lab mem. You don't have to come again. I wasn't planning on it. But know this, Christina. Don't call me Christina. Lab mem number 004 will be re retired number. That number is yours forever. I finished my speech and turned back to Kirisu. I won't look back. Turn my back to Kirisu. I slowly walk... I slowly walk away... I walk away slowly with my eyes closed. It's kind of hard to walk like this. I hope I don't bump into anyone. Wait, am I even walking straight? You look ridiculous. My shoulder is suddenly pulled from behind. I brace myself so I don't fall backwards. What are you doing? You've ruined my perfectly staged exit scene. And you call yourself my assistant? No, I don't call myself your assistant. And besides, I still have something to ask you. Damn it, her stubbornness has already returned. I asked you about this before, but you said I got stabbed, right? I demand an explanation. Ah, uh, yes, the other real-life phenomena that is yet to be explained. That was just something I had, I had I hallucinated. Let's just leave it at that for now. Why would you dream about me? I don't know, and it wasn't a dream. It was a hallucination. You said something about Dr. Nakabachi, didn't you? Dr. Nakabachi held a time machine pre presentation at Radikan that day. That presentation was cancelled because of the satellite crash. So it seems, but in my hallucination, the presentation seemed as planned, uh, proceeded as planned. Mayuri and I went to see it, and you came over to flirt with me. I don't flirt, especially not with idiots like you. Like I said, it wasn't real, okay? No, maybe this world has is what isn't real. That would explain the, the riddle of the phone wave, named subject to change. If this world is some kind of simulation, then we can disregard the laws of physics. Escapism? That's unexpectedly chicken of you. It's a hypothesis. Your favorite thing? So, who stabbed me? Don't tell me it was you. I recall a sight of Curtis who collapsed in the pool of blood. It sends shivers down my spine. Was that really just hallucination? It was too real. I can clearly remember the smell of blood. You were already dead when I got there. I didn't see who did it. I don't get it. Why do I have to die in your mind? You have something against me? Of course not. At that point in time, we had only spoken once. You we were just strangers. Well, that one time we spoke, we talked was during the events, I imagine. So strictly speaking, at that point in time, all I knew about her was what I had read in the magazine. Anyway, we didn't know each other. That's why I ran away instead of calling for an ambulance. My hero. What? You want me to get back to what? You want me to get back to back in time and give you CPR or something? I'll need to use a phone wave name subject to change for that. I've heard enough. No more hallucinating about me, okay? Dying isn't fun, even if it's even if it's in someone else's head. I can't make any guarantees that would require perfect 24-hour surveillance inside my brain. You have a comeback for everything, don't you? Kirisu shakes her head in exasperation, then turns and walks off towards the station. Looks like she wants to end this conversation. In revenge for last time, I grabbed Kirisu's slender shoulder from behind. Yeah, what now? I'm not done talking. You're trying to pick a fight? It's revenge for ruining my farewell scene, Christina. You shall regret your thoughtless actions. Okay, okay, fine. What is it? About the IBM 5100. I don't know what you're talking about. If you don't know, then forget about it. Farewell, we will not meet again. I fucking clicked off the goddamn game again. Ugh. There we go. I turn right back to Kurisu. This time, I'll make a perfect... Hey, don't tell me to forget about it. She grabs my arm. Damn it, this is the second time. What is the IBM 5-whatever? 
Then IBM 5, ugh, yeah, fuck, IBM 5100 is a retro PC from 1975. I'm looking for one. Yeah, what are you, what are you gonna do with it? Looks like she's interested. She was the same way when she came to the lab. I guess this girl is just brimming with curiosity. Interested? Curious who quickly averted her eyes. But she doesn't seem to... She doesn't let go of my arm. I... What the fuck? I, I swear that my mouse is in the game. Interested, aren't you? Just a little. Then I shall answer. The IBM 5100 is the key to unlocking CERN's most closely guarded secrets. CERN? You mean THE CERN? Indeed. Though the tireless efforts of my faithful lab mems have- we have uncovered evidence that CERN is researching time travel. Come, be astonished. Ray, I shouldn't have asked. Risu gives me a cold glare, then lets go, then lets go and starts walking away. This time she's gone for good. Damn you! Just you watch. I will expose certain secrets. It's the last thing I do. Next day, I decide to hit Occupus Computer Parts stores. I did as much as I could yesterday after partying with Curisu, but no luck. Finding an IB5100 is obviously going to be a huge pain in the ass. Hmm. Standing in the narrow tunnel that runs beside Radikan building. Besides the Radikan building. Uh, small shops selling everything from motherboards to resistors to vacuum tube line both sides of the tunnel. Here lie the vestiges of the old electric town. Akiba's con conscious, so, conscience, conscience, so to speak. Casual otaku usually avoid stores like these. It's like a holy land that only, those, only true fanatics can enter. Not that I'm an expert on computer parts. Furthermore, these shops only sell parts, so it's actually kind of silly to be searching for a whole PC here. Still, something about the sight of these electronics gets my blood pumping. I have to hide my excitement to maintain my dignity. If a storekeeper yells, hey kid, you're 10 years too young for this stuff, they'll have no choice but to run. Oh wait, I can see what the... Hey, have a good night. I, th I, I can actually see what I sent her. Um, apology accepted. I'm looking for the, an IBM 5100 too. I agree that we should exchange information. I'll let you know when I have something. You don't need to reply to this mail. <laughs> That's why she never replied. Unfortunately, no one has yelled at me yet. In fact, the storekeepers seem to be ignoring me. They must be more open-minded than I had thought. Or maybe they just don't care. I search each door in turn, but turn up neither hide nor hair of an IBM 5100. The ringing of my phone draws a sharp look from the nearest storekeeper. I force a smile and rush outside. My Yuri. That was close. I could probably shouldn't go back in there today. Take a deep breath to calm myself down. That's when a strange that's when something strange catches my eye. There's a woman squatting on the ground nearby, her knees against her chest. In her head is in her hand is a gaudy purple phone. She's staring at the screen without moving a muscle. She's even more conspicuous since nobody else is around, and on further inspection I realize it's something it's someone I know. Shining finger. I call out to her, but she gives me no reaction. Shining Finger is just a name I made up, so I guess it's only natural. Um, her name was... Mo... Moeko... No. Finger. I stand in front of her and call her name. Well, the name I gave her, but she doesn't even look at me. Her fingers are typing rapidly on the phone, so she's definitely conscious. But she still looks dead. There's no life in her eyes. I'm actually worried. Despite the heat, she's not sweating at all. Can you hear me? Who? Oyin Kuma, the mad scientist. She glances at me for maybe half a second, then goes right back to staring at her phone. Uh, who? What? Can you even remember? Can you remember people's faces? Of course, I'm the one who forgot her name. 
I agreed to help you find the IB-100, remember? And this is the thanks I get? She twitches upon hearing the word IBN-5100, but she still doesn't look up. Welcome, Beikun. It's Hoin. Ignoring me, are you? I want you to accept me as Hoin Kuma. Sent email. But Mayuri called me. I had to call her back. She gave me a call and I didn't answer the phone. I'm, a, I'm an asshole. Hi, okabe -kun. Fancy meeting you here. I nearly flip out. Is this really something you should say by email when the person is standing right in front of you? <sighs> it shouldn't take five seconds to say it verbally. It wouldn't take five seconds to say it verbally. She's friendly enough in her emails, but in person she's a lump of unsociability. Can she write funny meeting you here without smiling at all? It makes me think the emails are the mails are coming from a different person. I suppose it is quite a coincidence, but uh, we were looking through the parts stores. Were you looking through the parts stores too? She doesn't even respond when I ask her a direct question. But another email. I looked, but I couldn't find anything. Why won't you speak? Too hard. Isn't it harder to type everything out? My yelling does not even ha does not have the desired effect. Instead of y getting her act together, she buries her face into her knees. And why is she wearing such a short skirt? If she sits with her, with her knees up like this, I can see everything. Not that there's a problem with that. I sigh, then turn and walk away. I buy two max coffees from a nearby vending machine. The mails keep coming. Sorry, I apologize. So please come back. I'm more tired than angry. Besides, my search... You get the feeling something really bad. Why do you get? The why, why specifically my Yuri? My search has hit a dead end, so you don't know. <laughs> so I need whatever information she has on the Abyss 100. I can't just go home. I want to think of it. Her name was Moeka, right? I remember when I saw her email. I returned to Moeka with two Max coffees in hand. <laughs> she's too, dude. She's just a fucking lump of sunshine, dude. Ah, okabe -kun. She's finally on her feet. She glances at me, then breathes a sigh of relief. Want one? <laughs> she teleports in front of me and steals my coffee and teleports quickly back. But she doesn't move to open it. I wait for the coffee to cool down, open the tab, and take a sip. Sometimes the sweetness, the sweetness is just what I need. Why don't you talk? And yelling is easier. Like hell it is. Oh. I you would feel like shit. That's for sure. They're just afraid of people. <coughs> but I finally consider that I'm taken aback by my own thoughtlessness. Of course, so that's what it is. Basically, she's afraid. Afraid of the insane mad scientist Hoi Kuma. Well, I can hardly blame her. In fact, I sympathize. You indeed can withstand my aura of supreme madness. The best thing about this game is I can control pretty much everything with the mouse. I only need the keyboard to open up the phone. I'm weird, aren't I? No, you're normal. Really? Uh, for no matter how disciplined your mind is, you cannot resist. You have nothing to be ashamed of. In this world, there exists something called absolute eternal truth. It's a wall immovable no matter how much you struggle. That's why people give up, abandon their dreams, choose a different path. But never forget this one thing. You hold within your heart your own Stein's Gate. Stein's Gate. All people without expression, without exception, 
possess their own Steins Gate. As long as you have yours, you may follow any path without losing your way, just as I follow mine. Moika oh, nods. Looks like I got her to understand. So, on to business. Do you have any information on the IBM 5100? Moika answers by shaking her head slightly. How long have you been on? How long have you been searching? About two months. Where have you looked? And of course, Moika starts to move her fingers at high speed. Stores, online auction houses, the usual. I also tried asking on at channel, and I even walked around Akihabara asking people, or so I say. But I've only talked to about four people, including you. Four people in two months. Even though hordes of otaku come to Akihabara each day. If you try talking to PC store employees, they'd know more about that than anyone else. Boka shakes her head again. It's clearly not cut out for this job. Sincere as she may be, she's just wasting time. That editorial company she works for must have must be incom it must be incompetent if they chose her as their investigator. Though I suppose it's also her fault for accepting the job despite her handicap. So what's your actual goal? To obtain an, IB to obtain an IBN 5100 or to investigate the urban legend? Both. I see. In that case, her search is limited to IBM 5100s in Akihabara. But I don't care about the urban legend, I just want to obtain the IBM 5100. My true goal is what comes afterwards. So I don't need to limit myself to IBM 5100s in Akihabara. I just... I could just look online. I might be able to get one through auction. That would take time and money, though. If I don't find one in another few days, let's consider that option. Where do you plan to search next? That's... I'm... I didn't quite hear you. Wilka types out a mail at high speed. I honestly don't know where to turn. I've tried everything. She's useless. Don't worry. I have a network of informants at my disposal. Finding a richer PC should be no trouble at all. Wilka looks at me for the first time today. I see respect in her eyes. Have you forgotten who I am? Oi and Kuma, I will stop at nothing to destroy the system of usher and usher in a new era of chaos. I feel like with this done time fuckery that if she did die, they'd probably find some way to bring her back. I mean, if you could, you would, right? Like, we haven't, we haven't even gotten to, like, we're, like the, at this point, the story is still, like, You know, there's like really nice like, you know, breadcrumbs, but so far they, it, it'll pick up, pro it'll probably pick up, if not tomorrow, then the next day. But it'll probably pick, it'll, it'll pick up probably tomorrow is my guess. I will stop at nothing to destroy the system and usher in a new era of chaos. That's Okabe Kunstein's gate. Uh, not Okabe, Hoi. By the way, is that... Um, the chick from a. Uh, I think it's supposed to be. No, it, it's. It, it, I mean, yeah, it's still fascinating, but like, um, as far as like, the stakes and the pace of the story, it's still slow right now. It, it will pick up even more. Um, this looks like the girl from a. Uh, Toradora. I think that's supposed to be. I think that's supposed to be her. As a partnering with the Shining Finger, I go to my near. I go to a nearby PC store to talk to an employee I happen to know. But naturally, he doesn't know where to find an IBM 5100 either. Apparently, it was easier to find retro PCs ten years ago, back when there were more underground niche stores. Now those stores are all but vanished, driven out by stricter regulations and an inexernable spread of Moe culture. Uh, so I can't say that it's Moeka's fault that she's not useful. After all, I'm stumped too, and it's only my second day searching. Hunting for an IBM 100 on the internet auction site is starting to look more appealing than confining my search to Akiba, but again, that would make time- that would take time and money. That reminds me, my recall before I met the Shining Finger. 
It's rare for an absent-minded Mayuri to be the one to contact me. I'm usually the one who co to contact her. Wonder what she wanted. Should I try calling her back? I don't know, should we? It sounds like something we should do at the next stream. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's fun so far, though. It's 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 um, it's still different. Than, like I said, it's still different than the anime uh, in places, and you know the interactivity is you know it, it, even as someone who's seen the anime as well as like the the um the sequel uh, to to Steins Gate. Like I've seen almost all all that you need to see of Steins Gate in, uh, in anime form. It's still like it's still intriguing to me. And it still brings something new for me as well, even though I know where the story is going to go and what's going to happen and things like that. Um, but it's still really fun for me to 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 play through. But damn, dude, that's a lot of reading. Six hours straight of just of just reading, dude. <laughs> but we'll we'll pick it back up uh, tonight. Tonight's also going to be another eight to two. Um, Monday's stream will probably be the first 8 to 11, but I don't know. We're still waiting on a few things and some fucking weird shit's happening apparently with, with, with like administrative bullshit. So whatever. Um, but yeah, we'll be back at eight o'clock. So yep. Later. <laughs>